Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We have day one of So Creative Live in the books. We are excited for day number two. Yesterday, we gave away over $5,000 worth of prizes, and we are set to do that again today. So we're just going to do a quick overview in case you weren't able, able to make it yesterday. But we are going to be obviously having a bunch of educators joining us throughout the remaining three days. Fabulous lineup still in in order here. If you need to check out that schedule, you can go to bit.ly slash so live and check out that schedule. We also are going to continue, like I said, with our giveaways. We have a lot more goodies to give away to you. Um, again, over $26,000 worth of prizes for this event. Thank you again to our sponsors. Without you, we would not be able to be doing this. It is so much fun. All right, so a couple of reminders to get entered into our giveaway, please make sure to comment. If you're watching over on TikTok or Instagram, head over to our Facebook or our YouTube and comment there. That is where the software is pulling from, so that is where we need you to comment. But our guests are already waiting. It is going to be Audrey and Emily with Everstone. Brian, do you mind getting those pulled up? Good morning, you guys. Good morning. We have Audrey behind the scenes for right now, but she'll join me in a minute. Hello. There we go. <laughs> Emily, I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Okay, how is that? Is that it's, a, it's a little bit better. Can you hear me? I can hear Audrey, yep. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll project. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what else we can do right now with the headphones. All right. I think it should is be it good. Pretty, okay. Is it pretty soft still or? Yeah, it's just a little quiet. We can hear her. It's just a little quiet. Okay. All right. I'll make sure I turn up the volume. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's give it a go and see if we can hear you all right. All right. Well, if you guys want to introduce yourself, I'll let you then take it away and give our give that wonderful demonstration on the Everstone. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us this morning. We're really excited to be part of So Creative Live. And uh, my name is Emily Carson Green. I'm the brand manager at Everstone. And Audrey's our digital marketing specialist. She um, runs our TikTok, and you're going to hear a little bit from her in a minute. Um, if you have not heard about Everson, that's understandable. Um, we're a relatively new company. We've been around for about six years and we were started by a gentleman named Philip Wilchie, who is the fourth generation of the family that started Bernina uh, sewing machines. So we are still owned, we're a separate company, but we're still owned by the Bernina family of companies. And we have some great little machines that are affordable and wonderful for learning to sell, wonderful for travel, um, wonderful for upgrading from that um, grandma's machine that was in the basement. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about my favorite, the 30S. It's the Spara 30S. Well, they're all my favorite, but this one is really actually very special. Um, and I'm going to show you some great things about this affordable machine that has some wonderful features. So you see this skeleton of a machine right here, you'll see that this is actually the 30S without the cover on. And we are very proud at Everson of all the metal parts inside the machine because there are a lot of machines nowadays manufactured um, to be affordable and learning to sew that don't have so much metal. They're very sturdy and it's still lightweight. It's 16 pounds. So this is the inside of the 30S, which is 16 pounds, so it's still lightweight. It is great for taking to a retreat, for classes, to take it to your second home. Um, I even have some people that take it in their RV. So um, it's, it's a great lightweight machine at 16 pounds. Um, I'm going to show you some of the features. So one of the things 
things about Emerson that our mission is to teach um, young people to sew, even children to sew, to develop a lifelong love of sewing. And so it, we have a really nice diagram on the top that shows you how to thread it because I know a lot of new sewers are, that's one of the scariest things is finding the bobbin and threading the machine. So we have some really nice diagrams on the top and on the side here or the front that show you how to thread the machine. Um, but for as far as advanced features, it's got the automatic needle threader that you just push down and then it will grab the thread and take it through the eye of the needle for you. That even I, as a 30 year sewist, love that because my eyes are not exactly how they used to be when I was in my 20s. So they have the easy threading, um, they have the needle threader. There's also with this machine, it has on the front, um, it has, oh, let me tell you, it has 310 stitches. It has multiple buttonholes and it has stretch stitches. Um, decorative stitches are two alphabets and this machine has memory. So you can combine, um, you can do combinations of stitches and then save those. So on the front, um, it has the three buttons that are the reverse, right, right there, front and center. It's got the needle down, which is great if you are, the needle down I use if I am turning a corner and I want the, to keep, I want to always make sure I stop with the needle down so I can pivot and then the fabric won't go anywhere and I won't lose my spot. It's also great for machine quilting because you can, Make sure you're stopping with the needle down always automatically, and then you will um, reposition your quilt and then keep going, and it will keep it in that same spot. It also, this machine has a tack stitch when you're starting or ending, it will automatically do that little reverse, you know, stitch in place to, to secure your stitch. Um, in the front, right here, it has the um, it has a start, it has a, a start stop, so you don't have to use the pedal. You could just, I especially like that for when I'm winding a bobbin, that I can just use the start and stop um, instead of pressing the foot pedal. And it has the, this particular machine has the automatic uh, cutter, which some people really like a lot, especially for quilting. So 310 stitches um, with the decorative stitches of the the block letters and the script letters and the buttonholes um, for, you know, the more advanced features. Hey. <laughs> Hello, I'm so sorry. We're just going to take a brief moment here. If you don't mind, um, we're going to give you a second and see if you can fix your audio. And I'm just going to go over some special pricing from yesterday while you look into that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, okay, we're going to give them a little moment to get that fixed. So while we're waiting, I'm just going to go over a little bit about what we talked about yesterday. So I just want to stress that throughout the So Creative Live event, we are doing special event pricing. So just to reiterate, we show on the overlays the sale price, but that's not the special event pricing. That's just the fantastic sale that it's already on. So let's take a peek at a couple of things. So you know, if you're in the market for a few gifts before Christmas, you'll get those taken care of right now. Then you don't have to do it all in December. <laughs> all right, so the first one I wanna show you is that um, the QD Tabletop Quilting Frame with the Cunique Pro. That was a fantastic offer. It is an MSRP of 6,199, sale price of 4,189. And just call that number at the top of the screen and our customer service will help um, secure wonderful, wonderful pricing. So let me just double check and see if they are just about ready. Okay. All right, it sounds like they are ready. So let me get this off and we will bring them back. Hello again, Emily. <laughs> Hi there. Sorry about that. Is this better? Oh, you sound so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, sorry right. about that. We uh, we no were trying problem to share at a all. Pair we of... can work through it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, all right. well, let's um, get back to it. 
All right, thank you, Tricia. So if you're just joining, I am gonna go over this a little bit again um, and tell you about the history of Everstone. If you haven't heard about us before, we are about six years old, so we're a really new company. And we were uh, started by a man named Philip Ulchi, who was the, he's the fourth generation of the family that started the Bernina sewing machines. And we are still owned um, under the Bernina family of companies, um, but we are a separate company and we are really dedicated to um, affordable machines and learning to sew, to bring in a new generation of sewist. Um, we have a beautiful look. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the 30S, which is my favorite machine. It's so cute in this aqua co color and it comes with the matching table. So just to start with the basics, um, as I said, Everstone is really dedicated to uh, new people who are learning to sew, even children. And so we have some special features that are dedicated to making it really easy and accessible for learning to sew. We have a great um, diagrams and visuals on the top and front of the machines about threading because I think that threading is probably one of the scariest things when someone is learning to sew. And so we make it really easy to thread the machine and really easy to wind the bobbin. Then this machine is kind of in the middle of our range of machines. So not only does it have the great things for beginners, like an easy to read manual and the easy threading, um, but it also has 310 stitches. So this, the length and the width are all on these buttons over here on the, on the side, on the front side with the LED screen. And, uh, but right up here at the top, we have a, um, we have the reverse, right? The first easy button to see. We have the tack stitch, which will, uh, a lot of machines don't have, but that allows you at the start or at the end of your sewing, you don't have to remember to do the reverse. You can just tack stitch and it'll do secure your threads. And then we have the um, needle down, which I love the needle down, uh, Op option because that you would use when you are turning a corner. So if you're making any, you know, a pillowcase or any really big cushion, a beginner project, and you have to turn that corner, you if you have that needle down in position, then it will automatically stop every time you stop sewing and take your foot off the pedal. It will stop with the needle down, and you can pivot and turn that corner, and that needle will stay in place, and you will not lose your place in sewing. And I also use it for machine quilting because then when you are pushing the quilt through and then you need to stop and rearrange your fabric, it will not, you, with the needle down, you will not lose your place. So that's a great feature. Um, in the front, we also have on this machine, the uh, automatic cutter, which you can use to, um, so you don't have to pull it out and then trim your threads. It will just, that's great for quilting. That's great for really anything, the automatic cutter and a, a start stop button. And I use that a lot when I'm winding bobbins because you don't have to use your foot pedal. You can just pr press the start, start stop button. It's pretty quick and easy. Um, also on this machine, um, one of the more advanced features, besides the beginning features of the great diagrams for threading, this machine comes with the automatic thread, threader, which um, is you push it down and it will, the little hook will go through and take that thread through the eye of the needle for you, uh, which is great. I love that and I use that, I've gotten used to that. I didn't have that on an old machine, but, uh, my eyes aren't the same as they were when I was in my 20s. So that, you know, is really what once you it's it's a little bit tricky to, you know, get to know it. But once you know it, it's like riding a bike and it's just a smooth motion where you can get that needle threaded really quickly. And then it's got the thread cutter right here on the side, which is I use all the time. So this machine with 310 stitches, it comes with the two script, two uh, alphabets, the block lettering and then the script lettering. And it also comes with memory. So you can combine, you can do combinations of stitches that you combine and then you can save those. So that's a really excellent, um, more advanced feature that this machine has. 
It also, for beginners, has the drop-in bobbin, which um, people really like because you can see, see it right there. You can see when your bobbin is getting empty. Really easy to replace. And this machine, oh, I took it off. It has this snap-on feet. So that just snaps on with a li little lever in the back. And I'm going to try to do it backwards. Um, but just the, the feet just go on and off with a little release lever right here. You don't have to screw them on and off. This machine comes with nine presser feet. So you get the all-purpose foot. They're over here. Um, the all-purpose foot, the zipper foot, overcast foot, blind hem foot, applique foot, which is a clear, so you can see what you're doing, a button sew-on foot, which I didn't have on any machine before, but that's like super handy. You don't have to, makes it easy to sew up buttons on with the machine, which is a lot quicker than sewing them on by hand the quarter inch patchwork foot and the buttonhole foot and also this machine that a lot of machines don't come with this machine also comes with the walking foot so uh if you're just i'm just going to briefly go over all those features again and then i'm going to show you uh, the table and the little storage compartment and the other accessories that come with it. So it comes with, the, in, on this machine, you have the reverse, the tack stitch, the needle down, the automatic thread cutter, the start stop button, the automatic threader over here, lever here on the side, and the thread cutter on, on the side here. And then this is really cool. There's a stitch library that you can either it comes with the machine you can either set it you know next to the machine or if you want if you're using some of the fancy stitches and want it really at a glance then you can stick it in to the handle and have it right up there at eye level which i love so the table comes with the machine and that comes off and this, it has the free arm system if you're, do, if you're sewing sleeves or um, something that you need to get all the way around. And then here is the, if you take the table off, then you have the um, storage compartment that go, I'm trying to do this backwards, so sorry, that goes right here on the front, snaps in, and then all of your accessories are included inside that. So what this comes with, besides the feet that I just showed you, it comes with two spool caps. So if you are using a, a small size thread or a larger spool of thread, you have two spool caps to put on there. You have two spool pins. I lost my other spool pin. Do you see that? Um, one thing that I did not know when I was first sewing is that um, you depending on the way your thread is wound you either want to put it horizontal horizontally or vertically if your thread is wound crisscross then you want it on the horizontal spool pin to feed evenly into the tension and then this machine also has a vertical spool pin that attaches right here that i think is somewhere down oh it's right here sorry there's the vertical spool pin. Um, so if your thread is wound straight, then you want to put it on this spool pin. Um, it also comes with a brush seam ripper combo. Love that. Um, and it comes with two screwdrivers. Um, this little screwdriver is great to get underneath here. And then it comes with an extra one um the nice substantial screwdriver it comes with four bobbins it comes with extra needles so everything right out of the box is ready to start and it comes with the thread guide in the storage compartment that goes with the walking foot and that is for if you are doing machine quilting and uh you want to measure uh your other line of stitches then you can use this bar that will go out a couple of inches to give you that guide. So all of this goes into the storage compartment. 
And it also comes with all nine of the feet. And I'll just go over those again. We've got the zipper foot or the buttonhole foot, sorry. The zipper foot. An all purpose foot, which is right here. The quarter inch patchwork foot, which I use all the time. I love that. Uh, button sewing foot. The applique foot, which is clear, so you can see the what you're doing there with the with the with the um, stitch width. The blind hem foot and the overcast foot and the walking foot. So that's like a really great value getting all nine of those feet. Um, we also have other feet, more specialty feet that you can buy separately. So. Uh, oh, let me go back to one other thing I, that I wanted to show you with the metal. This is this is the machine without the cover on, and um, it is still it. We're showing off all of our metal parts because we're really proud at Everstone of all the metal that is still inside the machine. A lot of affordable machines are not manufactured these days with so many durable metal parts, and it's very sturdy, but it's still lightweight, sixteen pounds. Um, great to take for classes, great to take on retreats. Um, if you have a really heavy machine at home that you just want to leave at home, this is a great little buddy to take with you to a second home. Um, I have one at my lake cottage that I piece quilts on, um, it, but it's sturdy enough that it can go through four layers of denim. And we have sewn um, little swatches with all of our machines with the four layers of denim to show you how stir sturdy and durable they are. Um, one thing I'm also going to show you today, besides this machine, is the starter kit. So this is the big ever sewn starter kit. And if you have someone that you need to buy that is learning to sew, that you need to buy a gift, it is getting into gift giving season. This, I cannot believe how excited I would be if I got this as a present. This has everything that you need for starting sewing. So I'm going to just unbox it and show you everything that comes in here. One of my very favorite things here down here at the bottom is this uh, foldable cutting mat. Because if I'm going, if I'm traveling and I want to take a project, which I always take multiple projects, um, this folds out flat. It's in the plastic right now, so it's not, but this um, is great because then I don't have a giant cutting mat in my bag. It folds up, so that's perfect for traveling. It's a really great size, and it also has the rotary cutter, right or left-handed, and the this really nice size of ruler, um, which fits with the cutting mat. And I just think that this is like the perfect size of ruler for learning to quilt or um, really just anything, doing a binding, anything that you would need. It's just a really handy size, goes with that. It also has just some of the basics, like everybody needs a tape measure and everybody needs a seam ripper. And uh, people stop us at shows and talk about how much they love our scissors. They are really comfy. They're also super cute. They're really comfy and they're really sharp and kind of substantial. Like they have a nice good weight to them, not too much. And then they have this little cover. So those are the scissors that come in here, which is just a great eight inch pair of scissors. And then also they say that how much they love these little snips. And um, these are just great to keep by the machine. And so you don't have to get out the big scissors if you're just, if you're piecing blocks or doing something where you're doing a lot of like little stop and start sewing and cutting, these are great for thread cutting. Um, it also has things that you need like marking pens. It's got the blue water soluble marking pen. It's got the red heat vanishing marking pen, which I love because hit it with an iron and that goes away. Um, it has something that everybody needs if you're sewing clothing, this little seam gauge, because sometimes you're measuring a, just a, a seam or a hem that's a quarter inch or a hem that's an inch and a half for like a skirt or for curtains. And this is just really handy. I keep mine on my ironing board because I, then I can measure it really easy and press. And people love the magnetic pin cushion. I brought mine that's out of the package. Um, because the pins just stick to it. I even sometimes just kind of 
throw them at it when I'm like taking the pins out as I'm sewing. It's super cute. It has a storage compartment for the pins, but I, I honestly hardly ever use a storage compartment because they just stick to the top and you can take it anywhere and it's just great. Um, as far as pins go, everybody needs some safety pins if you're learning to quilt for basting the quilt. And the glass head pins won't melt. These are really nice little sharp pins for sewing um, garments or quilt blocks. And then if you are sewing with leather, vinyl, something where it shouldn't have a hole, you know, you can't pin it because it would leave a hole or um, maybe a bag that has multiple layers. And then these craft clips are great for keeping all that together. So I've gone over everything that's in the sewing starter kit. And one thing that I want to tell you about Eversewn, and I'm going to bring Audrey on, um, that because we're dedicated to, you know, learning to sew and for young sewists, new people coming into sewing, um, we are on social media where a lot of the other companies are not. And Audrey, as our digital marketing specialist, when she started at Eversewn, she did not know how to sew, but she was interested. And then she took over our TikTok. She actually started our TikTok. And, and as she was learning to sew, she was doing projects on TikTok. So do you want to tell us what you liked about the Eversewn when you were learning to sew? Sure. So Emily kind of talked about this earlier, but it's super easy to learn how to thread a machine and wind a bobbin on the Eversewn. Um, because of all the directional arrows. And I know when you're first starting, you know, you have this intimidating machine and even the instruction manual can sometimes be intimidating. But I actually found Eversone's instruction manual very helpful when I was learning how to thread a machine um, because I experienced, you know, oh, the tension was too tight or too loose, or maybe I didn't wind my bobbin correctly. And inside the instruction manual, I was able to find like, examples of what your thread would look like if your tension was too loose or too tight. So yeah, I think the one of the best things the Eversewn machine has is just like those little tools to help you learn how to just simply thread the machine and wind the bobbin. And if you are thinking about buying this, this is a great learner machine. And if you are thinking about buying this for someone young in your life, they can go on TikTok. We meet them where they are. They can go on TikTok and find some really awesome projects like how to sew a scrunchie, how to sew a simple little purse. Audrey was great at finding all these really fun young projects because we discovered that a lot of the young people, maybe they're not interested in piecing a quilt right away like I might be, but they are doing like crazy things like buying a blanket at Goodwill and making it into a pair of pants. So they can find on our Instagram or our TikTok some really fun projects that like make sewing fun and exciting for them. Right. Yeah. I think especially because I was learning how to sew as well. Um, I wanted to find projects that you didn't really have to think about looking for. Like they, we just have them there for you if you want to get started. Um, and garment sewing and quilting can be intimidating as a beginner sewist. So if you start out small with like a scrunchie or a pouch, you can really like master the basics to get going. So thank you, Audrey. Behind the scenes now. <laughs> so do we have any questions? Is there anything that I haven't covered? Um, this machine comes with nine presser feet. It comes with the matching table. It is the only ever sewn that comes with the matching table and it is so cute. The legs, it's adjustable. The legs come down and you can, um, depending on the height of your table, you can adjust them. It comes with 310 stitches and they all come on a little cheat sheet that you can put right up here, which I love. Are there any questions? I know that I know that Trisha has some really awesome pricing on this. So Trisha, do you want to take it away or let me know if there's anything that I didn't cover that you want to hear about some more? That was wonderful, Emily. Thank you so much. So 
A couple of things. Brian and I were just chit-chatting, and he said he absolutely loved that Audrey mentioned the upcycling for, uh, you know, this generation taking something and turning it into something else. I think that's super, super cool. And you're very right. Like this little machine is perfect to do something like that. Uh, we also have another guest on this afternoon, Colleen Davis, and she is super good about taking blankets. She just made actually a hoodie and a pair of shorts for, I believe, her nephew. So it's pretty cool what you can do with things you can find at Goodwill. <laughs> but yeah, regarding it's so funny. It really is. And that big kit is awesome. I mean, talk about cool, a cool present for Christmas. That would be sweet. I know I'd be happy with that too. So yeah, uh, even if you are, to... sorry, oh, even go if ahead. You I'm are, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt it you. It has everything. It has everything for a beginner, but even for me who already has like a lot of these things, I love the pin cushion. I did not have one of those. And I love the foldable cutting mat because that's so great to have an extra cutting mat for travel. So for yeah, sure. it's got everything. Awesome. Well, uh, he's been looking through the comments and looks like people are just saying, awesome machine, love the color, you know, things <laughs> like that. So I'm not seeing any questions right now, but we have some great pricing that I'm happy to show, but I won't keep any more of your time here if you want to head on out for the day and maybe watch the rest of the live. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you joining us. All right. Well, we are going to talk about some special pricing. Brian, do you mind pulling up the 30S? Oh, it's a little small for me. I can't see the MSRP. Can you read that for me? It Take looks it. Like it is four ninety nine. Is the MSRP four ninety nine? And our sale price is four forty nine. Four forty nine. And that's just our regular sale price. That's not our special event pricing. So, give us a call at the top of the screen, and we will help you out. That's going to be a perfect Christmas gift for anybody in your family or a friend. <laughs> All right, let's go over. Um, I also wanted to actually show you the Everstone X2. Brian, do you mind pulling that up? Sure. All right, we've got the Sparrow X2. This is a computerized sewing and embroidery machine. Fantastic combination machine. We had talked about a combination machine yesterday. It is always awesome where you can do two things. So you can have the sewing side of it and then you can do a cute design, put something together and you'd be able to um, do that as well. Do you mind reading off the M or MSRP for me, Brian? What was that? Do you mind reading off the MSRP for me? It is uh, $1, $1, $1,999. All right. And the sale price is $849.99. All right. $849.99. That is just our regular awesome sale price, but not our special event pricing. Okay. We are going to take a quick break. We will be right back with you. I've got a couple of things to show you before the giveaway. If you could please go ahead and comment, that way you can get involved in the giveaway.
All right, everybody, we are back. Thank you so much for your patience. We're having a few quirks here and there today. <laughs> we'll get them all worked out, right? All right, so we are going to do our giveaway. Um, as I had mentioned before, just go ahead and put your comment in there so you get entered into the giveaway. The first thing that we are going to give away is that big starter kit. We actually had a question on whether or not we sold that separately. We sure do. So Brian already pulled it up for us. It looks like that retails or the MSRP is the $999.99. It's on sale for $79.99. And I am pretty sure we're offering special pricing on that as well. So go ahead and give our customer service a call. I know it's not on top of the screen there, but it is 888-824-1192. That is a perfect gift for Christmas. Everybody wants to get their Christmas gifts and get them purchased, get them out of the way before you get to you know, Christmas time, <laughs> procrastinator, right? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and give that one away first, right, Brian? And then we'll give away something else. <laughs> All right, let's do it. And I will click draw here and see who wins that fabulous kit. Okay, who's the lucky winner? First one for today. Julie Nessa on YouTube. Thank you so much, Julie. Congratulations. If you stick around, I will show you here in just a second how to claim that prize. All right. And the next one is going to be the Eversone Sparrow 30S. We all saw that demonstration, how lovely this little machine is. Plus, the color's fabulous. I mean, we, we can't deny that, right? It is so cute. <laughs> Anybody would love that. Plus, it comes with the table. That is always a plus when an extension table comes with the machine. So who is going to be the lucky winner of the Eversone Sparrow 30S? Let's go see. And there we go. Who is it going to be? I love giving away the machines. Veronica Benavidez. There we go. Veronica. Hey, thank you, Brian. <laughs> Congratulations, Veronica. We'll get that for you. Now, to claim your prize, you just simply go to the link tree in the description, click claim your prize. And from there, all you have to do is fill out the form and we will get your prize sent out for you. So thank you so much for joining. Again, everybody, just continue to comment. It'll get you entered into our giveaway. If you're over on TikTok or Instagram, head over to our YouTube and our Facebook and comment there. That's where the software is pulling from, and we don't want to have you miss out on the giveaway. So it looks like they uh, had ended just a smidge earlier than planned. So what I'm going to do is go over some of the special pricing that we had talked about yesterday because I just want to reiterate that this pricing is fabulous. Like you really, really, really need to call our customer service and talk to them and see what that special pricing is. We're not able to display it. So you do have to give them a call, but we're not going to have pricing like this until the next event like this. And since this is our first one, we're not sure when the second one is, <laughs> but you want to take advantage of that special pricing. All right. So let's go ahead and check that pricing from yesterday. It will just take me a second to pull that up. Day one. Okay, so we had already gone over the cutie frame and 
Uh, let's see, scrolling down here. Let's talk about the Baby Lock Bloom. I'll pull that back up. That machine is available for pre-order. It is one of the new machines in the Baby Lock line. That is a combination sewing and embroidery machine. We had gone over yesterday how it does have the larger hoop. So you're looking at like the Verve that has a four by four hoop. This one has the five by seven and I believe five by 12. It is a fabulous, fabulous machine. It also has the speed control, the automatic thread cutter. You're looking at the um, needle threader. So many great features. I have to mention the Wi-Fi capability. That is really big. It's so nice having that combination of you're able to embroider something and then you can go in to sewing. So it gives you so much versatility. It's a fantastic new machine to the Baby Lock line. Uh, that MSRP is $3,599. Our regular awesome sale price is $2,499. But again, call for that special pricing. That number now is at the top of the screen. So go ahead and give our customer service a call and they would be happy to help you get that on order. And you'll be the one of the first ones to get the baby lock bloom. Let's see what else. Oh, I wanted to mention the Floriani. Let me pull that up. I think I grabbed that. Actually, Brian, right next to you, do you mind um, over on the right here where it has the design and quilt and the Floriani right at the corner of my desk? The software. Oh, the software. <laughs> I, just, I have to use my words, right? <laughs> Thank you. You can have the totally control okay. you as well. Thank you. Here we go. All right, so we have the Total Control U Floriani software. With that right now, with the purchase of this particular software, you are going to get a value pack of $3,000. You're gonna get the 100 pack of Floriani 40 weight embroidery thread, the letter mastering, and also the U design. So with that purchase, if you have been interested in getting some software for your embroidery, this is the time to do it. I mean, $3,000 worth of goodies. <laughs> I think it's definitely time. So go ahead and give our customer service a call and they will help you get this on order. The next one I want to talk about is the Design and Quilt. This is such an amazing program. It gives you the ability to see your quilt before you even buy the fabric. You can test colors, test designs, who wants to spend all of that money on fabric and then go, ooh, I don't like my quilt. <laughs> this gives you that option to change color, see if you like it, change it to a lighter color, switch it to blue, change it to pink, who cares? You can do all sorts of good stuff with this and be able to see it before you do anything. Awesome, awesome program. And with this particular quilt, excuse me, quilt and design, you're going to get that $150 package where it comes with the 18 by 24 um, quilting or excuse me, cutting mat. It's going to have the, um, the CD with the seven patterns, the quilt patterns, the loaded USB, and also the ruler. Let me actually pull up this overlay so you can see the picture of it. The ruler, uh, that fantastic air erasable marker that I love so very much and the quilter select rotary cutter that rotary cutter is awesome it has a very nice weight so when you're cutting it just glides nicely it's magnetic when you're putting the um, the actual blade in it's very easy to switch it out it has a nice silicone grip so it doesn't slip all over the place and it's ambidextrous so if you have been interested in getting the quilt and design of software, perfect timing, $150 kit comes with it. So let's go to the brand new Floriani thread. And it was fantastic yesterday when we were showing it, the variegated thread and the glow in the dark. We have special pricing on that right now as well. But take a look at this glow in the dark thread. I mean, how cool is that? You could get so, so creative with the glow in the dark thread. It is, if you're looking at the kit here, it shows the five different colors and it is an MSRP of $124.95 and it's on sale for $87.45. But you could give our customer service a call and they will uh, discuss that special pricing with you as well. 
Fabulous pricing on the variegated thread as well. This is considered the camo. So you can look it up on our website by just typing in Floriani variegated thread. All of the camo ones come up and you can select those individually or buy them as the new kit. So that is a whole lot of fun. Also, we had Stacy Louie on with us yesterday for So Steady. That was awesome. I loved that segment because those wish the wish table is absolutely amazing. I have one cut for the baby lock verb that I use here at work. It is so nice. She had mentioned the polish kit. I would highly, highly recommend getting that if you get one of the So Steady tables because it makes your fabric just glide so, so nicely. And same thing with the ultimate, um, the glider, the grid glider, excuse me. Um, that also makes your fabric move so, so nicely. And we are getting the one added for the free motion sewing that just had the small opening. So if you didn't see that yesterday, it is going to be added if it hasn't been already. So that, but I wanna show you the specials that are going on with the wish table. Here we go. That wish table normally is $229 and it's on sale right now for $199. But with the purchase of the 22 and a half by 25 and a half inch wish table, you get the two arm suspension system for $1. And when you add the wish table, it will automatically add that suspension um, system in there for the $1. If you had watched yesterday, that was so cool. They just clip right onto the table and have a, a long arm and you're able to connect your um, your project, your blanket, and it takes that pressure away. You're not having it fall off the side of your table because we all know how frustrating that is, right? Where you're working with a big blanket, you're trying to move everything around and it goes off the side of your table, starts pulling, and then everything is just all wonky. So <laughs> keeps things from being wonky. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> I love that. That is relatively new to, to my, um, my knowledge. So I thought that was really, really cool. The other special that's going on with So Steady right now is if you buy the four piece Versa set, you get the Versa bag for free. So the Versa set is normally, or the four piece Versa set, excuse me, is normally $349. It's on sale for $299. Again, with that purchase, you get the free Versa bag. I wanted to mention really quickly, yesterday I noticed during the segment that there was a lot of people asking <clears throat> if there were so steady tables available for their vintage machines. Oh. And I think a lot of people don't realize that so steady custom cuts the tables and they've done a lot of work and research to find the dimensions of new machines and machines that go all the way back. I mean, mm -hmm. all the way back to be able to make tables for everybody. Yeah, that is such a great point, Brian. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, we are, they're able to make those tables for you. I mean, it like they had, yeah, excuse me, like they had said yesterday, <laughs> they are custom cut to your machine. So you give us a call, we can help you place an order. It has us enter in your model number and we are able to send that order off and you'll be able to get a custom cut table. That wish table is absolutely fabulous, you guys. Um, I, I don't have it in here anymore because we weren't initially planning on talking about it. But as you could see from the overlay, that little blue um, cubby here, the drawer is so handy. You have everything that you need right at your fingertips. You can also add that spinner tray that she had talked about yesterday. It just hooks onto one of the feet, slides under. You can have some more of your goodies in case maybe you have a scissors or some pins has that little magnetic corner where all your pins just stay to one side so it's nice and organized. So that sounds pretty cool. Well, I think we were able to go over quite a few things from yesterday. We have our next guest here in just a moment. It'll be uh, Harley and Sarah with Arrow. So we have to set up a couple of things on our end as well. So we will be back in just a couple of minutes and then we'll pull up Harley and Sarah.
All right, everybody, it is time to be back to look at some beautiful furniture. We're going to pull up Harley and Sarah with Arrow. Hello, Hello. Trisha. Good morning. Good morning. How are you two today? I'm doing really well. Great. Thanks Sarah, for asking. Doing well? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. We're, we're excited to be with you guys at, at Sewing Parts Online this morning. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to see all the wonderful furniture. We're going to let you guys take it away. We will take it away and we're going to have so much stuff. And Trisha, at the end, we're going to come back to you. You're going to cover all the products we're covering. We're covering five or six things Sarah have in line for your audience today. And we're ending on the jewelry of your showing room, of your sewing room. What's that, Sarah? <laughs> What's the jewelry? The chairs. The chairs. The so chairs. Everyone will ask about it in the in the chat. It'll be great discussion. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will cover those at the end, though. So you have to stick around to learn about the chairs and learn about great deals Sewing Parts Online has for us today. That sounds like a plan. And just a little nudge for everybody. Make sure that you comment because there might be a giveaway on that jewel of your sewing room. So we have sure some really good giveaways, don't we? We have some fabulous giveaways. We appreciate yes, all we the donations. Do. They are some fabulous giveaways. All right. Well, let's make sure everyone pays attention to a little class and we'll go into session then. Hello, everybody. I'm Harley Thomas at Arrow Sewing. I'm Sarah LePage at Arrow Sewing. And we're excited to be with you this morning. You're in our studio. We are just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or outside of Chicago. And we're going to go over kind of the product line. Some of it you may have seen online. And if you go to Sewing Parts Online, you can see it. They spin pictures, their graphics, uh, talk about measurements. So we'll talk about measurements and what might fit in your sewing room. That's, that's the right. important thing, right? We want it all to fit in the sewing room. Well, that's kind of a big, big part of building your sewing studio. So we are going to cover a lot of product. If you need details, call the operators of Sewing Parts Online. They're very knowledgeable. They can give you more information or go online. Um, I called them this morning. They're so nice when they answer the phone. Didn't I? I had to you give them a did. quick call. Absolutely. Well, so, what do you think? Should we start talking about this beautiful cabinet right here? Which cabinet is this, Sarah? This is the Aussie cabinet. This I'm is slide my chair out of the way. This this cabinet is a quilter's paradise, and it was spe is, uh, excuse me specifically designed to provide the work surface that you need for quilting and large projects. And as the Aussie, it's as big as Australia. That's kind of the the whole idea of the name of this cabinet. It is designed when you want a massive workspace. So it's so big, I can't reach across. It's about eight and a half feet wide when it's fully open. And then about four, right? Four, four feet deep. Right. Uh, that's with right. the quilt leaf from here to here, it's about four feet mm -hmm. and a little bit additional when you add this caddy. We're going to show you the caddy in a second. Um, we're new to sewing parts online, at least the viewership here. And uh, from questions, does anybody know what makes a sewing cabinet a sewing cabinet? What makes sewing furniture furniture just for sewing? Because you want to get off your dining room table. Um, and that's that's what we hear time and time again. I sew on my dining room table. Why? This is so much better. And we're going to show you why. So, Well, one of the main things that makes a sewing cabinet a sewing cabinet is the lift. So I'm going to show this to you guys. This is... This is an A7 size lift. The lift opening is about 12 and a half inches from front to back and 23 and three quarter inches from side to side. Ethan, can you throw a graphic up there too, just real quick and we'll, we'll do that in a second. So it's 23, three quarters, 12 and a half. And you wanna make sure you've got room from the side of your machine to your knob that the knob that's right here. That's right. So, but that's the measurement right there. And you want to make sure your machine fits in there with the cords and everything sticking off of it. So, Sarah, we don't have a... Do we have a piece of fabric? We I'm, have a whole bunch of fabric over there. We have there. a lot a lot of fabric here. There's so much fabric. Guess, oh, Ethan tells me it's right here in the door. Oh, great. He has got it all figured out for us. Here we go. Okay. So, a sewing machine... You have to get the presser foot up. There you go. Yep. You it's a needle. needle up too. Okay. I'll let you do that demo okay. part. That's your favorite part. And when you're sewing on the dining room table you don't get a nice slick action across here with your fabric. What you end up doing is bending your wrists, 
and your fabric pulls and oftentimes your stitches are going to pull and be uneven. But this lift takes that problem away from you. It makes it a great flat ergonomic sewing surface across. Now, if you want to do garment sewing, uh, oh, we'll get to the next part. Let's fold down this leaf. Oh, okay. Sounds like a great Because it'll be a little easier if we show them. Got my side. Got it. Got it. Got we'll it. Lower that down. Perfect. So the sewing well, this is, we call this a sewing well. And this is a custom acrylic insert that is also available from Sewing Parts Online. So the nice part about this is you can put this down into storage when you're done with it. And let's say you you uh, you drop the kids off at school, yep. you come home, mm -hmm. you've got a little bit of time or the kids are out of the house and your husband leaves and runs to the hardware store and you've got a little extra time to sew 20 minutes. All you do is you walk into your studio, your machine goes up, you can sew here if you wanna sew. And like we said, you've got a little wrist action there where you go up and over. Or you push it down like that. And now you're in flatbed. We call this flatbed sewing. Flatbed position. That's right. And if you have a custom acrylic insert, just zips right in. Boom. You now know, I just, if, if I was sewing using this cabinet, I just saved myself five, 10 minutes, half of my free time sewing time. That's right. I didn't have to lug my machine out of its case and set it up. And find the power cord, find, find an the extension power cord. cord to plug it back in. Right. So that's the advantage of a sewing cabinet. Right. Is you and you can actually store it. And in this unit, it has a door, so you can close the cabinet and lock it and keep everybody out of it. So we'll get to that in a second. I think the next thing to show is probably the caddy and the storage in the door, which right. is really nice. So this is a hydraulic lift on this. You saw me just push it down, and it was super easy to do. This is super easy. Down we go, and it locks. Right. And I'll have to pull it back up. So there's no lifting of the machine. Very easy. And I think it's worth mentioning that this lift, the size of lift, will accommodate machines up to 55 pounds. Correct. So that's going to cover most machines most on the machines. market. Yeah. yeah. OK, this caddy is really great. Now, the caddy has a lot of storage available to it. I'm not sure how much you can see on here. Oh, there we go. That's a great shot. We've got two drawers at the top. They're full view, soft closing drawers. And we have a space down at the bottom here, this little cubby. Look at how nice and roomy this is. I've got room for my serger machine down here to just pop that away when I'm not using it. Another great thing about this caddy and about this sewing cabinet in general is the versatility that you get with positioning of the caddy. Now, in this position here, this is where the caddy actually rolls in to the cabinet for storage. And you can keep it attached right here, or if you would like a little bit more elbow room while you are sewing or quilting or crafting, the caddy actually rolls over here. And I think you can see it. These are little anchors inside the door. And there are little pegs on the back end of the caddy that slide right in there. It just right locks right in there. Now you've got additional you work go. surface. Additional work surface on the side. and a lot of room to spread out. Storage in the door. You've got three uh, storage areas in the door. Lots of room on the right and the left of this cabinet. And because it's September National Sewing Month, there's a special that is going on right now at Sewing Parts Online. If you purchase the Wallaby or the Aussie cabinet or the Wallaby, which we'll show in just a little bit, you can get a free $699. We call it a Kiwi. So the Kiwi is a cute little cabinet. It has three storage drawers. These top couple drawers come with thread storage, which is removable. And you can take this, set it on your machine top if you have to change out thread. So when you're using it, so it's got pegs for all your different threads. And then when you're done with it, you can store it back in. So the top two drawers come with that feature, soft closing drawers. Three drawers, one large drawer at the bottom. And what's nice is you can take this, kind of put it on this side of your sewing. You can sit in the middle. You can cut, press, sew. That's right. You can put your serger on the top over there. Mm -hmm. You have kind of a little command center, a U-shaped command center, which is perfect. And you get all that for one low price this month, which That's is right. great. 
that's I really, really like this nice little storage caddy. It really does everything that Harley said. You can cut, press, sew, and if you're doing a billion and one little squares for your quilt, you can just pile them up right over here. So this is the Aussie with a Kiwi. Now, for those of you not familiar with arrow sewing, let me give you just a little background. I've been around 75 years. We have been, um, all the products, these, these are from our kangaroo product line. They come with a limited lifetime warranty against manufacturer defect. They will ship to your house in a few different boxes, and then you put them together. It's really easy to put them together because Sarah wrote the instructions. I did. And um, she's put together every cabinet we, we sell at least twice, some three times, just to get the directions really easy. We also have videos. Yes, the Kiwi can be sold separately, and it is sold separately also. What else do we need to know about, about our best seller? The, the Aussie is one of the best selling cabinets that we do offer. It comes with something special, as will the, as will the Wallaby in just a bit. It comes with our signature pockets. So he's a cute little kangaroo, and he's yours, and he will be hiding in a box when he arrives at your house. He wants out and he wants to help you sew. That's right. He's so our fun we love mascot. pockets. So this is the Aussie cabinet. It fits machines 23 and three quarters by 12 and a half. And up to 55 pounds. And 55 pounds. So it fits a lot of the machines that are out on the market today. 95% of them. Why don't we show everybody how nice and small it folds down? Let's show them. All right. Let's do it. Let me take my insert out of the way. Push that all the way down. Put the insert back. It's stored. I'll do this right side. Here. This is the easy side. <laughs> All right, you do the easy side. I'm going to work on you the have caddy. You put the caddy in. That's right. Which isn't hard to do. No, not at all. It's if just something it, that has to be done. Can do it. Pulls right in. So we're taking that eight and a half feet of space. Look at that. And now it is folded down to a small, small footprint. Close is four feet by two feet. That's right. It's so this is a cabinet you can sprawl out mm -hmm. and design to provide the ultimate in sewing flexibility. With that said, we're going to take a, we're going to go to music for a second. We're going to switch out and show you the next cabinet, which is actually a cutting table. It's not really a cabinet. All right, Ethan, if you can switch us out, we will move in the cutting cabinet. Welcome back. Okay. We had time to move some things around and we brought out the Kookaburra. The Kookaburra. This is one of my very, very, very favorite products from Aero. Um, this is our signature cutting table. And this is, when I say expansive work surface, I, I really, really mean that. The work surface, when everything is all spread out, is about 70 inches by 40 inches. And it's about three feet tall. And when you close it down, it's only just like the um, just like the also that we just looked at. It's four feet by two feet, so it really it really it, does. Fill it up really small. does. You get a lot of bang for your buck with so this one. So it's one of the largest. It's the largest cutting table that we offer. It has a mat that's custom made for it that you can order. That's right. And the nice part is it's really solid. So it has two of these gate legs right here that hold up each of the leaves, and it comes with four soft closing drawers that are full view so you can get all the way in. I'll get out of the camera. Soft close. So we got four of these which is really great and if you spin it around you spin it around you've got on this side you've got four adjustable shelves. And 
one of the things you saw us just move this big cutting table around. We didn't show it on the Aussie. We'll show it on this. So it has heavy duty casters. And they roll and like a dream. They roll like a dream, carpet or hard floors. So Ethan, can you pull up the uh, caster? We'll show the show the group. Everyone loves casters, right? So casters, so heavy duty casters, same lifetime warranty as the other kangaroo products that you saw. Four drawers on one's four, full view, soft close drawers on the one side. This side has adjustable shelves. That's right. And a custom cutting mat. So it is, um, it's big. <laughs> it's but big. it folds down nice and small. And sometimes you need that space. And you could put a cutting mat on it and you could put a put a wool pressing pad on it and use it to kind of lay everything out. So it's it's really great for that. Yes, on carpet, really on carpet. Really, it will roll. Really on carpet. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then to set this down, it's really easy. It's got a magnet that holds the gate legs up. That's what makes it attach. so easy to flip around the room is those magnets on the gate legs. Can you push that in for me, Arlie? Oh, sure. Thanks. The magnets on the gate legs keep the leaves steady. And you can just whip this guy around your sewing or craft room. So this is the Kookaburra. It's an arrow sewing furniture cabinet. And uh, you'll learn about the great deal on this cabinet also. Uh, comes with a cutting mat, lifetime warranty. Uh, Sarah wrote the directions on this one also. Yes, I did. I, he wrote them on all of them, so I'm just going to say it over and over again. <laughs> it ships right. in a few different boxes. Uh, we ship out in about 48 hours, sometimes 24. You never know when you're going to get tracking information. And um, Sewing Parts Online is a great partner of ours, so we make sure we get things out the door fast. Ethan, why don't we go to our next cabinet and... We'll go to a quick musical interlude again so you don't hear us roll around the studio. As you can tell, we've got things everywhere and nowhere. So we'll be right back with you guys in under a minute. Welcome back, everybody. We will continue now with one of the cabinets that has been in the line for a long time. Right. It's this is our Norma Jean sewing cabinet. And the question that gets asked all the time, hey, is this named after Marilyn Monroe's original name? And the answer is, yeah. We used to have a cabinet called the Marilyn, and then we made the opening larger. That's right. And we said we can't call it the same thing. So we called it the Norma Jean. So pretty intuitive. So I, this is this is cabinet's been in the line for many, many years, decades. It has. It has. And this this cabinet is great. Here you see it completely folded out. Um, when it's all the way open like this, from side to side, you have seven feet of sewing and project space, and it is 20 inches deep. And when you close it up, it kind of cuts its size in half. It goes from seven feet wide to only three and a half feet wide. And again, with that 20 inches deep. So, this cabinet was yeah. kind of designed for people who like to put their furniture up against the wall in their sewing machine. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a quilt leaf with it. There is a quilt leaf available that you can add on and that's available through Sewing Parts Online as well. It has a three, three position hydraulic lift. So this one, you can do free arm sewing. You can go down and do all the way down to storage. So now we're in storage and we can close the doors up. We'll bring it back up. And now we're in flatbed position. So we can sew nice and nice and straight, get nice straight seams. This one's smaller than the last one, but you know, we have things for all the, all different people. Um, this cabinet also looks a little bit more like furniture when it's folded up. It or it's a different style of furniture. Some people put this in a multi-purpose room and we'll use it for that. 
It has a tray on the top to put your quick, easy access things that you need to grab on a regular basis. It has four drawers on the right-hand side. These are nice deep drawers. You can fit a lot of stuff in here. And again, they are full view. You can pull them all the way out and see everything that you have stored in these drawers. And I just want to back up just a second. Um, Harley was talking about the lift. Oh, I didn't say the size. Uh -huh. That's very important. It's <laughs> it is than the last very one. important. It is actually the same as the last one. So just to reiterate, this is also an A7 size lift. The lift opening again is 23 and three quarter inches from side to side and 12 and a half inches from front to back. And once again, just make sure that you measure your machine, including any protruding knobs and cords to make sure that you're going to fit within that 23 and three quarter inches by 12 and a half inches. So very different than, than the Aussie that we showed earlier. This is the Norma Jean cabinet. Comes in a few different colors. Uh, you can see those all online at Sewing Parts Online. And the nice part is if you see it in different colors, uh, I believe this one is on sale, I believe, right now. So uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. We have so much to cover with you guys, and we're running out of time. Oh, man. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this one away. We're going to show you how small it gets. Once again, as we fold this one up, it's got, it's got a beautiful place to keep your thread. It's got a single door, magnetic lock on it, and it looks nice. You can put it in any room. So if you have a multi-purpose room, it has casters on it so you can roll it around. It does also roll on carpet, not heavy shag carpet, but it'll roll on regular carpet. And uh, this is the Norma Jean on sale at Sewing Parts Online. That's right. So, Ethan, why don't we go and show them the next cabinet? I'm excited about this next one. It's one of my favorites. I love the Aussie, but I love this one too. And we'll uh, we'll be right back in under a minute again. So impressive. I like it. I want it. That's what I want to read in the comments. I love that. Hello from North Dakota. Hello, North Dakota. And the lift is what makes it great. So we're going to talk about another cabinet that has a lift. Is that right, Ethan? We're bringing up another cabinet with a lift. So we're going to pull that up uh, and we'll be right back with you guys. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. It's Harley and Sarah at Arrow Sewing Furniture. We're going to talk to you about the next cabinet in the lineup. You know, this is a lot of cabinet to show people. There's a lot of cabinets. We've shown yes. a lot. Right. This one is one of my favorites. You know what? I say that about every one of them. They're one of my favorites, but they really are. They're 
let's just talk about this one. This is Wallaby. Wallaby is also a full-size sewing cabinet. Now, it's not as expansive as the Aussie. When it's fully expanded, it's about six feet wide. And with this quilt leaf, you've got from front to back about five feet of working space. Which is great. I mean, it's something, it's different. And that's kind of what we want to offer is something that fits your your room and your lifestyle. Right. And this is kind of our everyday cabinet for everyday sewers. You can do just about anything on here. And um, when it's closed up, it has just a three and a half foot by one and a half foot footprint. We'll show that in a minute. That's and you know, right. the nice part is this cabinet really is a it has all the benefits of a full size cabinet, but it really has a home friendly footprint. The Aussie is really large. This one fits in more homes or a smaller space depends on your room so measure your room kind of dream a little bit about what you want in your room yeah. what oh, you want to do that's the best part is dreaming it up isn't it no the best part is actually buying it and starting to sew that's the best part that's my favorite it's part. all good parts all so, fun all fun. yeah and this, this one has all kinds of convenience built into it uh comes in two colors that's right it comes in ash white and teak and we may not have said that about the other cabinets, but the other, uh, the first cabinet we showed, the Aussie also comes in teak and ash white. I believe we showed it in white. That's right. And so the Norma Jean. Even showing teak up there on the screen. It's a, it's a beautiful kind of rich wood color. Um, white is the number one seller. Uh, teak is just a little bit behind. So it's not 50-50, but depends on your decor and what That's you right. want. That's right. Um, the Kookaburra, also from the Kangaroo line, also comes in the teak and ash white finishes. And the, um, the Norma Jean comes in four colors. It comes in white, oak, cherry, and black. So okay. it, it fits just about any decor. So this is the Wallaby. Great thing about the Wallaby, you've got thread storage on the one door, a big box to store things down here. You've got a place where you can put a sewing basket to keep your projects. And there's also a drawer down below, which is great to put things in. It's got the three position hydraulic lift again. So you have that nice flat bed sewing right here that you can use, which is really great to have flat bed sewing. It'll change your seams forever. And once again, this is an A7 size opening. The lift opening from side to side is 23 and three quarters inches. And from front to back, 12 and a half inches. This lift also accommodates machines up to 55 pounds. So really just about every machine on the market will fit into this lift opening. You know, the other thing, the Wallaby cabinet also this month comes with a free Kiwi. So you can move the Kiwi around. Again, it's got the three drawers on top to have thread storage. The bottom drawer is a little bigger to put things in. You can cut. You can press, you can sew. It's kind of your command center and you can move it around and put it wherever you want to in your sewing studio. The other thing that we want to show, and you might win a pair of these, is something called a quilt block. These quilt blocks are great. These were developed with... Um, Krista with, Watson. With Krista Watson. A well-known right. quilter. An award-winning quilter. So and the quilt block, yeah, we're going to show guy, the quilt block. They're really easy to install. It comes with this bracket and it is adjustable. You just slide it onto your table and tighten down your knobs. And these are great. They act as kind of a guard rail to keep your fabric from sliding off the table. And you quilters know that once you've got a quilt sliding off the table, you risk it getting dirty. And more than that even, those pulled stitches. Once again, pulled stitches when you've got your your beautiful work falling off the back of your table. Here, I'm going to show. I'm oh, going to do a demonstration. Great. So if you're sewing and pretend you're going through the machine and your quilt's coming back here, last thing you want to do is have it fall on the floor. So it'll actually bunch up and it's like a guardrail for your quilt. That's right. So these are great. They come in a pair of two. They come in four different colors to match your different cabinets. If it's, uh, if it's all the kangaroo product. Um, and the arrow line as well. In the airline as well. So very exciting product to have. I think uh, we're running out of time, but we have to show the jewelry now Oh, that jewelry. everyone wants to know about the chairs. That's right. Because Trish is going to say, hey, what about chairs? So, and watch how easy this is to put down. Look at this. It just, I'm going to take my quilt blocks off. It's just easy. Hand those to you. Off. Perfect. 
So Kiwi this month, this is the Wallaby. It's, uh, it's one of our top three signature cabinets because of its functionality and a small footprint. Comes also, with pockets. Also comes with your friend pockets. Which is great. And the Kiwi does come with the ironing pad and a small cutting board for you. So. And Wallaby also locks. So if you've got kids like mine who always want to put their grubby little mitts on your fabric shears, you know how important that lock is. So with that said, I think what we're going to do is we're not going to cut to a graphic, Ethan. I'm just going to have you mute my mic so they don't hear all the rolling around. I'm going to roll chairs into Sarah. All right, Sarah, here we go. Fun. This here is going to be go. great. All right. Ready? Here they come. Duchess Blue. Crown Ruby. Duchess Gray. No, wait. Okay, here we go. Notions. Here we go. There's another one. Royal Purple. This one. Ah, just in time for Halloween. Wicked cosplay. Oh, I got to do two rows. Okay. Bring them, bring them, bring them. Okay. This one is Princess Hazel and the PAC Resistance. Woo! -hoo! I almost got a strike. <laughs> Should be perfect to get a strike. So the nice part about the arrow chairs is mm -hmm. the lumbar support. We'll try to move back a little bit. No. Before Ethan yells at me. <laughs> your crowding is great. So you're too close. So the nice part about the arrow chair, it goes from 18 to 22 inches of seat height. It is hydraulic operated right here on the side. Down, up. I'm not a small man, but it does hold up to 300 pounds, which is great. It's got a five-star base, so if you drop something, you have to bend over, you can easily grab it. And you saw how easily that rolled when Harley came rolling in here. It rolls, rolls great. It has it a one-year warranty. Uh, the 360 swivel, as I demonstrated when I came in. Let's... All it's <laughs> it's got such smooth movement and yes it does also roll on carpet again not real thick shag carpeting but most carpets it rolls just fine comes and it in, comes in 10 different patterns 10 different 10, patterns five patterns five patterns that's right and another neat thing about this chair apart from the comfort it's also practical it opens up you can store things in here here if we turn it this way Ethan can maybe get a camera shot oh he's got you in the camera Perfect. There we go. You see how it opens up? I'll just spin it around, do my little fan white thing. Store things inside, the, thing. chair. Store so things inside the chair. We have covered a lot, Sarah. So we the have. chairs right now, $299 is the advertised price. Uh, Trisha will talk to you about that in just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, the chairs, yeah. Oh, man, comments are going crazy. Oh, I think people like Someone our told chairs. Me to turn on my mic, Ethan. All right. Yeah, we just had somebody else say, Harley, turn up your mic. Are you, now you guys are all going to regret me turning up my mic, I'm telling you. So it comes in five colors and five patterns. That's right. What else did I say? One-year uh, warranty. One-year warranty. comes in two boxes, takes about 10 minutes to put together. Mm -hmm. Five-star base. It's very sturdy. Rolls like a dream on hardwood like and carpet. And uh, this, your sewing room is not complete without a sewing chair. That's right. You wouldn't use an office chair. Some of you do. And Did you mention the lumbar support? I mentioned the lumbar support, but my mic may have been off. The lumbar support is great. I actually have one of these at home as um, I use it as a sewing chair and as an office desk chair. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's versatile too. So, and the lumbar really hits you in a nice spot mm -hmm. um, for most everybody. It's That's how we sell a bunch of these chairs. If you're at a show, or you go to a store, and um, once you sit in it, you'll say, why didn't I do this earlier? It's only $300. It's great. So, great chair. Um, Ethan, I think we're out of time. Trisha, I apologize. We ran over. But we're going to throw it back to you. You have so much to cover and to give away. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. We are definitely going to have to have you back because I want to hear more. That was fabulous furniture. <laughs> oh, there's so much more to tell you. We didn't get to go in depth into any of them, but hopefully enough for your viewers to call in and talk to your staff. I know we had a training not that long ago with your staff mm -hmm. um, and all the operators. So I'm very excited that folks can be working with you at Sewing Parts Online. Well, thank you again. We appreciate you. We'll get to it. Pockets is going to help me. Excellent. <laughs> Pockets is there to help. I love it, Tricia. Thank you. Fantastic. Have a great right, rest of the week. Have a fabulous day. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, we went a little bit over, but I do want to show you this fabulous pricing. I mean, this, all this furniture was amazing. I love that they had so many different options 
depending on your space. You can select a smaller cabinet. You can get that big Aussie too. That was the one that was like, ooh, I think I have a little dream cabinet going on. <laughs> one thing that I do want to mention is don't let the fact that um, you're looking at a piece of furniture be like, oh, I don't know if I can get that right now. We have financing available. So in addition to our special event pricing, you can do financing. So give our customer service a call and they are more than happy to discuss that with you. Um, let's take a peek at the Aussie too. It's showing that it normally has an M MSRP of 2,499. Our regular sale price right now is the 1,799. But as Harley had mentioned with the purchase of the Aussie 2 sewing cabinet, you get that free QE multi-use cabinet. That is a $700 value. It was so cute, so versatile, makes your sewing space so easy to use and have everything that you need to do. Cutting, pressing, sewing, the whole nine yards. So in addition to the Aussie 2, we also can do the Wallaby where you purchase the Wallaby for um, the special event pricing. You can also get that multi-use cabinet. So the little Kiwi. And that normally, the wa excuse me, the Wallaby 2 normally is 2,199. Our special is the 1,599, just our sale price, but call for special event pricing. Remember that they can help you get you get a pricing that you are not going to see for a very, very, very long time. If I could talk, excuse me. <laughs> and I just love that the little Kiwi cabinet gets thrown in there as well. So again, financing is available. Now is the time to get some furniture. You also can have that special applied to the kangaroo and joey cabinet set. That one is normally $2,499 on sale for $1,799. You know the drill, call for special pricing and you will get the kangaroo and joey cabinet set along with the kiwi. We got to see the kookaburra cutting table. How fabulous was that having a station just for cutting? It normally is $1,599. Our regular sale right now is the $1,199, but with the purchase of the kookaburra cutting table, you get the kangaroo cutting mat. If you look at the picture over on the left, it shows that that cutting mat covers the entire kookaburra cutting or the kookaburra table. So you don't have to worry about hitting the table at all with your rotary cutter. It covers the entire thing. Now, just a quick note that is on a, a little back order, the early October. So that's just around the corner. But if you call now and get that special event pricing, that will secure the um, special. So you'll still get that cutting mat, even though it's on a small back order. Let's talk about the Norma Jean. With the Norma Jean, because it's National Sewing Month, Arrow has given us the privilege of lowering the price of the Norma Jean. It normally uh, is the, I believe, $15.99. I'm squinting today, guys. And it is on sale for $9.99. So that is a fabulous discount on the Norma Jean. The quilt blocks are awesome. Uh, Brian, do you mind going ahead and putting that video up? And I've got it set up on my table here. There we go. Uh, look at our little mess in the background, sorry. But I wanted to show you that little Krista's quilt block set up on the table. That is super nice to have on your table to prevent your quilt from hitting the floor. Also, I just had to show you one of the adorable hydraulic chairs. That is such a fun print and it does um, open up as he has said. And the lumbar support is real. I mean, seriously, you sit on it and it hits your back perfectly. They're so comfortable. So that was the last thing that I wanted to show you is the hydraulic chair. It normally has an MSRP of $449. It's on sale right now for $299. So all of these items, you can give our customer service a call. We have our special event pricing. Our phone number's right at the top of the screen. They are more than happy to help you out. And you're gonna get some awesome furniture. <laughs> All right, one thing before we bring Presley on with Philtech, we have the Juki sitting here. It is the HCL um, G220. This is gonna be in a giveaway later on. So continue commenting. We're going to be giving away an awesome machine. 
the other thing, oh, man, we've got a couple things to cover. We have giveaways. I, I was losing it. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and give away the hydraulic, or excuse me, yeah, the hydraulic chair. My goodness. All right, Brian, are we ready to do a giveaway on that awesome chair? We are ready. Let's do it. All right. Let's do, and what number is that, Brian? That should be prize number 33. Okay, number 33 is going to get that awesome hydraulic sewing chair. All right, Rebecca Newell, congratulations. You win that amazing chair. Okay. And Arrow kindly donated some other items as well. We're not going to get them to or to them right now, but they will be later on. They are going to be a couple of the Krista blocks here. And then also we're doing a couple of pockets. So it'll be some fun giveaways. We will save those for a little bit later, but let's go ahead and bring up Presley. I'm so sorry about the delay, Presley. No worries. How are you? you? Very good. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Well, we are happy that you're here. And since we went a little over on time, we're going to let you get right to it if you don't mind. Perfect. Well, thanks for having me, Sewing Parts Online. Um, I'm here today to go over um, all of Filtech's thread offerings, but I thought first I would give you a little background on the history of Filtech. So we are a U.S. manufacturer based out of Hagerstown, Maryland. Um, we started in the thread business with um, industrial threads. So we have been creating threads for furniture companies, um, boat companies for over 40 years. Um, we manufacture most commonly known Glide thread. Um, some people know us as the Glide Company, but we are Filtech. Um, so today I'm going to go over um, our uh, polyester option, which is our Glide thread. We're going to cover some of our variegated options as well as our cotton thread, which is a little less well known than Glide. Then we'll take a look at our silk thread, Allure. We will look at our industrial thread offerings that come in smaller put up sizes. Um, and then we'll also look at some of the kits that we have available through some of our partnerships. So first, everyone knows Glide Thread. It has beautiful sheen. You get consistent tensions. Um, and my favorite thing about Glide Thread is that we put it on this really cool spool that causes or allows for you not to have as much waste. So this is the King's Bull that we're looking at here. And you can see I've just wrapped it around the bottom, snapped it into place, and you're good to go. So you're not going to have a mess um, in your sewing rooms. So we've got two different offerings. We've got the King's Bull, which has 5,000 yards, and then we have our mini spool. And you can see here with my ring light, the help of it, you can see the nice sheen that Glide has. Um, this is a 40 weight product and can be used for long arming, um, machine embroidery, and it, it really has been our staple product within the quilting, embroidery, and sewing um, industry. As a complementary product to Glide, we have Affinity, which is a 40 weight as well, um, but it's going to be our variegated. So I picked this color today. It's our Christmas um, blend. You can see you've got all your reds and greens, a little bit of yellows. Um, and our affinity is a 40 weight. And what's really nice is that you have um, over nine colors in this thread and they repeat every inch. Um, so or that the color changes every inch. Pardon me. So much like the Glide, you're going to have consistent tensions. Um, it doesn't have as much sheen just because of the color variation, but we definitely see a lot of um, long armors use this, especially on patriotic quilts um, and seasonal quilts. Next, I'm going to be talking about our Cairo quilt, which is our cotton thread. And one great thing about our cotton thread is that it is a long staple. So you're not going to have as much lint um, and as much cleanup with a long staple cotton as you would with a short staple. So our Cairo quilt 
um, just like our glide thread, comes on a snap spool as well. So this is a 50 weight. And we see people that um, piece with this product. We also have a lot of people who long arm um, and even do some embroidery with our Cairo quilt. So we've got two different put up options in our Cairo quilt. So we've got um, our king spool, which has um, 3,000 yards. And then we have our mini spool, which has um, 900 yards. So again, this is a 50 weight and it can be used for a variety of things. Um, much, much like the glide or not like the glide, we, the cotton is not going to have as much sheen. Um, so it's going to really have a matte finish um, that blends into a lot of the fabrics that you're sewing it into. Like the affinity that I just talked about, we have a variegated option in our cotton line. So it's called Harmony. And this, I would say, is our most popular variegated option, and it's our patri Patriot color. So you have your red, whites, and blues, um, and it goes really beautifully on um, patriotic quilts. I've even seen some people embroider with this, and it really turns out beautiful, especially around um, the 4th of July, uh, Memorial Day. So this is an option here, and again, it's a 50 weight, just like our Cairo quilt. The next quilting and embroidery thread that I'm going to share with you is our Allure, and it's our 100 weight silk thread. And this is going to be great for all of those intricate quilts um, that you are designing. Um, we, we see people use this when they really want the thread to blend and not necessarily stand out on their pieces. So Allure is a great option um, if you're trying to achieve that. So again, this is a hundred weight and it has um, 500 yards on this mini spool. We only have this in the mini spool option. Next, I'm gonna be talking about our industrial threads. And really um, we've seen an uptick recently with the hobbyist really loving our bonded twisted nylon. So this is one of our bread and butter products on the Filtex side of things. So this exact thread is, so, is sold to companies like Lazy Boy um, and all of their recliners are sewn with this, couches, and this is going to be a Tech 70. So it's going to be super strong. You're not going to be able to break it um, with your hand. Um, this is going to be great for those of you who are bag making, um, sewing leather goods. It's really going to give you the rigidity that you need um, to sew with. So it's going to be strong. It's going to hold up to upholstery work. Um, if that's what you're into, it's, it's a thread that unlike the glod and the cotton that I shared with you earlier, this is going to be for your heavy duty products, um, especially if you're using an industrial sewing machine. So the industrial thread really has taken off in the past I would say year or so, especially for those of you that have um, developed the hobbies for bag making. Um, and it really has proven out to be a great, a great product. Since I've talked about the Glide and the Cairo quilt, I thought I'd share with you our color cards. I know these are so fun to look at and sometimes a little hard to come by, but every day I tell people we are developing new colors of Glide. So right now, I think we have over 330 colors um, and they're constantly coming out. So always be on the lookout for new colors popping up here and there. Um, we've got beautiful ones that are going to be launching soon and even a new color card. And then for our Cairo quilt, we've got a little over 50 colors, as you can see here. And then we have our variegated options um, on the other side. So We've got a little bit of everything. If you aren't into the sheen of Glide, we have a cotton option or a spun poly for you. Um, but Glide is really the one that we are creating more and more colors for every day. So finally, I will talk about some of our kit offerings. So we have a partnership with Kimberbell and we create, we work with them to create thread kits that match their patterns. 
Um, so this is actually the two scoops thread kit and they come in these nice little carrying cases that are stackable. And as you can see, we, we packed this with, um, 12 spools. They, some of them have 10, some of them have 12, um, but these will be a direct match to those Kimberbell kits. And these will all be Glide 40 weights, um, which is what I just showed you earlier. And they have pretty much had all different colors in them, um, specifically picked out by the folks at Kimberbell. So the last item that I will talk about is one of the reasons why we got into the quilting and embroidery world. Um, and that is our Magna Glide bobbins. So this Magna Glide bobbin, what makes it special is it's sideless. And then if you can see there, there's a magnet on the bottom. So I have a bobbin casing with me. And what's great is this magnet's gonna magnetize to the bottom of the casing and allow for consistent tension throughout um, sewing. So you can see, just put the bobbin in. It's not gonna fall out, it's magnetized, and it's just gonna come off so smoothly. So this product has what is what really projected us into the sewing and quilting world. We've got commercial embroidery companies that use thousands of these a day um, to the long armors who love our Magna Glide Delights. So we produce these bobbins in both a size L and a size M. Um, for those of you who long arm, you may have used some of our M bobbins. This is an L that I have here today. And um, what's nice is we, we wind both a um, 60 weight and a 40 weight onto the magnetic core. We also offer our cotton thread on a magnetic core as well. So if you have that preference, um, then we have that option for you too. So if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Hello, Presley. Actually, I have a question. Okay. When when inserting the preloaded bobbin, do you have to remove the internal spring in your bobbin case? We recommend that you do. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. We yeah, have some people that, we that prefer got... not to, but we, we recommend that you do. Okay. Yeah. And we had conflicting information. And when I was in customer service, that was a question we would get. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to ask her that because I want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get that a lot. Awesome. Do we have any more questions, Brian? Uh, it looks like somebody was asking what the magnetic core was. Oh, somebody was asking what the magnetic core was. So or magnetic, what does that mean? yeah. So our magnetic core, we actually produce this bobbin from the core up. Um, so the core we actually extrude. It's just a piece of polymer plastic, and then we have a magnet that is attached to the bottom. So it's just a plastic core um, with a magnet on the bottom. Awesome. I think we're good then. It looks like everybody was enjoying that demonstration. We really appreciate that, Presley. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We are going to move into giveaways. And so we've got this right here, all the ones that you had sent, those gorgeous Kimberbell kits that you sent us. So we are excited to give those away. Awesome. All right. Well, you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right, you guys, as she mentioned, these kits are absolutely beautiful. And they come with this nice case with the click on the side here. Open them up. And as she had mentioned, too, they are stackable. So if you decide to get your own kits, then you are able to stack these neatly in your sewing space. So we're going to go right ahead and pick five winners for this gorgeous glide thread. All of these are the glide thread 40 weight, as she had mentioned. So very versatile for you. All right, Brian, let's start with number 34. This one is going to be the Candy Cane Collection. Let's do number 34, Candy Cane Collection. Here we go. All right, Wanda Burnett, congratulations. You win number 34. 
Uh, and since they're stackable, I'm just going to stack them right over here. <laughs> All right, number 35, we've got the love notes. Love notes. Let's see. Do I have enough time to open up and show these colors? I want to show them. They're so pretty. There we go. Can you see that okay, Brian? A little small. A little small. Let me take the giveaway tool away. There we go. All right. So let's do the love notes. And that's going to be number 35. I want you to see what you're getting. <laughs> Anthony Modern, watching on YouTube. Thank you so much for commenting. You win number 35, the love notes. Okay, next we have red, white, and blue. I'm going to show these two. There we go. Gorgeous. Number 36. Here we go. Number 36 is going to be... Pat Godshock. Godshock? There we go. <laughs> I will get this. <laughs> All right. Number 36 is Pat. Next, we have the Fall Collection. This one's gorgeous. Too. Oh, they're all gorgeous. Let's see. There we go. I just don't want to dump them out. There we go. The Fall Collection. That one is number 37. Oh, I lost my little mouse. Where'd you go? It's hiding from me. There it is. Okay. Number 37. Greta Sobel, you won number 37. That is the fall kit. And last but not least, you've got the Boulevard. And this one is super fun. Coming Halloween coming up. Fantastic colors there. A lot of purples, orange. Wonderful for Halloween. This is going to be number 38. 38. And at the end of the day, we'll do what we did yesterday and recap all of the winners. So if you weren't present, you'll be able to look at the end of the day and see. Sarah Lee McGee, congratulations, Sarah Lee. You are the winner of number 38. All right. I am going to get rid of this. All right, so to collect your prizes, guys, all you need to do is go to our link tree noted in the description. You can just click claim your prize. There's a form to fill out. Just submit that and we will get your thread to you. So we really enjoyed that segment. Up next, we are going to be uh, having Grace again. We had them yesterday, so that was awesome. They are going to be talking about the 21X Elite Machine with automation. And that will be, I believe, Melinda joining us again and then Laurel. So I believe they're just about ready to be added to the stream. Let me just double check with Brian. Or, are we good or do we need a couple of minutes? All right. All right. Well, we're going to bring them up. Hello, you guys. Good morning, Trisha. How are you today? I'm doing fabulous. Welcome back. I hope you guys are doing well, too. We are. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, it, it's been uh, such an exciting show, uh, Trisha. We had so much fun yesterday. Uh, I was telling Laurel, uh, we talked about the cutie uh, with the domestic and the 15 Pro. Uh, we talked all about the 21X Elite. Uh, and today uh, we're, we're adding on to that 21X Elite with our automation. Uh, so it's going to be lots of information, uh, super cool, uh, you know, accessory or addition to your machine. Uh, so we'll, you know, lots to talk about. Yeah, I know. I'm really excited. Uh, um, this is the first time I'm joining you guys, but I'm really excited to be here uh, with Melinda. 
Uh, the automation is something that I think you guys are really gonna come to love um, if you haven't ever seen it before. Uh, automation kind of holds a special spot in my heart because it was one of the first things I ever started to do when it even just came to quilting in general. And so it'll be something that's really neat to see. And then one thing that people always talk about is like, oh, well, automation, you know, is expensive or it's something that I need to be tech savvy for. And it's not. And we're going to show you that really there's pretty much three basic steps that you need to do to be able to use this automation. And anybody can do it, whether you're tech savvy or you've never touched an iPhone in your life or anything, <laughs> you'll be able to do it. <laughs> yes. Well, that sounds wonderful and in addition to that like we said before we'll go over some pricing afterwards but just as you're watching this keep in mind that we do have the special event pricing and we have financing available so make sure to keep that in the back of your mind as you're watching their wonderful demonstration all right thanks so much Trisha well uh, Laurel are you ready uh, yes. you know, let's get into the automation um, I know as a beginning quilter I, I, you know, starting with the Grace Company just a little over, uh, what, a year and a half ago ish, about that, yeah. roughly that. Uh, no quilting experience whatsoever. Uh, I have a sewing machine at home. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, can do small projects with my machine. Uh, but I feel, you know, coming to the Grace Company, having all of our awesome machines, frames, notions, everything at my disposal uh, and ready to use, I, I feel I've you know, certainly come a long way, um, yeah. but I will admit the automation still kind of intimidates me. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, that's where, again, that's, I think that's something that has maybe always stopped people from getting into it. Um, and the part of that is it is sort of, uh, tends to be a little bit of an extra cost, you know, and that's where Trisha brought up that we'll talk again about some of the special event pricing that they have um, that really will help you be able to get into this if that's something you're looking at. So uh, we're gonna kind of go over it and, you know, Linda, you talked about that it is some intimidation there. And so I'm actually gonna give you three simple steps that you can do, whether it's with the beginnings version, the pro version, whether it's a simple pattern that I'm placing in a single block, or if it's an entire pantograph, anything, it's three simple steps that you're gonna be able to use to pretty much have the machine quilted out for you. I am super excited. So uh, again, we have uh, the 21X Elite uh, on site uh, with our uh, automation. Uh, everything's fully set up. We saw some glimpses uh, of, of the remnants uh, of the automation yesterday on this machine. So today we've added everything. We're ready to take the plunge. So uh, yes. let's take, uh, you know, get into it, dive into it uh, with the awesome yeah. features. And, and you said three easy steps yes. to get everything completed, right? That is correct. So really the three easy steps and you're Get a pen and pencil out, write it down, and I'll, we'll say it a couple different times, and we're gonna show you these three easy steps. But it's a simple, you pick your pattern, you place your pattern, and you quilt it. That, you make it sound it. so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it is that easy. And again, it's super simple. You pick your pattern, whether again, it's a simple block, pantograph, anything like that. You're gonna tell the machine where you want it to stitch it out. So again, place that pattern, and then you're gonna quilt it. And then you'll let the machine do all that work for you. And then it's gonna have that professional look Yes. Once it's done. <laughs> exactly. That's one thing I think that's really unique about the automation. And some people will say, oh, well, you're not finishing the quilt yourself. But that is absolutely not true. You have to go and choose the pattern. Even we'll show you that you can actually go in and really change that pattern or manipulate it to fit however you want it to be. So even though you may have a pattern, you can actually end up with a completely different pattern than you started with because you're able to go in again, really make it your own with it. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get into it. Yes, yeah, so you'll see right here. So this is a separate piece that we have from the machine. So this is a tablet that we're using to run the software on. So the tablet is something that is separate from the automation. So it is something you'd need to purchase um, in order to use that software. But this is the beginnings version. And so this is really what the screen's gonna look like, um, whether you have the beginnings or the pro version. And we'll go into that pro version after we walk you through kind of what this looks like. So on the screen here, you're gonna see over here on your left-hand side is the user manual. So again, this is on the beginnings or the pro. And it's really nice, we'll just kind of go in here and show you that it gives you, it takes you through those different steps. And you'll notice that it is in a PDF version so that you can go in and really, if you want, print out that so you can have it wherever you need it to be. So that's a really nice feature to have there. 
And then what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go right into that select and sew. So this is if you're looking to place a single pattern you know, in a block. Um, and this is really nice where if you're looking to place multiple patterns a lot, you can do this with this as well. Um, so right here you'll notice is it's bringing up that I am in my block patterns and I have quite a few different options. So let's kind of scroll through. Um, so there, there's within this library uh, of patterns, whether it's a block pattern, a continuous line pattern, there's over 200 different patterns uh, at your disposal within the program. Yes, and right now you'll see this is a demo version, so it doesn't quite have all those patterns, but that is something that's a really nice feature with the automation is um, anytime we you know, add new patterns and all that, it's actually an update that you can do, so that is something that's free. So once you buy the software, you will get the 200 plus patterns, and then you'll even notice actually here on the file types, there's quite a few different ones that you can use any of these file types to actually import your own pattern into it. So even though you get the 200, you again have even more um, options that you can use to then bring into the software here. Uh, but what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna show you again, we're gonna do a simple block pattern. So that's why we're up here in that block placement. And we're gonna go ahead and choose one here. So we'll go ahead and choose this cute little teddy bear. And so one thing that we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a bit of a step back here so you can see it, but one thing we're gonna do is that when you go on here, you wanna make sure to set what we call the safe area. So the safe area is actually where you're gonna tell the machine how much space you have to quilt within. So you can see it's showing you a diagram here of the space. So what you're gonna to need to do is actually move the machine itself, like it's prompting me here, to the top left. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And you use your needle really as that, um, as that guide to really make sure you're gonna put it in the right space. And so when you go to place your pattern again, you're gonna use your needle as that placement tool. Bottom right. So in, in Laurel, I just want to backtrack just a little yeah, bit. So course. yesterday we talked uh, about the edge warding system uh, yes. on the 21X <clears throat> Elite. So setting uh, the safe zone uh, of the automation, it's pretty much the exact same as what yes. you would normally do without the automation on the 21X Elite. Yes, that is exactly correct. Because again, really you're just saying, hey, you know, machine, this is how much space I have to work with, and so this is where I want to place my pattern within. So yes, just like that, that's a perfect example. So then kind of what we're gonna do again, remember we picked our pattern, we're gonna now place our pattern, and then we'll quilt. So right here on our screen, you're gonna notice that there are four gray nodes. So those are actually the spots where, again, using my needle um, as my point of reference is where I'm gonna move my machine to. So let's say I'm gonna come up here and quilt it just right here. I'm gonna start with that upper left. Once I've placed it and get actually moved my machine where I want it to, you come and you tap that node. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come place that just drag it down, do my bottom left here. Again, just tapping that corresponding node. I'm gonna come over, again, using that needle as that reference point. And one thing that you'll notice as I go through and select these different points, you'll notice that the pattern itself actually shrunk down. So this is my whole safe area I have to quilt in, but I'm only quilting this within this small spot. So that's why it actually shrunk it down to where I want it to stitch out for me. And so now, we, again, we've picked our pattern, we've now placed it and told it where we want it to stitch, and you will notice that all these nodes are green. That means that I have the go-ahead, in a sense, to go ahead and quilt it. Um, but kind of just taking a look at the screen is, um, previously, you know, I had mentioned that you are able to come in and really make the pattern your own. So this is where you can come in here, you can see you can flip the pattern, you can, you know, flip it this way, or horizontally, and then you can actually come in and shrink it or enlarge in that design. Or even here, you'll notice you can actually rotate that design to really, again, be whatever you want it to look like. And really, even though that pattern is set, you can come in and, you know, again, make it your own there. But now that we have it placed, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna hit quilt. And then you'll notice it just is connecting. So this is the automation actually connecting with the machine um, so it knows it's getting ready to sew. So now all we're gonna do is we're literally gonna hit sew. You're gonna hear the machine engages. It's gonna come move to this green point because that is its starting point. Again, that machine's gonna come and move for me on it. And now it's gonna stitch it out for me. And now typically when you're doing this, um, you do wanna pull up your bobbin. Um, and it does have a nice feature where it'll actually prompt you to do so. Pull that out of the way. And again, it's just gonna quilt out that cute little bear for us. You just made this look so incredibly 
easy. Uh, now, it really can't be. I, I, I mean, I just can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> it is, it really is something that, again, sometimes can be very intimidating, but again, if you go back to those three simple steps, that really will help you do any type of design, whether, again, it's a simple block placement, or it is an entire quilt or a pantograph or anything. Again, you select your design, you place it, and you quilt it. That, it, it it's amazing. Uh, just look just look at the quality of that stitching. Uh, it, it looks professional, uh, and you might be a professional, Laurel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there, I'm getting there, but it just looks so amazing, so easy. It does. So, just, and that is the cutest little bear. Look at that, yes. And again, one thing that was really nice, again, is kind of going back to that placement, is I did have those four different notes that I was selecting it with. So again, I really was able to size it to fit within that square I was wanting it to be quilted on. And then one thing you'll notice there is it does a couple tie-off stitches. You are able to change actually how many tie-off stitches you want, both at the beginning and the end there. So that is a nice feature to have. Um, but then that's it. You literally, you finish your pattern and you'll see that now I have a cute little bear um, quilted out exactly where I wanted it to. So that's a really fun, um, again, it's really, I, the automation is just so neat because again, you know, Melinda, I'm not a professional <laughs> at all. Uh, I've been at the Grace Company probably about two years now, but I really haven't done a lot of quilting um, <laughs> like at all. So it's really nice that um, this can give me that look of a professional um, by simply just clicking a few buttons. Again, it's the simple pick your pattern, place it, and then quilt it. That That's awesome. Uh, truly awesome. Now, can we quilt an entire quilt or what are there any limitations? Yeah, no, great question. So um, with this simple one that we've done where it's a simple um, select and sew, you actually are able to do, if you want an entire quilt that way, um, it would be as simple, you have your quilts or your one block, and then once you're done, you would need to shift over your machine and really place it in the next block that you're looking to quilt. Um, but you can certainly do an entire quilt that way if that's what you wanted. And one thing that is nice is you can come in here, and again, if you want, you can come and select a different pattern if you wanted, for that next block. And so again, that's a really fun, um, nice thing that you do have uh, different abilities to do a simple you know, block placement, or you can do an entire quilt, um, edge to edge really, if you wanted to. Um, but kind of going into edge to edge, usually if someone is looking to do so, we have what we call the panograph feature. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our main home screen here. And again, this is just what that main home screen looks like. So we did the select and sew. Now we're gonna go into our panograph. So this one is used more typically um, for those looking to do an entire quilt edge to edge. And then really, I would say, probably the same design for that entire quilt. Um, but really, again, following those same three simple steps, we're gonna go ahead and show you how you would do a panograph. So we're gonna pick our pattern, we place it, and then we quilt it. So I'm gonna come in here. Um, and then one thing that is nice again is we did, a reminder, we did set that safe area at the beginning. Um, so we don't need to reset it because we haven't shifted our fabric at all. So it is in that same position. But we're gonna come in here. We're gonna come and select a pattern. Now Melinda briefly talked about it at the beginning, but there are different patterns depending on what um, you're looking to do. So before we did a block pattern, so that's why we're in here. But now we're gonna do a continuous line because that is the panograph we're doing. And then just to kind of show you, there is the triangles um, and there is border sets. And again, this is a demo version, so it is kind of um, scaled Condensed back. And yes, mm -hmm. um, as far as what patterns we are showing here. Um, but this is really fun. Again, we're gonna do a continuous line. And again, even down here on the file types, you do have an ability to import any of these other file types with your own pattern. So again, really fun that even though you have a ton of patterns, you can bring in your own. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the duck because I think it's a cute little duck. <laughs> um, <laughs> he is cute. <laughs> and then we're gonna show you again how you can kind of make this pattern a bit more your own. So right now I have just the single one, but as I'm doing panograph, I want to be more of a continuous line. I'm actually gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a couple different ones and I'm gonna add a second row. Now, you know, we talked about, um, there are two different versions of this software. So right now we are showing you the beginnings and then later we will go into the pro. But right now with the beginnings, you are limited just on how many rows at a time you can add. So patterns, you know, you can add as many as you want in there. But again, the rows right now, you are limited to two. 
Um, but even that way, you can do, again, um, places a single pattern or do the entire quilt and it will help split it up in zones for you as well. Uh, but this is a really fun thing where we're going to come in here and I'm going to show you again where you can really make it your own. So a lot of different things here, um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to see, you'll see right now I have highlighted this first section, which means this is the section I'm telling the automation that I want to kind of manipulate or make my own. So this is where I can come in here and I'm going to actually flip it. You can flip it that way. If you want, you can rotate it that way. Again, you can even rotate or alternate the ducks. So this is where, again, you can really come in and even though you have that duck pattern, you can come in and kind of design it and really, again, make it your own there. So now typically um, what we could do is we could come in and you know change this bottom one, say I want it to look a little bit differently, um, reset that pattern. It really is up to you on what, again, you would like to do with it. Um, for right now, I'm gonna just kind of leave it this way. Uh, I do like the ducks facing that way, but what we're gonna do is, you'll see over here, is now that we've picked our pattern, um, we're gonna go ahead and place it. Now, there are two different ways you can place it. So place as a single pattern is going to help take you through the steps of what it was like to place a single block pattern, where you have those different sections you can put it within, or if you wanted to do entire quilt edge to edge, that would be the sew in zones. Now, kind of um, stepping back is one thing uh, we didn't quite talk about, but right now, this 21X Elite is on a continuum frame, or what we call a rolling rail frame. So with the automation, or as you get into different frames, I don't know if you know Melinda, but um, do you know kind of how it's able to split up the quilt, depending on the different frames you're on? Uh, so my best guess uh, with the automation, uh, with the rolling rail, uh, so we, Going back, we have the two styles of frames, uh, rolling rail and hoop size, or hoop frames. Yes. Uh, the hoop frames, again, we're quilting in zones. Yes. Uh, so we're shifting uh, and maneuvering our fabric across the frame, whereas the rolling rail, uh, the material, it's uh, installed uh, basically on the frame. Yes. Uh, it's rolling directly onto the frame. You don't have to shift or move the fabric. Yes, and that is exactly correct. Where uh, when you first get the software, you're able to put in what machine you have as well as what style of frame it is on. So this one is nice where it is a rolling rail frame. Um, so you are able to go in um, and again, really very easy. It'll help break it up. So really, once you quilt out one section, it'll actually tell you where to roll your fabric up to next to then quilt out that next zone. Whereas if you're on a hoop style, there is some shifting from side to side as well as down and up so that it does tell you, hey, you know, once you've done your first zone, it's time to shift it to the left or, you know, or to the right, depending on where you start with your quilting, and then it'll tell you to shift it up. So that is a really nice feature um, with that the is software. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> it <laughs> really takes the nice. guesswork out of everything for you. Yes, that is absolutely true. Um, but kind of because we have quite a bit with the automation, we're wanting to make sure we show you, we're not gonna have this actually quilted out, but again, it was a simple, you pick the pattern, we've, you know, you'd come in, you'd place your pattern, and then um, this is where, again, you could come in with those four points you'll see and actually place the pattern however I wanted it to, and then you would quilt it out. So again, three easy steps. You haven't written them down. You gotta write them down now. <laughs> <laughs> again, it was a simple, you pick your pattern, place the pattern, quilt it. And kind of, you know, before we kind of go into the pro version of our automation, is that really going back to automation, it is that easy. People always say that, they're like, oh, sure, you said it, you've done it a thousand times. <laughs> no, <laughs> we really haven't, you know, we aren't experienced quilters. So it is something that anybody, whether you're tech savvy or not, whether, you know, you have a phone, you don't have a phone, anything like that, you can come in um, and really feel comfortable doing it. And then kind of going back to that main home screen, it's really nice that even if you've never done it before, uh, we do have those user manuals that are available for you um, on there, again, in a PDF version. So if you want, you can print those out. So you can actually have those patterns out next to you as you're going through those steps. Or one thing that is nice as well is we actually allow you to download the software on three separate devices. Um, so if you want, you can have it on this main device you're using, and then if you'd like, you can have it on a separate device to, again, really use it for those user manuals if you would like. Perfect. And, and Laurel, I do want to take a step back and just talk about uh, the tablet. Yeah. So the, the tablet, again, it, it's uh, the additional piece uh, that, you would, that somebody would need to purchase on top of the automation. Uh, and uh, the tablet, uh, We've tested everything with the Windows-based tablets. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, unfortunately, if you have an iPad or an Android tablet, <laughs> the automation yes. just, it, 
it won't work with it. So you do need a Windows tablet. Um, and, and again, as Laurel mentioned, you can install the software on up to three different devices. So exactly. tablet, laptop, computer. Most people will choose uh, the tablet just because we have the, the tablet mount uh, and it puts the tablet right at, on the mm -hmm. machine at your fingertips. Um, so again, your laptop, your computer, mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to be uh, as easily portable uh, as your tablet would tablet. be. Right, and if it is something, you know, let's say you already have a computer or something or a laptop, it is nice um, or it is easier to use if you actually have a keyboard that can fold up back behind it because then you would, in a sense, really have it look a lot like what it does with a tablet. Um, but yes, you are right. Really, the tablet is nice. And then some people ask, oh, well, I already have a tablet that I use for other things. Is that okay? Yes, um, the software can um, and does run a little bit better if it is the only thing on there, just because there's you know there's nothing else and kind of getting in its way. But again, if you already have something that you like and are using that again is a Windows based, you can certainly use that with the automation again with no worries really. And then um, going back to it as well as far as the tablet specs go, um, you do need to make sure when it is a Windows that it is a seven, eight, ten or higher. Um, just because again, we found that that really is what helps the automation run with no interference or anything with it. Yes, yes, exactly. So um, yeah, really nice features there, but we're gonna go ahead um, and again, kind of go into the pro version. So, um, and then we'll kind of go back to the cost here at the end once we're done showing you a bit of a demo here, but the pro version is gonna look very, very similar to this beginning's version. So now again, this is that same screen. You'll notice you still have those user manuals, you still have your select and so, you have your paragraph, but there are a couple other additional features that showed up over here on the side. So we'll go ahead and get into those in just a moment, but I actually wanna go into our panograph because you will notice that this actually did change just a little bit. So this still looks the same, but actually in here is you have different modes that you can use now when doing a panograph. Um, so we'll kind of just click through and just kind of briefly show you what those different ones look like. So we do have our power panto. This one I would say is really, um, really pairs it back and brings it really, really down to the basics where you simply would come in here, select a pattern, again, making sure it is a continuous line. Um, but then again, really based off of that pattern and the safe area I gave it, it sized those ducts to fit that area I have. Now you can come in here um, and add, you know, different sizing to really, again, make it fit what you want. If you wanna bring more ducts on, size it down, bring it up again really to be whatever you want, but it is something that is going to pretty much do all the math and everything for you, right? <laughs> I've chosen a pattern and it's put it in there for me. And again, once I've done that, I could go in, I could do an entire quilt edged edge in the sewn zones, or I could place as a single pattern. Um, but what we're gonna go ahead and do again, kind of show you the different versions. So then we have our easy. Um, this one again, you'll see looks a little bit different. It is gonna be essentially really again, the same thing. Go ahead and select the duck. So this one, it does give me just a single pattern, but this is where you could come in here and put your total width and height of your quilt that you're working with. And then that's again, based off of those dimensions, it would then again, help size it for you. Um, and then even on that preview screen, you do again, have the ability to come in here, rotate the pattern, and again, really make it your own with that. But then kind of going through, we have our basic mode. Now this is what you'll remember, um, looks exactly actually like it does in the beginnings. The only thing different is that if I come in here and select a pattern, I now can come in and add however many rows I want. So previously on the beginnings, again, you could add however many patterns, but you were limited on how many rows versus here again in that pro version of the software. Um, not only do you have the ability to this basic mode and however many rows you want, but again, all those different modes as well um, in the placement. And then this advanced um, is a gold feature. So that is, um, something that is kind of a separate subscription based type thing that you can get um, that helps you with the placement of it and all that. But again, really, once you're in here, you've chosen your pattern, you'd come in here and place your pattern, whether it's a single design, or if you want to do your entire quilt edge to edge and you would quilt it out. That, it, I, it, it's mind blowing <laughs> what, I, I mean, the, the, the software, the, the automation, yeah. <laughs> it's not very big. It, mm -hmm, you know, it's mm -hmm. gonna come in a small package. Uh, the only thing visible that I see on the machine, uh, of course, are the tablet. Uh, on the frame, I can see the belts. On the carriage, I can see the belt. Uh, and I know there's a motor plate, uh, which mm -hmm. is the driving force uh, of the automation. So it, again, it's not like a big 
it, you know, piece of yes. equipment or anything, but it will do so much for so many quilters. Yes. Sm uh, you know, small, uh, precise, accurate, professional looking. I, I mean, what more could people want? <laughs> <laughs> now I think this is it. This is what you want right here. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, Melinda, you talked about um, one thing that is nice that sometimes when you look at other automations out there, sometimes there is usually like you have to put in a whole extra couple of feet or whatever because it needs a whole space on the side. Mm -hmm. This one is nice because there are some simple attachments that already go on the setup you have. Um, you know, Melinda pointed out really there's a couple cords that plug into the machine. And then the only thing you may see running back um, is this is actually the power cord for the tablet. That is something that we do recommend just seeing, you know, making sure if you can have it plugged in so you're not in the middle of a pattern and have your, you know, tablet or device die on you. Um, but even if that didn't happen, we do have ways where you can come in here and it's called repair the pattern. Um, so, you know, if you were to run out of bobbin um, or anything like that, and, um, you know, if we have time, we'll kind of show you how really easy that is to do. Um, but it is something that is available whether in you're in a simple select and sew or you're in pantograph mode. So that's a really nice feature with it. Awesome. Um, but kind of going back here, we're going to go back to our home screen. Um, I'm not going to save the design, but again, this is that pro version. So now you're going to, we're going to go into these a couple additional features we have here. So starting right at the top, we have what we call pattern CAD. Now, this is something that's really nice if you're looking to um, kind of, I would say, come in, manipulate or change a design or really um, create your own design. So let me show you just really quickly. Um, this one has a lot of different features with it and really is something that's really fun that if you um, are interested in kind of creating your own patterns is almost taking this off and just having that tablet while you're in front of a TV or something, you know, watching a show that you love because you can come in here and do a lot with it. But just to show you really quickly um, what you can do is this one is actually like a reflection. So what I'm gonna do is I want these flakes. I'm gonna go back to my drawing mode, but this is where I can come in. And again, you can see I've now just created my own design. Um, and so it's really fun feature. Again, really just letting you do what you want with the automation. So it is something that, again, people say, oh, well, I'm not really quilting. Yes, you are. <laughs> you're creating your own design. You're putting in all that work. You're just simply letting the machine stitch it out while you get to step back and have a beverage or something. <laughs> so that's really something that's nice. Um, so again, that was that pattern CAD feature. I'm not gonna save that design, but moving down, we're gonna go to what we call quilt CAD. Now quilt CAD is a lot like what you could think of in a pantograph, where you're able to lay an entire quilt out edge to edge. This one does it a bit differently, um, where you can actually, I would say, instead of doing an entire design the same throughout the quilt, you can alternate with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean here. So this one, you'll notice there's a couple different things around the corners here that would help select different sections here. So now if I was going to do an entire quilt, I could come in here and put the sizing that I want. Um, for now, I'm just gonna leave it how it is. But what I'm gonna do is if you go ahead and tap this one, you'll see that it highlighted every other one um, kind of in a bluish color. Now that is telling me that that is where I'm gonna pick the pattern for. So again, it is a simple pick the pattern. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And right now, I am gonna choose a block pattern because that's how I have it laid out. But you would select the pattern you want and you would place it. And then again, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna alternate choosing the other ones that I didn't select there earlier. And we'll choose just a pattern and I place the pattern. And again, this is where you could come in and if you didn't like the way that ended up looking once it was laid out, you could go back in, change the pattern. But now I've simply picked the pattern, I've kind of laid it out, so you would place the pattern. Again, whether you wanted to do it as a single pattern, so like if you wanted this whole thing to be in one block, you could do so very easily. Again, it would be simply selecting places as a single pattern, or if you had laid this out for your entire quilt, it would be sewing in zones. And again, just a reminder that sewing in zones is really nice, um, whether you're on a rolling rail frame or a hoop style frame, where it'll help lay it out for you um, to really be able to quilt it out um, perfectly throughout your entire quilt. But we're gonna go ahead and go back. I'm not gonna save my design. And then kind of the last feature that is an addition that you get with that pro is the record feature. Um, so this one is a really nice feature because sometimes if someone's looking at automation they've done from free motion or they're really good or they have like, you know, a single flower pattern or something that they're really good at. So this is nice where you can actually come in here and you can hit start recording and then you'll see as I move my machine, you'll see that those patterns actually start to, or that design that I've done starts to show up. 
And again, you could come in here, do whatever you want, but we're going to just hit stop. And so now in a sense, I actually have just created my own pattern. <laughs> um, <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> I know. Amazing. As you can see, I am not a professional. <laughs> Yeah, so it's something again, if you are really good, obviously I'm not as free at free motion, but if you are good at a pattern, you can come and do this and it will help pretty much in a sense go from like drawing your pattern out into um, sort of a version that allows the automation to quilt it out for me. And then there is an additional feature on here. So, you know, there I wasn't recording or actually stitching, but here we do have a sew record. So if you want to actually be stitching while it's recording, you can simply hit that feature and again, do exactly what I did. The machine dish will be stitching with me. So really nice feature. And again, you could come in here and save that pattern. But that really is again, that pro version. So I'm gonna go ahead back to that beginnings just so you can see. Again, this is the beginning, still coming with the user manual, still coming with that simple select and sew or that panograph. So again, going to that pro version, I just get some of those additional features. And then again, those additional features that show up in the panograph section itself. But really, it's really wonderful. The automation is really nice. Um, and I know we'll, it looks like we still have some time. So we'll go back into it and we'll show you a little bit of what it looks like to repair a pattern. Because I think that's one thing that I kind of- I did see uh, a couple of questions pop up. Like, yeah. how do you fix it? What happens if you run out of thread? Or, yes. <laughs> it, you know, anything can happen. Nothing should happen, but- Anything you never could know. happen. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, then that's one thing, you know, even if the automation is something you decide is for you, is start with something that is not your quilt top. So just have your backing. Um, have the same batting, I would say, that you typically do for a quilt so you could really see how it's going to look. And how it's going to feel. Exactly. But then just have a plain piece of fabric on the top or something so that you can let anything happen. You know, let it run out of thread. Let it, you know, repair that pattern. Let it see what happens. Place a single pattern. You know, do a whole pantograph section. You know, just so you can really get the fill of what it would look like um, and then really get a feel for how to repair a pattern. So uh, I think we do have some time. So I'm actually going to go in here and we'll show you kind of what that looks like um, because it is something that um, is just going to happen, right? Whether you run out of bobbin or you step away and you need to go back or something, you know, very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do the ball. And so this is again, that simple select and sew, whether it's in that, you could do it in the pro or the beginnings. So what I would need to do is I would need to come again, move my machine to where I want to place it as. Again, I'm going to tap that upper left. We're going to come do the bottom left on here. Again, using my needle as my reference point, as I place, come do the bottom right here. And we're going to go up again. Again, using my needle as our reference point. Um, so now that I've placed my pattern, again, I selected it, placed my pattern, I'm going to quilt it out. So now when I go to quilt it out, it's going to go ahead and connect. But this is where you'll actually be able to come in um, and repair your pattern. So again, this is the repair of the pattern. So let's say something happened, I'm halfway through and I run out of bobbin, right? Because that's something that um, is just going to happen. Happens. It's going to happen. But not with the 21X Elite because it has the exactly. bobbin estimator. Yeah, so that's a really nice feature. So you can change that bobbin before you go to design, um, especially if it is a bit more of a detailed design. It's nice to have a fresh bobbin in there because yes. you'll be able to know it's going gonna, it's gonna to cool throughout that entire thing for you. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would do is I simply come in here and I'm going to hit repair pattern. Now a couple different things show up here. So what I need to do is I need to actually tell my machine um, where it stopped stitching. So usually it hasn't stitched anything out, but typically you would be able to see where that thread ran out. So you would actually come and move your machine to um, really what we say is the closest stitch. Um, so right now, again, it wasn't there, but we're gonna pretend that the ball had come around and it's now right there. So again, usually it is something that is already partly quilted out for you but you would come in here and on your screen, you would hit closest stitch. Now the machine is gonna engage because it's going to try and take note of where that is at. So let me go ahead and you'll see that now in the darker section, it thinks it's stitched that out. So now typically um, it would be something that is stitched out. So I'd be like, oh yes, that looks correct. And then one thing that's really nice, especially again, if you're trying to go for that professional look, is there is what we call a nudge. And I, <laughs> I love these nudges because it does literally move the machine microscopic amount. You'll see just a little, you can pretty much almost just hear it, <laughs> but it's really nice because if I can nudge it up, down, and that's really will help me line it up to exactly where it was so that I can get it exactly where it ended so that no one will ever know except for me <laughs> that yeah. the bobbin ran out there. And and even though you know it, once Probably you, you find it, <laughs> quilt it out, you won't be able to find oh. it. You won't know 
You may have a general light area where to mm -hmm. look, but that's about it. You won't be able to find it. <laughs> exactly. And what's one thing that is nice is once you think that it is lined up where it is, um, we do have within the toolbox here, we call it a single stitch. And so that's really nice where you can actually see that needle drop down so that you again, you can make sure that it is exactly on where you want it. So right now you could do a single stitch. You could be like, oh, look, that looks perfect. You know, where I ended there. And if not, again, that's where you can come back. You can nudge it either to the left, to the right, up or down again, really wherever you want. But then that, then once you did that, you would go back into sew and it would start stitching out again from where it believes you ended. And so now it's gonna go ahead. And there you go. That just, it, it's amazing. Uh, the, the software is literally smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Yes, I know. And I love all the comments. Um, you know, it is super user friendly. And then again, it is something that's really nice that you can come back to, again, exactly where it may have ran out of bobbin or something because it's just going to get exactly on for you. So that's a really nice feature, again, to have with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then again, it's just amazing. Like, all, like, look at it. Like, I quilted it out, right? All I had to do was hit a few buttons tell it where I wanted it to stitch, and now it's doing it for me. That is, it, it's too cool. <laughs> too cool. Uh, and now, so we, we briefly talked about uh, the library uh, of 200 patterns. Uh, at least, uh, do we have the ability, can we add more patterns? Like, aside from uh, the updates that come out periodically, oh, yeah. so we can up or add? Yeah, certainly. So yeah, I'll show you. Um, so now we'll finish the pattern. So again, this is back to where you were to come and select a pattern. Um, again, any of these file types down here are different pattern types that you can import. And again, that's quite a few different ones right there, right? So it's not like just four or five. You've got a whole good list that you can use to, again, import your own designs with it. Um, or, you know, um, for those that are really getting into automation, again, we do have that pro version that allows you um, with that pattern CAD, create your own patterns with it as right. well. I know when I talk about the differences uh, between beginnings and pro, uh, I always kind of lead off, uh, pro has everything's, or everything beginnings <laughs> has. <laughs> yes. Um, but the pro app has, you know, those additional features that mm -hmm. you went over and, and really they're just enhancing they what are. beginnings already has. Uh, so we, we have the option. You can always start with beginnings. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, jump feet first uh, and start <laughs> with pro, uh, but we also have an upgrade. So if you did start yes. with beginnings, you can get the upgrade, which will get you to pro. Uh, yes. So that's always available anytime. Uh, but I'm the type of person, it's like, I'm going to go big or, <laughs> you know, or, or go home. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would say the majority of people that I talk to, I would say at least 80% will start with pro. Mm -hmm. The 20% that start with beginnings, I would say with it, within six months, they're calling back because they want the upgrade. Yes. They want more. Uh, they, they want yes. what the pro will give them. Yes, that is very true. And I think that's where, again, we do have those different versions, whether it's partly because budget at the beginning is just going to fit you better. Um, that's why, again, later we do have that upgrade that um, does help get you to those pro features. But yes, I would say on average, people tend to be like, oh, beginnings is what I want. You know, I'm starting out. I don't know what I really want to do with the automation, um, which is great. I don't know if I'll like it. It's right, like, But what's right. not to like? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so that's where, again, it is really nice where you can always upgrade to that pro version. Um, and then really, again, you know, people's like, oh, I just want to do a simple, you know, pattern or whatever, a simple block pattern. That's all I'm looking to do then great, you know, but even then it's something that you're just probably going to be using quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where, again, people have found pretty easily that they like to go to that pro version. And then one thing that is really nice as well, um, that is available, I would say on top of just that pro version, but it's what we call the gold card. Yes. And, and people love uh, their gold card. Uh, it's a, an annual subscription. Uh, but it, again, just like we talked about pro enhances what beginnings has the gold card enhances yes. what the pro version is giving you. 
Yeah, and it's really fun. Um, I'll just kind of show you guys. We won't really go into them, but they are really fun things to see. Um, so this is that gold card. So you'll see, again, you still have the same user manuals, select and sew, pangraphs, as well as those that come with the Pro. We just now have this gold features button. So again, this isn't something that you need, but um, are really some helpful tools um, in quilting. So one of them is, again, um, an advanced panel. So just really gives you a different way to lay out those. And the one thing that I would say is particularly Really nice with this gold feature is what we call borders and corners so with borders and corners um, you are able to do that um, I would say really the easiest way to do that would be with the pro version of the software um, you could do it with the beginnings it would just be a bit trickier you would have to lay out a lot more individual patterns but with the pro feature and the borders and corners it um, I'll actually just click on it so you can just kind of see but you'll see is it already gives me the layout literally of the border section that I'm looking to do. Um, and so that's where it's just, again, super nice where I, you know, you place the top or you could select this and place the bottom. But again, it is just gonna help you really perfectly lay out those borders and corner sections. So that's a really fun feature there. And then again, just kind of going through to show you, um, it does help you again lay out those corners a bit better. Um, the font stitcher is a really fun thing where it helps you stitch out names. Um, and it has a ton of different fonts just a ton so this is where you can come through and again see those different fonts here oh, i'll go this way again just seeing those different fonts in Arial, Arial black you know so just a ton of different features here um, that are really fun uh, that allow you just to have maybe your own name uh the name of the loved one you're giving it to or anything like that that's pretty cool that it is to be able to personalize a baby quilt you, yeah. you know, for, from Nana or, or <laughs> you know, anything like that. Uh, just adding that personalized touch if you, I don't know, maybe you sell quilts on Etsy or yeah. something, you know, just to, to put your name on it, uh, anything like that. So, yeah, so something again, yeah, lovely feature to be able to have. And again, um, a lot of different fonts you have to choose from there. Um, and then there are gold patterns. So, you know, uh, Melinda had mentioned there is over 200 different patterns you get with the software. Um, when you get the gold patterns, there are some additional features that you're just gonna get um, with it on top of that. And then this is a really fun feature. This is the multi-pattern placement. So we talked about um, at the very beginning that you can do a simple block pattern. The multi-placement pattern is really nice where it allows you to lay out multiple blocks at once meaning I can go and actually place out my first block, um, save that pattern, move on to the next, and to the next, and the next, next. You know, and have really pretty much however many patterns I want. And then um, by hitting quilt, it'll actually quilt out all of those at the on same one time. Quilt. Yes, wow. on one quilt at the same time. <laughs> so instead of having to simply place a single pattern, wait for it to stitch, and then do the next, I can place five different patterns, and then it'll stitch it all out at once for me. That's awesome. So, yeah. That, it's such a time saver. Uh, it's you're going to have your professional uh, feel uh, of your quilt once it's done. Uh, you can personalize it uh, exactly. in any way whatsoever. Um, it, it, it's amazing. I, I'm like <laughs> complete, like I'm mind, my mind is blown. You've made it look so easy today <laughs> for us, Laurel. I, and again, I've been here for a year and a half and, and I've dabbled uh, with the automation, uh, but I, I've, learned just as much uh, as our audience has today about the automation uh, and uh, it's amazing. Uh, I want to take the automation home with me. <laughs> oh yeah, well then it's something you know that's really nice is right now we are actually on that 21X Elite, um, but it can fit any of our machines that we have, right? So again, it really goes back to fitting where you're at, whether it's um, a 15 Pro on a hoop style frame or a 15 Pro on a continuum frame, you know, anything Even like that. Cutie. Oh yes, even, even the, cutie, the cutie, even the cutie. <laughs> yes, that sometimes shocks people because you're like, oh, it's so small. But again, it's nice where um, you can again say what style of frame, so it knows that you have you know a much smaller area to quilt at one time, so it'll help then break out your entire quilt into sections for you. Yeah, so that's awesome. That is awesome. Now I I know we've had uh, quite a few questions uh, that have come through uh, the chat. I'm hoping we were able. Uh, at some point to be able to touch on those questions uh, and get those answered. Uh, but again, if you had a question that we weren't able to answer, go ahead and, and put that in the chat. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look. I know we went over a ton of information <laughs> today. Uh, it was a lot of show, uh, a lot of tell, uh, and you know, just trying to wrap our minds around all of it. Uh, you know, it's 
go ahead and put those questions through. That's great, yeah. And then, um, you know, kind of going on that while we wait for some of those questions to come in, and maybe hopefully there are no questions because we just, you know, <laughs> we, did it so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one thing, um, you know, we kind of briefly talked on, but is as there is the user manuals on here, is there are quite a few different um, videos out there on the automation as well. Where again, kind of like you just saw here, us walk us, you know, walk you through it, is you can see those. Um, and then, of course, we always are here to support. And then we are here um, supporting our dealer, you know, really sewing parts online. So if you ever have any questions on anything, please reach out to them because um, they're going to be a great resource for you, um, really to help you feel comfortable with being able to get started on the automation. Yes, yes. All right. So I, I see a question about training tutorials. Uh, so we have some built-in features uh, directly in the automation. Uh, we also have some online resources uh, as well. Uh, so it, again, they're anywhere, whether uh, again our website or uh, they, you know other ambassadors, uh, sewing parts online. Uh, there's tons of information, help tutorials. Uh, if you can't find it, you know out there. Uh, give Sewing Parts Online a call, give us a call. We're here to help no matter what. Exactly. All right. I don't want to interrupt you, but I just wanted to <laughs> follow up on a couple of questions that we did have. So okay. about the cutie frame, I just want to clarify. So in, I had assumed that this was only compatible with the Continuum 2 frame. So that's not the case? No, it, it absolutely <laughs> not. So uh, our automation, it's compatible with all of our machines and all of our frames. So from the continuum all the way down to the cutie. Yes. Okay, so the, the automation, correct. Now, what about the 21X Elite? So the 21X Elite, uh, it's really designed for the continuum frame. Uh, okay. So it, it, yep, so that that's, all of our machines will fit all of our frames. The 21X Elite only fits the continuum frame. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I just wanted to clarify where with the yep. automation, it works with everything. Okay, yes. thank you very much for clarifying that. Another question that we did have, I believe you had touched on it yesterday, um, but how many stitches per minute does the 21X Elite do? Uh, the 21X Elite uh, is 2,600 stitches per minute. So mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of stitches. Uh, it'll go <laughs> very, 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 very fast. Um, but it, you know, some people, they're, they're the true pros out there that, it, you know, can really uh, adjust uh, and work with that machine speed. One day I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are doing wonderful. I know I learned a lot and from the comments, it looks like everybody is learning a lot today. So. Oh, good. Good, good. Uh, were there any other last minute questions uh, that, that maybe we missed or somebody just might have? And, you know, if, you, if there's any of those questions, go ahead and put those in the comments and we'd love to get that answered for you. Yeah, and then kind of, you know, as maybe some of those questions come in, um, again, just kind of going back to what we had mentioned at the beginning, um, that the software is something, again, it is as simple as those three steps, pick a pattern, place it, quilt it. Um, so just, you know, feel comfortable if you're interested in it with just get it, dive in, try it on, not a quilt top you have, but just so you can really get a feel for it. Then All the right, question. so uh, there's a question, uh, Pam Taylor Harris. Do you suggest being plugged into battery backup or a surge protector? Uh, and I'll tell you, here uh, at the Grace Company, uh, in our classroom, uh, in our kind of, uh, you know, our studio area, we plug everything into uh, extension cords and surge protectors. <laughs> we do. Uh, we do that at shows. Uh, and a lot of it is, you know, just we don't have enough space uh, really to get to the plug uh, that would be mm -hmm. the most beneficial, uh, you know, in, in plugging right. the machine in at a certain location. So it, again, whether you're plugged directly into the wall or a surge protector, either is perfectly fine. Uh, with any of our machines and the automation, uh, the automation comes with a surge protector that actually mm -hmm. installs uh, right on the back of the carriage. So you can plug everything in, uh, the automation, the machine into there, and then of course plugging 
uh, that power strip into the wall, then you only have one switch to turn off or on, uh, and that does everything. Right. Uh, the machine, the automation, everything all in one swoop for you. Yes, wonderful question. Yes. And then it looks like Tanya Bunch said, can this handle a king size quilt? That's a fantastic question. Uh, it can, so really, again, it is just based off of the frame that you're doing. Um, but yes, it can do any size quilt, it can do anywhere from a little baby size, twin, full, queen, you know, king, any size quilt. All right, and I'll go I ahead. I have one more question here. We had some comments regarding the gold subscription. Can you clarify that just a little bit more? They were thinking that you have to have a subscri subscription for the beginning, the beginners, the pro, <laughs> and the gold. <laughs> if I could get it okay. out. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a mouthful. Right? <laughs> so again, the automation it comes in two versions: uh, beginnings and pro. Uh, the gold card access, that's an addition. Uh, it is only compatible with the pro version. Uh, it is an annual subscription, uh, so it, it doesn't have to be purchased at the time of purchase of the automation. That can be purchased at any time. Uh, so it, again, just that gold card, it's uh, again enhancing what the pro version already gives you. Yes. All right, well, Good. thank you very much for clarifying. All right, well, I think, do you have anything else, ladies, or are we good to move forward? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're good, because I know there's a couple questions just on what the pricing is, because I know you guys do have some speci uh, specific special pricing, and then you also talked about you do have financing available as well. Yes, we sure do, and I will be happy to go over that in just a moment. So. <laughs> All right, well, thank All right. you so much, ladies. We really appreciate you coming on and giving that wonderful demonstration. And we have another segment with Grace, I believe, on day four, going over the yes, True Cut so. products. So we're looking forward to that as well. Yes, so that will be with uh, Jana and Jarek, uh, the JJ team. Yes. Uh, they're super <laughs> excited. <laughs> super excited to talk about True Cut. Uh, and, and if you know anything uh, about true cut or nothing at all tune in uh, lots of good information lots of tools everything's designed uh, it, you know for the end user to make things easier accurate and safer so tune in uh, to that segment for more information awesome well thank you both for joining us and hopefully we'll see you next time all right thanks mm -hmm. trisha have Take a great care. day you too bye-bye mm, all right, well, they made that look easy, didn't they? <laughs> okay, so well, let's go over that special pricing. It is going to be here. Let's do this one for the 21X Elite with the Continuum Frame. I'll touch on that, and then we'll talk about the automation. So we had mentioned the 21X Elite. Uh, that one is on sale for $13,101, and it is on or excuse me, that's the MSRP, and then it's on sale for $11,198. Uh, but that is not the special event pricing. Again, give our customer service a call and they can go over the fabulous pricing that is in place for that right now. Uh, when it comes to the automation, that is what they were discussing today. They've got the Quilters Creative Touch 5 Beginnings. That's on sale for $4,499. The Quilters Creative Touch 5 Pro, that is on sale for $6,499. That's just our fabulous sale price right now, but that is not the creative, um, the So Creative Live special event pricing. Right now, there is a significant discount. I cannot say what it is um, over you know, camera here, but you can give us a call and they can go over that fabulous special event pricing. You really don't want to miss out on it. Uh, this is only going to be for this event. So just a reminder, we do have financing available. If that is something that you're interested in, just give our customer service a call. They will discuss that with you. But pricing like this is not going to be around. So it's going to just be for the event. And then it won't be until the next event that we have. And we're not sure as to how long it's going to take us to put on another event like this. So take advantage of this special pricing and... Um, get everything for Christmas. I keep saying that. It's right around the corner. <laughs> we can get some awesome, awesome presents for Christmas. But 
I think that about covers it right now. We were uh, we went a little bit long on the arrow segment, so we are going to do a couple of more giveaways. So if you don't mind giving me just a couple of minutes, we're going to grab a few things and then we will be right back to do some giveaways. So just comment away. That way you'll get in on the giveaway. All right, we are going to do some giveaways. Uh, the first one that we are going to do is some of the Christie's quilt blocks. We tried to set it up here so you could see it. Uh, these are the wonderful quilt blocks that uh, Harley had shown just moments ago um, with Arrow. So these will go on your table and will prevent your quilt from falling off the edge. So this is super handy, especially when you're working with a really large quilt. There's nothing worse than having it fall over the side of your table and having it just pull away from you and then you get pulled stitches. It just ends up causing a mess. So puts a little block on the side of your furniture and prevents all that headache. <laughs> so we're gonna do a few here. We're gonna do three. Uh, we're gonna do number 28, 29, and 30 with just the quilt block set. And then we are also going to do two giveaways that have the quilt block set, but you get a pockets as well. So you get to take home a little pockets and he's so cute. But just remember, like Harley had said, if you buy some arrow furniture, you get a pocket. He's hiding in the box. <laughs> so there's another way to get one. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and do number 28. We're going to do a set of the quilt blocks. Here we go. All right, let's do number 28. Erin Northcutt, you won a set of Christy, Krista's quilt blocks. Congratulations. Okay, number 29, we're doing another set of the quilt blocks. Ooh, 
who's it gonna be? We have Koki Beck watching on YouTube. Congratulations, you are the winner of another set of the Christus Quilt Blocks. That was number 29. You'll need that when you enter your form and I'll tell everybody how they can claim their prize in just a moment. Number 30 is another set of the blocks. Let's see who the winner is. Who's it gonna be? Megan Thompson Brown, congratulations. She is also watching on YouTube. Thank you so much for commenting. You get a set of those blocks as well. We're going to do two more. This time, they come with the pockets. And as, I'm not sure if I had mentioned it before, they are as a set, so you will get two of them. So you can do it right on the corner, make it nice. We've got six PSG, congratulations. And that's going to be number 31. And last but not least, we're gonna do a number 32, and that is gonna be another set of the quilt blocks with the buckets. Cheryl Wright, congratulations, Cheryl. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much, Arrow, for donating those fabulous prizes. Earlier, we were able to give away that hydraulic chair. That is an awesome, awesome chair. And if you didn't see that before, let me actually pull up an overlay because they are so, so cute. It is such a nice chair. It is um, MSRP of $449, and they're on sale right now for uh, $220. Or excuse me, I cannot see today. I'm so sorry. $299. So awesome, awesome sale on those chairs. They are very, very comfortable. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody joining this morning. We had a couple little bumps in there, but hopefully <laughs> everybody's enjoyed it so far. This afternoon, we have some awesome guests. Once again, we have Tim Bond with Juki. He's going to be showing us the ideal sewing room with Juki. That's going to be fabulous. Also, just a reminder, we're giving away machines this afternoon. So we're going to be doing another one of the HCL uh, 355Z machines. And we are also going to be giving away the HCL G220. This is an awesome machine. You know how I know that? Brian, how do I know that? <laughs> Uh, because it's my machine. Well, <laughs> I have the HCLG 120, which is a step down, um, but the it's essentially the same machine missing a few functions. And the reason I have that machine is because a week before I started working at Sewing Parts Online, <laughs> I called customer service because I wanted to start sewing. We were in the middle of a pandemic, and I, I figured I'd pick up sewing as a hobby while I waited it out in my house. And I called customer service and Trisha answered <laughs> and sold me a sewing machine. And a month later, I applied for a job at Sewing Parts Online. And now here we are working together. Oh, I love it. That's such a fun story. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. We love Brian. <laughs> so he has the G120 and somebody's going to get the G220. So it has even more features than the machine that he absolutely loves. So make sure that you keep on commenting, everybody. We've got some fantastic prizes. We also are going to be with Sam Fung with Janome, and we're going to be giving away a, a 1522PG machine. Awesome mechanical machine, perfect for Christmas. It's cute. It's pink. It's adorable. So again, keep saying it. We're excited. I also wanted to show you um, some of our fabric, um, the fabric giveaways at are on day four for the final giveaway. They are fabulous. So I keep saying the baby lock triumph because I'm very, very excited to give that away. That value is at $7,500. So pumped. I want that machine myself. So I'm just like, who's going to win? Who's going to win? But I want to show you these bundles of fabric. They are so gorgeous and they have a, uh, it says small, but it's not small. Believe me, when you see this in person, the small bundle is an $800 value. It is full of fabric, comes with a $50 gift card as well. This is to ineedfabric.com. They are one of our fabulous sponsors. So 
That along with um, the second one is considered the medium basket. That comes with a $50 gift card as well. And then $1,100 value of beautiful fabric. And then the last one has a $100 gift card included to ineedfabric.com and has $1,600 worth of prizes. So I just wanted to throw that up there and show you how gorgeous those are. And I'm a basket person. So in addition to getting fabulous fabric and gift cards, you get a really pretty basket. So <laughs> I hope that you all enjoy that too. And I hope you're looking forward to the, the grand finale on day four, but we've got a lot to cover before that time. We have a lot more giveaways and I hope that you guys are ready for this afternoon because it is going to be a great time. But we'll be back in just a moment. We're going to have some pre-recorded videos for lunch. And then we're going to get right to it after lunch with Juki, with Tim Bond. For the perfect tool to give you accurate seam allowances. Are you looking for the perfect tool to give you accurate seam allowances every time? Well, check this out. The Ideal Seam Gauge and the Ideal Seam Guide work together to give you a beautiful seam allowance. Let me show you how it works. Here I have my ideal seam gauge. Notice all of these small holes. This gives you the option to get 10. Yes, 10. Perfect seam allowances, ranging from 1 8 of an inch to 1 and a half inches. Think of the possibilities. It's perfect for top stitching, achieving that nice 1 8 of an inch. Don't even get me started on the scant quarter inch. How many times do you hear, what is a scant quarter inch? This tool will figure it all out for you. You can do a 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is perfect for garment sewing. You get my point. There's a lot of options. 10. For my demonstration today, I selected the infamous scant quarter inch. Slide it under, line it up as best you can. Using your hand wheel, rotate it towards you, lowering that needle into the hole, just like that. As you can see with the presser foot up and the gauge in there, you can still move it around. Once you have your needle dropped in, line it up straight and then lower your presser foot. Now comes the fun part. Pick your ideal seam guide that you'll be using. At the end of this video, I'll go over several different options that you can choose from. Because I'm using a machine with a smaller throat area, I decided to use the four inch ideal seam guide that comes in the student edition. It not only comes with the gauge, but it comes with the straight four inch, and then you've got the the four inch curved option. I'm going to go with the ideal seam guide four inch curved option so I can use that little cutout. On the back, there's a piece of acetate plastic. Go ahead and remove that and expose the sticky back. Make sure to hold on to that because you're going to want to replace it when you're done. This is called the Sew Tacky Technology. It has enough sticking power to keep that guide in place. However, it's not too sticky that you can't get it off when needed. Once you have the spot you want, then you can just lightly press it down to secure. Now that I've placed my guide, I can lift up my presser foot and get that needle out of there and remove the gauge. Now all you need to do is sew your beautiful seam allowance. Let's circle back to the Sew Tacky technology. This stuff is amazing. What happens if it gets linty or dirty? Don't worry, you can clean it. To clean it, simply soak it in warm water, put one drop of detergent on the sticky back and kind of rub it in. Make sure that you have the, the balls of your fingers and make sure that your nail doesn't get in there and gouge it. Once it's cleaned, you can rinse it off and then you let it air dry and it's good to go. Another question that I'm sure I'll get because I asked it too, how long does it last? According to the manufacturer's website, they've been tested to withstand hundreds or even thousands of placements. Let's talk about what sizes you can get. This one is fantastic because it comes as a set. You not only get the gauge, but you get two guides, the four inch ideal seam guide and the four inch curved ideal seam guide. 
The curved option is perfect to help you easily maintain your seam allowance around curves. Neat, huh? Next, there's a five inch featherweight limited edition. Don't worry, it's not just for the featherweight. The sticker on it has decals similar to the featherweight. It's just cute. This one is very similar to the first one that I showed you. However, it is one inch longer, but notice that there's also a cutout. This is on several of the options. The cutout allows the ideal seam guide to be used with select walking feet or large presser feet. It also allows the ideal seam guide to be used even if your sewing machine has wide feed dogs. Next, I have the 10 inch. This has the curve on one end and the cutout. And then lastly, you've got your 15 inch. This one has the cutout, but not the curved option. Regardless of the one that you choose, there is a handy beveled edge that makes it really easy for you to get your finger underneath and pop it off when needed. When you take it off, don't forget to replace the acetate. If you have any questions, shoot me a comment. My name is Trisha. I'd be more than happy to help you. Until next time, happy sewing, everybody. We all want a beautiful, organized sewing space, right? But let's be real, how often does our fabric turn out looking like this? Unless we take time to organize it, it's always going to be a wrinkly mess when we go to use it. Stick with me and I'll show you how to fix this. Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So today I'm going to talk about these fabric organizers. They are going to solve all your fabric organizing problems. I might get a little overzealous, but seriously, they're fantastic. These mini bolts help turn your sewing space into your own little showroom. They're also incredibly functional, storing your fabric in such a way that you can easily see what you have, saving you time. No more digging through this fabric bin. So how do they work? You simply lift the tabs, secure your fabric, and start flipping. So let's take a look at these boards. We've got the shorty. It measures seven by 10 and a half inches. Next is the small. It measures five inches by 14 inches. Lastly is the large, measuring 10 by 14. I especially love the large option to store multiple yards of fabric. It can hold up to 10 yards. Plus, we're already used to it coming at 22 inches, so it's convenient if we just fold it in half, making it 11, which coincidentally fits perfectly between these tabs. Also, there is a link in the video description if you want to check that out. When you get to the end, pin it in place. In addition to being fantastic for storing yardage, these are also great for fat quarters, scraps, loose elastic, binding, ribbon or rickrack. I think you get my point. I've heard people say that it's just fancy cardboard, so let's touch on that. They're corrugated plastic, not cardboard. They have a nice structure to them. They don't squish like cardboard would. They work, and they work great. To date, I've not done a video on organizing, so if you're enjoying this or you would like to see more of it, please let me know down in the comments. That way, I know what direction to go. I really love your feedback, and I greatly appreciate it. The only thing that I found that I would change is the sticker placement. You can see that this one was covered just a bit. It's an easy fix. I just took a little knife and went around it, but Ideally, that would be in a different spot. Other than that, I'd say they're a pretty awesome product. If you've found that you've gained anything from this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, while you're at it, you can go ahead and hit that little bell. I wouldn't be mad. If you wanna share with your friends, it would be greatly appreciated. That way we can continue to grow our sewing community. I hope that this inspires you to go organize your fabric and you enjoy your sewing space. Until next time, happy sewing everybody. We're gonna be going over this crazy little foot. It's called the automatic buttonhole foot. It can also be known as the one-step buttonhole foot. So what does it do? Well, the name kind of gives it away, right? It does buttonholes. But how does it work? And what happens when your stitches don't turn out right? I'll cover all that and more. Let's get started. Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So the automatic buttonhole foot. When you first peek at it, it does look a little confusing, but rest assured, it's pretty straightforward. So let's take a closer look at the anatomy of it. This is the buttonhole for the baby lock verve. This style is very common. Although I'm showing you the one on the verve, the process is going to be similar on other machines that have a one-step buttonhole option. Here we have the button guide plate. Grab a button, and you just place it in there and push it closed. Notice the space depending on the button size that you put in there. That will come into play when we get to the machine. This little bar is where your shank or presser foot holder attaches to the foot. 
and then the little hole is where the needle goes down into the machine. Because the upper thread needs to be under the presser foot when you begin sewing, I find it easiest to place the thread through before attaching the foot. Now lift up your presser foot, slide that in there. Not everybody knows this, but if you lift your presser foot lifter just a little bit higher, it gives you a smidge more height. Then lower the shank onto the bar and it'll click right in. Now you'll want to select your stitch. Oftentimes you'll see several different buttonhole options. You may have a few or you may have a bunch. In your manual, there will be a section that lists all the different stitches. It will tell you the names of the different buttonhole options and when to use them. Today I'm using a medium weight fabric and I prefer the rectangle look, so I'm going to go with 4-04. As you can see, the stitch width and the stitch length automatically change to what is a good starting point, but you can change that if you'd like. Depending on your machine, you may also have a display on the side, giving you a little preview of what it looks like. Say you have your buttonhole marked on your garment, it's going to work from the front to the back. What I like to do is put my fabric underneath the foot. Before lowering your presser foot, rotate the hand wheel towards you, dropping the needle right on that spot. Then lower my presser foot. Next we have to remember to pull down the lever, making sure that it's behind the bracket, and we're good to go. If your buttonhole doesn't look like this and your machine doesn't have this lever, make sure that you stick around and I'll show you a couple of other styles in just a bit. Now we can make our buttonhole. Because we are working with a one-step buttonhole foot, the whole process will happen as soon as we step on our foot control or press our start-stop button. The buttonhole starts at the front and then it stitches one side, comes back and bar tacks the front, then it stitches the other side, and lastly, it bar tacks at the end. The machine will automatically secure everything when it's done. To better understand the movements of a buttonhole foot, I always suggest testing on scraps like this before moving on to your project. And we can lift it up. Ta-da! A buttonhole is made up of bar tacks and satin stitches. So to explain, a bar tack is a series of stitches that are really close together that are positioned in places on a garment that undergo stress. So your buttonhole, or you'll often see them next to a pocket. And then your satin stitch, well, those are just simply zigzag stitches really close together. To open your buttonhole, first place a pin at the end. This is just going to keep you from cutting through the buttonhole. Using your seam ripper, carefully open it up. Sometimes you may find that your stitches look sloppy or they're maybe too far apart. Let's go over that. Use interfacing. You may hear that you don't have to, but if you want to achieve beautiful buttonholes, I would just suggest trying to make it a habit. Let's think about it for a second. You'll be buttoning and unbuttoning your garment many times over. The interfacing will help the fabric maintain its shape and integrity. If you are having a lot of problems, you can also use a stabilizer. I don't often use a stabilizer, but a tear away is my preference when I do. Keep in mind the interfacing will stay with the project forever and ever, whereas the stabilizer is removed. It's essentially providing a stable base for better stitches. After the buttonhole is complete, you simply tear away the stabilizer. Let's say you were using the holes as a design element and you were weaving ribbon or fabric through and you wouldn't be buttoning and unbuttoning. In that case, you could argue that you won't have to use interfacing, but it definitely doesn't hurt anything. Always do a trial buttonhole before moving on to your project. As I mentioned before, it helps you to understand the movement of your buttonhole foot, but it also helps you to work out any kinks. Double check your stitch width and your stitch length. If you are looking at your buttonhole and you see that there's too much space between the stitches, lower your stitch length. That's going to bring your stitches closer together. If there's not enough space, increase your stitch length. As an example, when I choose 4-04 for the rectangle buttonhole, my machine automatically sets it to a 0.4 stitch length, but personally, I like a denser buttonhole, so I drop it down to a 0.2. You can also play around with the width, adjusting it to be more narrow or to be wider. So your buttonhole doesn't look like mine. That's okay. Just know there's lots of different kinds. Some common ones are the sensor buttonhole foot. This literally has a little cord that comes out of the side of the foot. It's plugged into the side of your machine. 
where you would normally pull that little bar down so your machine can determine how large the buttonhole would be, the sensor does all of that. You'll generally find this on a higher end machine. Next, we've got the sliding four-step buttonhole foot. This buttonhole foot looks a little like the one we're using, however, it's more simplified. Instead of pressing your foot control or the start-stop button and the whole thing being done in one fell swoop, this four-step buttonhole foot, you're in control of each step. To better understand how this option works, check out episode 13 of our beginner's guide to sewing. Zippers, buttons, and everything in between. Since we cover everything in between, <laughs> to skip right to the section of the video with the four-step buttonhole, go to timestamp 1338. I'll also include a link for that video at the end of this video. This one's a little bit harder to see since it's clear, but this is a snap-on buttonhole foot that was intended for some older singers. I've not personally used it, but looking at the manual, it's indicating that it too is a four-step buttonhole foot. What I always recommend is just double-checking your manual and it'll walk you through the process. If you're unsure what type of buttonhole foot your machine has, shoot me a comment. Let me know your make and model and I'll see what I can find out for you. Also, when shopping for a machine, be sure to let the customer service representative know what type of buttonhole foot you're interested in. That will help them direct you appropriately. But honestly, I would recommend going just a little bit more so you can get this feature. It really is convenient and I find it much easier than the four-step buttonhole. Here's that video with the information on the four-step buttonhole, and you can also check out this other video on the automatic buttonhole foot. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy sewing day. should have to throw away the sewing machine that their grandma taught them how to sew on. Those memories are priceless. Our family-owned business started in 1997 and has since grown to amass one of the largest inventories for sewing machine parts. Say goodbye to the big box sewing stores where you wander the aisles with unanswered questions. Our customer support is an extension of your sewing room ready to help you with all of your sewing needs. Our consistently released tutorials help you master your craft. We're always sourcing new products that will help you sew straighter, more accurately, and with greater confidence. Whether you quilt, embroider, or sew your own clothing, we're here to empower your sewing journey. Struggling with skip stitches or your thread breaking? Well, today I've got a treat for you. I'm going to go bug our technician, Dennis. He's going to walk through it with us, show us what to look for and how to fix it. Let's head down there. Hello, my name is Dennis. Hope this video is helpful to you. Let's get started. Today, what we're going to talk about is thread breakage, skip stitches, and some of the possible causes for those. The first thing we want to do is pull off this bad spool of thread. And I know people want to save money, but a good quality thread means everything. Make sure that on all of your thread guides, anywhere that the thread comes in contact with, that it's very smooth. And especially when you get down to your, your thread guides, but before you go into the needle, because you have a lot of tension right in here on this uh, thread guide, then make sure that there is no rough places in there at all, because you don't want any hanging. If you hang, it will cause thread breakage, skip stitches and even needle breakage. These needles can get rough places on the uh, tip of the needle, it's called a burr, and that will hang your thread and cause skip stitches and thread breakage. Go ahead and take that needle out and put a new needle in. And also, the removing of your foot, to always check and make sure that there's no rough places inside this foot because the thread comes in contact with this foot in all directions. You want to make sure that that is very smooth and clean from any burrs at all. The next thing that we go to is your needle plate. Usually everybody carries a nickel in their pocket. It's a good tool to remove your needle plate screws. And to remove these, we'll do this. And uh, check for some rough places in the, uh, the needle hole. If you've got a needle plate that looks like this, you've got a real good looking needle plate. And I'll just show you an, an example of uh, some burrs in this plate. If that thread comes in contact with these rough places, it will break. To get this burr out, I use an abrasive tape. We sell those here. But what you can do is put this plate in a vise to hold it secure, and then you can put your abrasive tape, this is a coarse tape, and you can take it and pull it back and forth to remove those rough places. It doesn't take long to smooth this tape out. 
And so you can use that smooth tape that you wore off the abrasive from and use that to polish this on the inside. Use caution not to take too much out of this needle plate hole. Next, you want to check your bobbin. Sometimes from the manufacturer, they get a rough place in the mold from each side, from here to over here. Just go ahead, instead of sanding them off, just go ahead and get you a new bobbin. And that's the uh, best way to do that. Next, after the bobbin, we'll check the uh, bobbin case. You want to just take your finger and run across the edges around and just check for any rough places at all. If your bobbin case has a rough place on the edge, sometimes you can feel a rough place here. What I usually do, if it's just a, a scratch, I'll take my fine sandpaper, just a little bit of pressure, and sand it until I get it smooth out. You don't want to take a, any shape off of this bobbin case at all. But if you have needle marks that's going all the way through the bobbin case, throw the bobbin case away and get a new bobbin case. Whenever you install your bobbin case, be sure that this part here is against your bobbin case stopper. If it's not against that stop, it'll be positioned in a place that it's not supposed to be, and then your needle will come down and go through the bobbin case. Whenever it does that, throw your bobbin case away and install a new one. Next, we will go to our sewing hook. You want to make sure that this part of this point is free from burrs. I should be able to run my fingernail across the end of this sewing hook without hanging. And if your finger slides off smoothly, you don't have a burr. If I have a hang this way or coming around this way on the back, I will need to get that rough place off with a uh, piece of sandpaper. I use coarse sandpaper and take it to the back of the sewing hook and I will go work it back and forth until I feel like it's smooth and then what I will do, I'll run my finger on the back side and it's already smoothed this one up. So now I go to my fine piece of sandpaper. You can tell that I've used it bunches of times. It's wore out. Need to get some new. <laughs> but anyway, same procedure. You put your sandpaper around the back side of that hook. You probably won't be able to see it that well, but you just put it behind the hook and go backward and forth till you feel like it's uh, going backward and forth real smooth. And then remove it, take your fingernail, and feel, and I don't have any hangs, and I know that's good. And your thread will appreciate that as well. Before I go back together with it, I would want to make sure that all of this hook area in here is clean from all lint. Now that we've checked all of those things, we can do the fun part now. The exciting part is putting the machine back together. Now we will, we will go to a different hook system, which is a shuttle hook. And uh, all of the other things that we talked about, checking everything, all of your guides for rough places, burrs, it's the same applies to this machine. And But just a hook system is different. Flip this cover down and remove your bobbin case. And just take the wing, take the latch, and pull it out. Take these wings and flip them to the side. And which what that's going to do, that's going to allow us to remove the hook and the, uh, the raceway and everything out together. Take the middle of this shuttle hook and pull it out and all of it comes out together. On this shuttle hook, you want to make sure that you do not have any rough places on the back point of this hook or on the front, on the front edge. Make sure that there's no rough places all the way around it. And if you do, just like the previous video shows, get you a piece of sandpaper and smooth off the rough place. Now we'll go to our race. Your thread, as it's flopping around while it's sewing, 
it will come in contact with these edges and you want to make sure that all of these edges do not have any rough places on them. If there's a burr on the bobbin case, it usually it will be right in this groove where the needle goes through. Some people go ahead and take a piece of smooth sandpaper. They'll buff this and get the rough place out. But usually, if I have one hanging like that, I will just replace the bobbin case. Next, we will check our shuttle driver. The way that I've got the machine turned now, your needle is all the way down, and this is where it will come in contact with the uh, shuttle driver. If your needle has hit that shuttle driver enough, it will cause it to have a few burrs on it. You do this the same way as you would a hook from this area to this area here, you would kind of lightly sand that until you get all the burrs off till it's very smooth. And that's about the only thing I know. Dennis has been a technician for over 30 years. Talk about a lot of information stored in that brain of his. Just a little reminder, although this information is going to be very helpful for you, it doesn't take the place of bringing in your machine for scheduled maintenance. Continue to regularly bring your machine in every six to 12 months, see that sewing doctor and keep your machine running smoothly. Until next time, happy sewing everybody. I'm gonna show you this little notion. What, a hockey puck? It's not a hockey puck, I promise. But it will save you a whole lot of time when it comes to chain piecing. Welcome everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So first things first, we're going to assemble it. Yes, it does have a little bit of assembly required, but don't worry, it's super quick and easy. Turn it so that the little hole is facing up. Place a thumb on each side. Please ignore my manicure. I lost my thumbnail to washing dishes. Responsibilities. <laughs> now pull the two pieces apart. They are held together by several magnets. They're not too strong, making it difficult to open. However, they're just strong enough that the pieces stay together nicely. Now that you've opened it, just remove the flower and then we can move forward. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. The instructions say a number two. I say grab my set and randomly try until you find one that works. You can choose either strategy. You'll also need a used 45 millimeter rotary blade. So why do I say used? Notice that this product doesn't come with the blade. So the idea behind it is that you use your used blade because we all have those blades that, you know, you're cutting your fabric, it's just not quite sharp enough anymore, or it may have a nick in it, something along those lines, but it's still plenty sharp to cut thread. So by installing it in the blade saver, you give your blade just a little extra life as well as adding a really nice notion to your sewing room. So in the center, you either have your screw or a flat side. Place your finger on the flat side and then take your little screwdriver and remove the screw. Next, remove the base holder and then separate the flowers. Let's take a closer look at this piece first. It has a little ledge on the outside and it also has a protrusion in the middle. You'll see that you can simply drop the 45 millimeter blade right in. This one is flat, almost like a cap, and that fits within that little ledge. So now we just need our blade. So let's go ahead and carefully remove our blade. Although it may be dull in certain areas, it's definitely sharp enough to still cut you, so please make sure that you're careful when removing the blade. This will work with any 45 millimeter blade. Brand doesn't matter. Ulfa, Fiskars, Quilter Select, just to name a few. It does not work with a 28 millimeter blade. The center hole of the blade is just too small. A 60 millimeter is too large for this particular blade saver. However, there is another blade saver thread cutter available for the 60 millimeter blade. Looks the same, works the same. It's just slightly larger to accommodate the larger blade. Added bonus, with the larger one, you get this handy little screwdriver. Then you don't have to worry about digging through your screwdriver set. Now back to installation, we've dropped in our blade. Now we can just put the flower back in. It's just like a little puzzle. Grab the piece that has the flat end and put that through first. I find it easiest to put the screw in and then use my finger, kind of get it started. That way you don't cross thread it. Then take your little Phillips screwdriver and tighten it down. Take your two pieces, see the magnets, once again, we're going to line up those half circles and it'll snap together. 
Notice the little slit. We'll take our flower, pick a petal, doesn't matter which one, and place that right in the middle. Notice that by placing a petal in, it aligns it in such a way that you can safely put two fingers on the top and easily push it in. Remember, this is still a blade, so treat it with the same respect that you would treat your rotary cutter. On the bottom, there's little silicone feet, which is really nice when you set it down. It helps it from moving all over the place. And then you can take your chain piecing and then just simply sit here and start separating your pieces. You can do it right from the center or you can use one of the side blades. As one slot becomes dull, you can rotate the flower. The other thing that I love about our little hockey puck is it doubles as a storage case. Say you're getting together with a friend to sew. The reason I'm using that example is a friend and myself do that all the time. Or maybe you're going to a quilting class. You can just simply remove the flower, open it back up. On the inside, there's a little flower diagram. You just place it exactly where it shows, and then match that up again, and it snaps shut. Now you can safely bring it to your class without the risk of cutting yourself. So there you go. Now you know what it is, what it does, how to assemble it, all the fun stuff and things. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy sewing, everybody. Everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. Are you looking for a fun, unique project? Well, I've got just the thing for you. This is such a cool concept. There's no quilting, no binding, no handwork. And at the end, there's this fancy twist that hides the center seam. It's like magic. So let's do some magic. For our project today, I'm going to be making a table runner. It's out of this braided twist book. This is made by Cheryl Phillips with Phillips Fiber Arts. Cheryl was kind enough to give us permission to make a video for you. Out of respect for Cheryl, I won't be sharing every single page. However, you'll be able to walk through the process with me if you have this book and tool set. Go ahead and get everything cut out. On page four of your book, you'll see a diagram with the necessary cuts. Now, Cheryl does specify that the way that you cut out your fabric doesn't allow for any errors. So if you find that you're a person that, you know, maybe has a cutting oopsie once in a while, you might wanna get just a little bit more than what's called for. Grab your A fabric square, ensure that it's right side up, and then take your tool and line the left side with the A line and the bottom with the A line. I will try my best to keep my head out of the shot, but I do like to look from directly above just to make sure that I do have it lined up properly. Once you're certain that you have it lined up, you can take your rotary cutter and cut along the outside. If you've never used ruler grips, I suggest getting some. As you hold it down, those grips are gonna keep it in place versus the tool sliding all over the place. We need two of those, so just repeat that process. Next, grab your rectangle B piece and place it right side up. This time, align the B lines of the tool with the edges of the fabric. Isn't that neat? Cut along the inside edge of the tool. I started with a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, but I found it easier, especially on these inside cuts, to use my 28 millimeter. Cut two of these as well. Grab one of your A pieces and one of your B pieces that you just cut, and we're going to find the center of the curves. To do that, you just simply fold this in half and then bring it over and pinch that. I just have to point out something that I absolutely loved about this book. If I was doing this on any other project, I would fold that and think I cut something incorrectly because it's not lining up. She specifically notes to pinch it and that the sides are not the same length. I just love that reassurance. Now we'll find the center on this one. If it makes it easier for you to see after you've creased it, you can just make a little line with a marking tool. She's got this down first, and then it specifies that it's the wrong side. Oh, and then I did it wrong. There we go. <laughs> just like that. We're going to match up those centers. This end and put it to this end and make it straight. I know it looks a little weird, but it will work perfect. Just have to bring it over there. And I'm trying my best to keep my hands away so you can see what I'm doing. But that's one thing that's wonderful about the book. She's got a perfect diagram showing you this. And now we're going to do the same thing with this other side, taking that end, bringing it down, and matching it up with this end. With this one, I don't want it to start to turn, so 
Just going to put a couple of pins in there. Work your way around. I like to put another one in the middle to make sure everything's even. Looks good. If you want to put a few more pins in, you can. On my practice one, I went a little pin happy and that seemed to help. So I'm just going to put a couple more pins in there. And after I'm done pinning, we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the curve. Curves can be a little bit tricky. Take your time. If you need to lift up your foot, that's fine. Readjust the fabric. It's better to go slow and make sure you do it right. Normally, I prefer using my quarter inch foot with guide. However, when I did my practice runner, I really liked using the quarter inch patchwork foot. That one worked great. It was easy to see everything lined up perfectly. And if you use the clear one, that would even be better. Now let's clip all our thread. Make sure you do that as you go. And then we're going to press towards A. And then repeat that process and make another one of these. Next, cut out your fusible fleece as indicated in the instructions. You want to fold the fleece rectangle in half. Make sure all the edges line up. I'll do this on one and then you can repeat the process for the other ones. The folded edge should be on the top. Place your template on the fusible fleece, this time using the marks on the tool that say fleece. Cut along the inside of the template. Do this with all your fleece pieces. Grab your two pieces that you just made with your A and B fabric. We're going to use them to make our end cap sides. This time, place the fabric wrong side up. Place your tool on the fabric and align the tool ends with the edge of the fabric. Notice that this tool has little dashed lines that match up perfectly with your curved stitches. Once everything is lined up perfectly, carefully cut along the outside. Repeat this process to make two. Now I'm going to continue cutting half circles for the remaining A, B, and K fabric as indicated by the pattern. To make the first side of one end cap, you'll need an AB half circle and one of your A half circles. Find the center. On the AB half circle, your seam is the center, so that makes it nice and easy. However, on the A half circle, fold it in half and mark that midpoint. Then with right sides together, match those up and pin. Next, sew from the center mark to the bottom half circle. This needs to be an exact quarter inch. When you have to get directly on the seam line, I find it easier to put your needle down first and then put your foot down. You want to start and make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and at the end. This part is really important because it ensures that the fun twist part works well and nothing comes apart. Clip in one quarter inch. Make sure you do the clipping before you press. Now you can press open the seam. Here's an example of a little note that I love. She specifies that the center unsewn edges of the AB end cap will overlap. That's great information to have just to make sure everything's in place. Repeat this process to make one more AB end cap. Next, you'll need to repeat the process and make more using your K fabric. Because it doesn't have the seam to show you your center, you can simply fold them in half to find the center the way that you did before. And you'll also need two of those. Now we can put these together. Place your AB end cap and the K end cap right sides together. Make sure you line up your seams and pin everything. Sew around the outer edge, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. So the pattern states that we want to place the fusible fleece on the AB side, not on the K side. So just keep that in mind. You want it up to your stitch line, but not over. So this is going to give it that structure, make it look really nice. So you don't want to tack that down. You want to lift up your, your seam allowance, get that tucked under, and then depending on the fusible fleece that you're using, your instructions may be slightly different. You just want to go ahead and do those according to the manufacturer's instructions. I found it easiest to do one side and then place this on and do the next side. So I'm going to get that attached and then we'll move forward. Now that I've fused it, we'll turn this right side out and then you just need to make sure everything's nice and straight. Once everything is straightened out, you just press it from both sides. Now that everything is pressed, I'm going to stitch along each end at 1 8 of an inch, closing those sides. Begin stitching from the center going to the outside and make sure that you don't get the other piece 
stitched in. You want each side individually. You may find that because of the fusible fleece, your foot kind of shifts over, or your fabric, I should say, kind of shifts over. Just take your time, make sure that you get your eighth inch seam allowance. And then we'll repeat that process and do that for the other end cap. If there's a hard part of the project, that was it. It's all downhill from here. Now it's time to make our half circles. Place your K piece right side up and then place your A piece right side down. So along the curved edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. Now you can fuse your fleece to the wrong side of the A fabric. Just as before, you want to get the fleece up to the stitching line but not covering it. And then flip it right side out. Press it on both sides, bring it to the sewing machine, and then edge stitch 1 8 inch from the edge. So just fold it in half and mark it at the center. Then you want to snip in exactly 1 quarter inch. You will snip past that 1 8 inch edge stitch that you just did. Now make several more half circles as the pattern indicates. At this point you can label everything. This is going to make it much easier on the next step. We're going to do the left side first. It has a great little picture that shows you the top end cap. Fold this side out of the way, which we'll do in just a moment. And then KB just means K over B. So you're going to be showing the backing and then the B is underneath. And then you're going to swap it and do B on top and K underneath. And then lastly, you're going to have the end cap. Because I have limited space, instead of doing this vertically, I'm going to put the book horizontally and hopefully that will help you visualize what I'm doing. I'm just gonna lift that up a little bit so you can still see. We'll get this completely out of the way. Now we've got our top end cap. Here's where the labels come in handy. Next, we're gonna do K over B. So I've got my half circle, K's on top, B's on the bottom. Now you wanna bring the tip of this all the way to the center. So you want to get that lined up, make sure that it's snug in there and the edges are aligned. And it should be all the way to that tip to the bottom and it should be right at that slit. Make sure that it's pinned really well so it's not shifting on you. And when we go to sew, we don't want to catch this other part. It needs to be free. We're going to do right at a quarter inch in and then we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. But we wanna make sure everything is pinned well. So now that we're done with that one, I can set that aside. The next one we'll be doing is B over K. And that's our half circle B over K. And the tip of this one starts at the cut. So we put that right in the center and then this slit should meet the bottom of this half circle. See, isn't that cool? Okay, lastly, we just need to attach our bottom end cap. So we'll pull this over here. And you've got the gist now, right? I'm gonna fold this out of the way as it indicates so we don't have to worry about that at all. It lines up perfectly, looks good. Now we can double check ourselves. We've got our picture. So normally you would do it vertically here. However, I found it doing it the second time. It was more convenient for me to do it horizontally anyway because I could see better where it lines up. So depending on how you want to, but still always double check that you've got your top end cap. Then you've got the KB, so K up, B down, B up, K down, and then your bottom end cap with K up. So everything looks good. And now at this point, we're going to start one quarter inch in right there and then do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down and stopping right here. And we're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And that is very important because when we twist it, there's going to be some strain there. So you need to make sure that you do go and do back stitch at the beginning and back stitch at the end. Double check and make sure that that fabric is out of the way. You don't want to catch it, but you should be starting right at the top there. 
And then I'm going to do a quarter inch. Remember, start and then back stitch. And because of the bulk with the fusible fleece, I found that my fabric wanted to shift a little bit. So just take your time. If you need to, you can stop, keep your needle in, adjust your fabric a little bit, make sure you're on the right track. As you get close to the end, just make sure once again that the fabric is out of the way. You need to bring it just about to the end and then stop. Fabric's out of the way. You want to go right to the tip. One more. There we go. There's the left side. Now we're looking at it this way, so we're going to do the right side. So I'm going to turn it to the side again. I know this looks a little funny right now, but stick with me. It'll come together really soon. This time, we're going to tuck it under. So it's going to be the KA. So K on top, A on bottom. Flip this under here. And this time, we're connecting it this one. Try to keep my hands out of the way. But you get the idea. Once again, we're going to bring it all the way to the, the tip here. And then the bottom of this end cap matches up to the slit. Just take your time to match it up correctly. I know you're getting excited. When you're doing it by yourself and not trying to stay out of the camera shot, it's much easier. It's just I'm trying to stay out of the way. Currently it looks like it's wrong, but this is correct. So now we've got our KA, the next piece is going to be the AK. So that's our last one, AK. Once again, it's tucked underneath. We're going to bring it to that slit. And then the bottom of this one is going to match up to that slit. Nothing is connected to the left side. You're just working on the right now. And then it shows the bottom end cap. This part is tucked under. So we want to bring this one right there, right at the center. Gonna throw a few extra pins in there just to make sure everything is secure. The end cap on top, then K, a underneath, A, K underneath, and then the end cap is tucked under. Everything lines up just right. Looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to move my book again. And it does state in the book to bring it to the sewing machine and put the bottom on top because it just makes it easier for you to get your presser foot next to that area. So we're going to do the same thing now and we're going to sew the right side. Are you thinking to yourself, this doesn't look right? What did I do wrong? Absolutely nothing. This is exactly how it's supposed to look. This is where the magic happens. Think of it as three layers. Grab the first layer and twist, then grab one and two and twist, and then grab one, two, three and twist. Shoot me a comment if this messes with your brain because it just made mine go Poof. Amazing, right? Now the last thing that needs to be done, you just need to press it from both sides, make sure that you straighten and smooth all the center seams, and then you can work on the intersections here and interlock them. See, look how nice that looks. And then when you're all done, the directions will tell you how to take your heat and bond 
and get everything situated. I have to do just one more shout out to Miss Phillips. Thank you again for such a cool design, as well as allowing me to do a video on it. It was a ton of fun. And thank you for joining me for the whole video, and I hope you enjoyed making your table runner. Until next time, happy sewing everybody.
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Brian and I had a yummy sandwich while we played those preloaded videos, those tutorials. Uh, we did have a couple questions asking if those videos are going to be available. They are all available on our YouTube channel, so you can check those out after the special event, the So Creative Live event. You don't want to miss out on this. So uh, next up, we do have Tim Bond with Juki. Super excited. Tim has visited us here at Sewing Parts Online and have done some demonstrations on machines. Fabulous. So I am really, really looking forward to this. We are going to bring him up here in just a second. But before we pull him up, I just want to remind everybody that we're going to be doing a couple of giveaways at the end of this segment. We're going to be doing two Juki machines. So we're going to do the HZL 355Z one, and we are also doing the HZL G220. So make sure to keep on commenting. And without further ado, we are going to pull up Tim. Hello, Tim. How are you? Good, and you? I'm sorry I'm a little in the dark. I had a little power outage, so I have partial power, but you know what? We're going to make it through it without a problem. Looks fabulous. Your machines are bright and shiny, so that's all that matters, right? <laughs> that's all that matters. As long as you've got good lighting and a little bit of power, you're good to sew. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be showing us today, Tim? Sure. Today, I'm going to be talking about Juki products and what you really might consider having in your sewing room. I would like to think it's like the optimal sewing equipment, but you know, I've picked out the units that I like to use and these are great for me and what I sew with, but they may not be what everybody else wants to sew with, or it may not have the features somebody's looking for. So we're gonna go through the machines and we're going to talk about them, hopefully answer some questions and give you an idea of what a well-equipped sewing room you might have thinking about, or you are thinking about putting together using some Juki products. So Sounds like a plan. Well, we look forward to your demonstration. I just wanna remind the viewers, everybody, that all of these machines, we are going to have special event pricing on, which we will talk about afterwards, but we have financing available. We have great, great prices, and just keep that in mind as you're looking at these wonderful machines. All right. Great, so every sewing room has a sewing machine. What the features on the sewing machine, they're related to the type of sewing you do. But if we are a multiple purpose sewer, sewing garments, sewing crafting, sewing quilting, we might consider having additional machines, such as a serger. Serger gives me that ability to finish the inside seams or to do finishing edges on products. But if I really want to have a nice professional look, I might consider a cover stitch also. And this is going to be that last item that you would be putting into your sewing room to create that last little bit of detail on the item you're working with. So I'm going to switch my view so we can take a closer look at the MCS 1700 QVP cover hem machine. And I'm going to show you a little project and we're going to talk about it so you can see exactly what I mean by finishing and we're gonna start with the finishing and we're gonna end with our machine because I wanna start at the end and kind of get back to the beginning so that you remember about the sewing machine and we talk about features that you're gonna be looking for when you're looking to put together those right items that you want to get in your sewing room. All right, so let's switch my camera for me and let's see if we can't talk about our cover hem machine. So our cover hem machine, as you can see, has three dials kind of looks like a serger if you're kind of familiar with a serger, but it actually does no serging. It doesn't have a blade, all right? But it does have three needle positions. So I can use one needle, two needles, or three needles. One needle is gonna give me a chain stitch. Now, if you think back to an old style bag of dog food, or maybe the kitty litter bag, you pull that thread and it's gonna undo that chain stitch. And you can do that on a chain stitch. But we are talking about cover hem, and we have options for cover hem, so we can use two needles or three needles if we want a little bit more decorative look on our cover hem. But what really helps you control your cover hem is a guide. This guide actually comes with our MCS 1700, and I'm going to open up the front of the machine so I can show you a little bit more in detail about the guide itself and 
how it's actually used. Now, I'm not going to put a garment in and show you because if I do, I'll have all this fabric draping down here. So I have a little trick to help you understand how that folding actually works. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to open the door on the side here and I'm going to flip this forward. So hopefully you can see that this is my guide attachment. I have two guide blades, if you will, or two edges that I'm going to run against. One here is the inside. It's actually matched to the right, to the, I'm sorry, to the left needle position on my cover hem machine. That way I'm not extending the fabric beyond that needle. The edge of the fabric is going to get captured inside my stitching. The other edge is where my fold is going to be. And I can adjust this. Right now it's about a pinky's width, which is about a half inch wide of a fold coming under. Now I know you're asking me, a fold coming under? What exactly is he talking about? Well, I'm gonna pull out a piece of webbing so that you can see exactly what I talk about when I'm talking about the folding guide. Like I said before, if I put a piece of fabric there, you're only gonna see the fabric hanging down. So I have a nice pretty green piece of webbing and I'm gonna step around here to the front of the machine. And this webbing is going to go into the side and fold under. And this is what your fabric would be doing. So as you can see, hopefully there's enough light in here. Remember, I have a little power outage, so I have limited lighting. But you can see where this green curves around and stops underneath. That's where the edge of your fabric would be stopping as you would be running it through the machine. It stops at that point aligned to the needle so that I'm not having an edge beyond the needle. That's very important. That cover hem is giving you that final finish look on a hem or if I'm putting elastic in it, I'm going to show you that in a moment also. But now you can see exactly what that fold guide actually does for you. Pretty simple and it's adjustable. So if I want more or less, I can adjust it. Say I want three quarters of an inch folded under. I can adjust this guide here to allow me to have more fold, more fabric being folded under, such as a hem. So that's a good indication. I mean, that's a good view of what the guide does. But what does it look like when it's done? Well, some time ago, I did, can we switch back cameras? Yeah. I did a demonstration for the cover hem, and people wanted to know what does it do, and how can you do, what can you do with it, and things like that. And so I thought, well, let's see if we can't make something simple that everybody can understand. So how about a skirt, never touch the sewing machine, I ran it through the serger, and then I ran it through the cover hem, with elastic, it's just a simple jersey skirt done on two machines. Never touch the sewing machine with it. It's one solid piece of fabric with one seam. So I'm going to show you the seam here. That's the only seam that's done on the serger. The rest of the stitching, except for overcasting the edge, was done on my cover hem. So I have my stretch with my seam, but I also have elastic at the top, and I have a hem at the bottom. Let's take a closer look. So we're gonna switch cameras again back over to the other camera so that we can actually take a better look at the stitching so you understand what those twin needle cover hems do. Hopefully we have enough light and you can see down here at the bottom. I pulled this tight so you actually have a ridge on this particular skirt so that it gives a little extra bit of detail, but it also allows you to see that it's two rows of stitches on the outside. So this is what I might want as detail, but you might want it to be flat. Flat, I would just release a little bit of tension off of my chain looper on the bottom. But what does this look like on the back side? On the back side, all that dark thread is my chain looper. The white thread is where I've allowed that excess so that you can see that I overcasted all the edges on my serger before I started doing my finishing work. So this is my cover hem. I've created the hem of the skirt with my cover hem machine. But I mentioned I put in the elastic also. I have an elastic waistband. You know, this skirt probably took, I think it took maybe 45 minutes to an hour to construct. That includes cutting, piecing, and everything else. It was really quick and simple. And if you got into production, you could actually make yourself a series of these skirts. In a couple of days, you could probably have eight or 10 of them in different colors just to highlight your wardrobe with something quick and easy. But I want you to pay attention here because I have elastic up at the top. I have two stitch lines. So when I pull them out, you can see in the red fabric, you see the dark stitch line at the top. 
But below that, you see a crease, and then you see stitching below. Because my top needle here is penetrating the elastic. But the needle on the bottom went through the is following the guide with the elastic. So I'm not penetrating the elastic. If I fold it over, you'll see that there's my stitch line. It's right at the edge of the elastic. That's what the guide allows you to do, is to get that exact placement with that one needle position so that you can create this type of look. Now, once again, I did this as a quick sample, and I was trying to show people that I had overcasted the edges first, and then I have my cover hem. So that's how you can actually make a simple skirt very quickly using just a serger and just your cover hem machine. So now, why don't we talk about our serger, unless you've got some questions out there. Oh, one person asked if it's an air threaded. This one is not an air thread, and that's a good question because air threading is very convenient. But I'm going to tell you a little hint about ours. While we're still on this view, I'm going to rotate my machine here. We do not load our looper from the left. We load from the right. We load our looper from the left. So our chain thread comes down the back comes in the back, goes through the mechanism here, and then comes into the looper. This is all just a lay-in guide piece. I'm not having to put it through any loops until I get to the looper. And when I get to the looper, I actually can make the looper fall back so I can have better access to it. So here's my looper. These are rings. These are open rings I just snap the threads into. It's very easy to thread. Now, I will be honest with you. Years ago, the first time I went to use this type of threading device, I looked at the picture, and I looked at the picture, and I looked at the picture, and I was trying to make it so much more difficult than it actually was. So after five minutes of, you know, fighting with it, I got up and I walked away. I probably should have gone to have a glass of wine or something, but I didn't. I just got up and walked away. Then I came back to it with a fresh mindset, and I looked at the picture again, and all the lights went off, and I went, oh, I should have done this in the dark. Then I found out that it's really just a lay-in system. I was trying to feed it through here, making it much more difficult than it really is. It's really very simple. So we don't really have to have an air thread because we're threading from the left side. You have access to all of the mechanisms, and it's just dragging the thread through the hoops. Hope that answers your questions. Somebody else um, asked how many cover stitches do we have? So this is a triple needle cover hem machine. So it can do two needle narrow with a left and center or a right and center needle, or you can do two thread, two needle wide using the outside needle positions or a triple needle, which gives you three lines of stitching on the top of your fabric. That's when you want a little bit more decorative look to your stitching. The two needle is kind of utilitarian is what you see on a normal t-shirt or on a, on some commercially finished garment. You might see that, Generally, it's two needle, but you're doing something a little special. You might consider putting that third needle in just to give it that little extra bit of detail. By the way, that third needle can be middle or to the right. You don't have to change your needles around. You just add the needles you want and then rethread that needle. It's a good question. Looks like we can probably move on. Okay, so now remember, I said on my skirt that I did it with the serger. So let's see about jumping over to our serger for a moment, and we'll talk about the serger. Finishing work is on our cover hem. We've hemmed our garment. We helped set our elastic, but we want to be able to do some of that construction work and that finishing work on the inside, as well as some decorative details. So let's step over to our serger a moment. I'm going back to the big screen. While they're moving my cameras over, I'm going to get set up here because it's a little dark on my side of the camera in case you don't notice that. It probably looks nice and bright, but on my side, things are a little dark. And I'm going to talk about some decorative pieces that work on our air thread serger. So this is the MO2800. This is a brand new model. We just introduced it a few months ago. I will tell you that when I first got it, I was thrilled with it because it was just so nice and easy to use. And I just couldn't believe that I could get a serger that ran as smooth as this one did. Now, keep in mind, our previous sergers all run very smooth. They're very easy to use, air thread, but this was just a little bit smoother. So if that's something that interests you, you seriously should consider looking at the MO2800. But there's some really cool features in here. 
So let's start with some of the nice features here at the front that make things easier. We have a catch tray that snaps onto the bottom. So I'm going to move this out of the way because that allows me to open the door and you'll be able to see that this is actually an air thread serger. Same type of system as we've had on our previous air thread sergers, which makes it very convenient. So if you've had one of our air thread sergers before, you're just going to switch to this serger without any hiccups. Maybe you didn't have an air thread serger before. Well, this is a very easy system. You lay the threads in, you come straight down to the tube, you put a little bit of thread into the tube, press the button, and it threads both your loopers for you. We can thread both loopers at the same time. So I don't have a left and right positioning here to select. I simply put threads in both and press the button. It runs a motor, the motor pumps air, the air is what drives the thread through the loopers for me. Also notice in our little door here is we have a nice cache of little tools, our tweezers, our screwdriver, which is an Allen wrench to change our needles, and a lint brush. And the backside of our lint brush has a little holder to hold your needle. Sometimes it's kind of difficult to be holding the needles when you want to try and change them here. But we give you a little tool to help, help you with that. Now, I do want to talk about some new things on this serger. One of the things that has always been of interest to people is when you change your stitch width, the door on your serger has always moved. Everybody noticed that you changed your blade, made it stitch a little, uh, cut a little wider, a little wider. And every time you did, the door moved out. So it didn't look like it was aligned. Well, we have changed that on this one. So we actually have a little bit more flexibility right next to the blade to adjust the blade so that the door stays aligned. So you can see this, ga this gauge here is moving for me. So if I move my blade, it's going to move just this. It's not moving the door. Now, that's really nice because I'm a little bit, well, let's say, picky about things. I like my alignments to stay in alignment. But I also want to know about other, tool, other features on the machine that make this machine a little bit more unique. One of those things that we've done with this machine is we have moved the blade. I'm going to open this up again so you can have some more light in here. We have moved the blade as close to the needles as we can get. Yes, we've moved the, the blade back closer to the needles. What does that do? That allows us to do tighter curves. Now, quilters, they're not too worried about curves, but in garment sewing, we worry about curves because we don't want to be making our curve too hard or too short or too tight and inadvertently cutting off because we're using the serger on that curve. So by moving the, the blade back, we can actually do tighter curves with this serger. So that helps me set the sleeves in or things like that that I would use for the curve. Guess what? There's also a curved foot that comes with the machine. So we move the, made, the blade back, we give you a curved foot to go with it, so you can actually take advantage of that feature right off the bat. It's not like, oh, I need to buy another foot so I can take advantage of it. That curved foot comes with the machine. Now, this space in between the blade and the needles, that is kind of new, and we actually are, as far as I know, the shortest distance in the home sewing market between the blade and the needles currently. So that was a nice little change to come up with so that we can accommodate people curve in their people's curving in their sewing using the serger. This has always been an issue for people. Some people got very comfortable with it, but for the most part, people have always kind of stayed away from really tighter curves because of that issue. They were afraid they would cut their fabric with the blade. I want to talk about one other feature that's in this area also. This is something that's new for this machine also. We can adjust our blade and we can adjust our stitch finger. That's that little finger that sits behind the blade that actually wraps the thread. The thread wraps around it. We can adjust them separately. So if I adjust my blade out, I can come back in here and I can adjust the stitch finger. Now, if you're sewing a knit and you cut the knit, you know, it's going to pull back a little bit because that's what knits do. If my stitch finger was matched to my blade, it would be out that far. My fabric would have been pulled back, but I can adjust that stitch finger now so it's now matching the edge of the fabric, giving me a cleaner overlay of my overcasting stitch on the edge of the fabric. Anybody ever notice that they ran a knit through and they had little loops on the edge of their fabric? That's because the fabric pulled back and the stitch finger is sitting over too far, and you couldn't adjust the stitch finger separately from the blade. On this machine, we can fine tune that stitch finger to move it in or out with the blade or separately. So that's a nice feature to have. We didn't have this on some of our machines before, but I have found it very useful when I was sewing some knits. There is one other very cool feature on this machine that I want to talk about, 
And this is one of those things that people often ask about is, how do I do my tensions for rolled hems? Well, a rolled hem means I'm going to remove one needle. I'm going to move my stitch finger out of the way. I'm going to adjust my stitch length so it's very short. Okay, now I still haven't adjusted my tensions, but on my MO2800, I don't need to because I have a little lever right here that I can flip over and it will make that tension adjustment for me for the rolled hem. How much easier can we get? Air threading, controls right here in the front that give me more options, a closer blade, and the flip of a lever to adjust from standard tensions to a rolled hem. Now, some people want to know about what a rolled hem actually looks like, and I have a couple of samples for you so that we can look at them. Hopefully they will show up. It's not too dark here. But I wanted you to understand that a rolled hem is the finishing work. Now, I've got a couple of napkins here. I'm hoping my videographer can tell me whether or not this is showing up in the camera well enough. Come a little closer? Okay, so we're going to see if we can come a little closer. I have a little light here also. So you can see here, I have a ridge on the edge of my fabric. That's my rolled hem. Now, when we do a rolled hem, we're going to select specialty threads unless we're just trying to, to match the color and we can't match it with a specialty thread. There are several different brands of threads out there designed to be used for rolled hem that will give you this nice, soft edge. But you see this rolled hem is nice and solid. There's no opening. There's no gaps between my stitching. That's because I've adjusted my stitch length so that the threads actually st stack next to each other, giving me this uniform coverage. Yes, corners are tricky, but they can be easily accomplished. You just need to practice on them. So this is your rolled hem. And on the back, you can see that that top thread is pulled around to the back side of the fabric. Now I'm going to show you another example of what some people might consider a rolled hem. I more or less going to refer to it as a narrow hem. This is on another napkin set we've made. Hopefully you can see this. If I hold it against my fingers, you should be able to see the light and dark. You see it's not quite as covered. It's a little bit lighter in its density, but also look at the back. It doesn't quite wrap enough. So this is more like a narrow hem just done along the edge for decorative purposes. I like them to wrap all the way around and that's where adjusting the tensions on the machine comes in very handy. It tightens down that lower looper to cause that top thread to actually wrap around to the needle thread on the back side, giving me that nice curved edge. Both of these give me a nice little ridge to help define the edge of my napkin in this instance. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind that this is something you can control. It's the look you want to achieve. Whichever way you're happy with, that's the look you're going to be able to set. If I want the rolled hem, it's a flip of a switch. If I want to narrow, I can simply just put it in, adjust the narrow, tweak my tensions just a little bit to make sure it's wrapping ever so slightly, and I'm good to go with it. So, any questions about our AirThread MO2800 serger? Um, somebody asked if it had a free arm. This surgeon yeah, does too. not have a free arm. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Tim. We did have a question regarding specialty thread. When it comes to the air threader on the MO2800, are there any issues with like a woolly nylon? So air thread sergers always have issue with some specialty threads. There's not an air thread serger out there that's going to actually air thread every thread that we're gonna run through our serger. Remember, a woolly nylon is fluffy. Actually, I have some here. <laughs> So hopefully you can see this. Maybe I can move it closer. You can see it's fluffy. And it stretches. Yes. So it doesn't really have a lot of body to it. The thread needs a little bit of body for the air to push it through the tubes. So we have a threading device to help us with some of these threads that don't necessarily want to travel through the air threading system correctly. But you know what? We still engage our tubes. We put our feeder wire through it. We hook the thread through the back of it and we pull it out the other side. I'm not having to feed anything through a bunch of hoops. It's the same path. Instead of using air, I'm using a wire. I will tell you that woolly nylon is awfully fun stuff to play with. And that is what's on the edge of one of those napkins. It's worth it to use that wire because woolly nylon is awesome. It gives fantastic results. So, And you can right. also always get different colors of it. So don't think I'm just using black. I have red, yellow, green. I have a myriad of colors. But... That's the purpose of woolly nylon, I find, is it gives you that nice finished edge. 
I'm going to give you a little hint. We didn't talk about this earlier, but woolly nylon is good to use when you're making things for infants or babies because it gives a nice soft edge. You don't have to worry about the coarseness of the thread. You put woolly nylon on it and it'll give it a nice soft edge against the baby's skin. So any other questions out there? All right, so I'm gonna step back around. Give me just a second. We're gonna switch from our serger to our sewing machine. Now remember, this is an air thread serger and you might decide that you don't need an air thread serger. There are other sergers that will be very useful to you in the sewing market, and especially from Juki's. We have an entire line of sergers that are not air thread, but I'll be honest with you, I'm a lazy sewer. So air threading to me just makes it so much easier and allows me to enjoy my time with the machine and working on my projects much, much better than if I had to sit there and kind of fight with it or feel like I'm fighting with it to take extra time to get to the point that I can actually use the machine. So we've talked about our cover hem. We've talked about our serger. And there are options in the serger. There are options in the cover hem machine. But where you're going to spend most of your money and most of your time if you're doing garment construction or crafting or quilting is on your sewing machine. Now, you see, I mentioned quilting, but I didn't talk about how I use quilting on my serger. And I actually do use my serger in my quilting. When I take my quilt off the frame after I've quilted it, I run it through the serger so that I have a nice even stitch all the way around my quilt. It also helps to keep some of that unevenness of the quilt in check so that when I put my binding on, my binding can be laid down nice and flat, folded over, and then whip stitched on the back. That's a nice way to make sure that you're always even from the edge with your binding is to have that extra stitch line that the serger gives you. And of course, it's made all, this, all the edges smooth for you as well. So but on sewing, we're going to talk about sewing for sewing garments, sewing crafts, and for quilting. So sewing for garments, this is where people often say, I sew this type of garment and I need these features in the machine. That's where you want to find out exactly what other features you want, because you don't realize that when you say, I only sew this, there's going to come that opportunity to sew something else. So I only sew woven fabrics. Well, I don't only sew woven fabrics. I sew stretch fabrics also. So I need a machine that's going to be able to do that. So that's one of those things I'm going to be looking for in the machine. Remember, we can go from a basic machine to our top of the line machine. But remember, I said I'm lazy. I like a machine that can do everything for me. So when the machine comes out and it can do all the things that I need done that I don't have to do manually, I'm very happy with it. And the Coco Chi the DX4000 is that machine for me. Now, it might be too much machine for other people, but I want you to take a look at this machine with me as we examine some of the features on it for sewing and then for crafting and then for quilting. First off, we have a myriad of stitches available to look at. This is important because when you're sewing garments, I may not have gotten my serger yet. I may not have a cover hem machine yet, but my sewing machine can give me cover hem. It's not like the cover hem machine. It's not like the serger, but it can give me a cover hem stitch. It can give me an overcasting stitch. So I can still accomplish those finished works, that finished work on my garments with my sewing machine. But I have to be careful to make sure that those stitches are in the machine I'm looking at. It's very easy to buy a lower end machine and not get those stitches that you thought were there. So always check the stitches look in the lid of the machine or look in the book or ask the dealer about stitches in the machine. I always want to look at the first group because generally the first group is what contains your utility stitches. Straight stitch. I'm sewing on knits. I want to have a seam that stretches. So I have a stretch stitch. I need overcasting stitch. I need blind hem stitches and they all need to be for woven and for stretch. So those are the stitches I'm going to be looking for in my utility sewing. But I need to be able to do buttonholes as well. So I have a group of buttonholes in this machine also. Now you might find that your machine has four or five buttonhole patterns and it should actually be sufficient for most of the things you're working on. But every once in a while you want to do something special. That's where a larger assortment of buttonholes comes in handy. 
I will tell you, I never thought that I would be doing hand sewn look buttonholes or heirloom look buttonholes until I had them on the machine. And then I kind of went to town with them. I really just fell in love with them. I liked the way they stitched out. So I started using some more and more of the decorative uh, buttonhole patterns, not just the regular block or rounded end, which takes me to the next thing about our buttonholes. You should be using different type of buttonholes for different types of fabrics. So if I'm sewing on a woven, I should be using like my shirt, I should be using a square end or a block end buttonhole. But if I'm sewing on a knit, I have a rounded end buttonhole that I can pick from also. That gives me that reinforcement against that knit that keeps it from puckering so much when that button is pulled tight. So that's why we want to keep in mind that we want to have a decent assortment of buttonholes on our machine. To me, the more the merrier, the more buttonholes there are, the more decorative I can play with, the more things I'm going to actually want to play with on the machine by having that larger selection. So we've talked about utility stitches, we talked about buttonholes, but we have a whole myriad of other stitches that we can use for decoration. So decoration is not just for garment sewing, it's also for crafting. Sometimes we might even use it in quilting. You may have heard people talk about crazy quilting where they've done a piecing and then they're crazy stitching. They're just running decorative stitches over the seams to get that little extra bit of interest to the quilt pieced fabric. They have a big piece of fabric. They pieced it all together and they're stitching across it, adding that bit of interest. That's a nice, easy way to actually help you explore the stitches on your machine as well. You're probably going to find that, oh, there's like three or four you really are going to fall in love with. And those are the ones you have a tendency to go back to. They become your go-to decorative stitches. But I'm talking about sewing and decorative stitches. What about crafting? Crafting is the same. I want decorative stitches that I can put onto my crafting projects. I'm doing a purse. I'm doing a bag. And I want some decorative stitches on the strap. I have decorative stitches here. I can use those on the strap. I can use them on the face of the bag. I can use a decorative stitch, believe it or not, to hide that straight line stitching at my zipper. So I can actually use the decorative stitches more than just for decoration. So you want to keep that in mind when you're looking at your machines, especially on our Coco Chi, we have a myriad of decorative stitches to play with. And like I said, you're going to find three or four that you're going to like. So that's talking about sewing and decorative stitches and a little bit of crafting. But I want to talk a minute about quilting and how the machine can actually be addressed for quilters. So I'm going to walk around to the front of the machine here. And I want to draw your attention to a feature on the machine that I find very important for quilters. And this is one of those things that a lot of quilters kind of skip over when they're looking at a new machine. So I have our touch screen and I'm going to touch my number here and I'm going to pick pattern number three. Pattern number three is my quarter inch piecing stitch. It is built into the machine. All I have to do is select it. And over here, it's telling me my A foot. My A foot, it's not making me put a quarter inch foot on. No, because on our machine, our piecing stitch, we can take advantage of using our regular A foot. Now, what advantage does that give me? Well, that gives me a big advantage because I'm actually using all the feed dots. If I use a center needle and use a quarter inch, standard quarter inch foot on a seven millimeter machine, you might want to check this on your own machine. You're going to find that the fabric falls inside that right hand feed dog. So I'm really only using one long feed dog and the little helper feed dogs in the middle. I'm not using that far right side feed dog. I have a little joke about this and I say I paid for all the feed dogs. I want to use them all. Well, this option, number three, my built in quarter inch piecing stitch and my A foot allows me to use all of my feed dogs. Now, I want to draw your attention to one other thing on the screen over here, and that is our thread tension. Our thread tension automatically adjusted to a negative number because our default number is a zero. But if I need to adjust it, I can see this active display here. When I make a change, you can see which way my thread is pulling. I'm adjusting my top tension tighter, so it's pulling up my bobbin thread. I'm hoping that that's coming through okay on the video for you. But you can see I now have more gray and less blue. That blue represents my top thread and the gray represents my bobbin thread. If I lighten up my top thread, it's going to get pulled down some more. So this is a very easy way to see how to make that adjustment. And it's represented on the screen so you know, okay, I'm adjusting my top tension. Am I going the right way? 
I was seeing too much on the bottom. I need to tighten up my top tension. I want to pull it up. So this display allows you to see that. I want to leave this. I can just touch the blank spot on the screen and it will take me back to my regular working screen. Now I have other options here that help me do things easier, cleaner, faster. Remember, I like things the machine can do for me. And I like control also. You know, we talk about people being a little bit of a control freak, but I like controls and the machine gives me those controls. I like to be able to have a lock stitch at the beginning and at the end, mostly in my garment sewing and in my crafting, not so much in my quilt piecing, but in my garment sewing, I like that. I also like to be able to have it automatically cut the thread at the end. So now I can see the blue dots are telling me that I have turned on that feature. But wait, I can control this feature at the beginning. This is four stitches forward and back at the beginning, four stitches forward and back at the end. But I don't want that buildup of thread. So I want a micro stitch. It's going to take little stitches in place at the beginning, little stitches in place at the end. Then it's going to cut the thread and lift the foot off for me when I get to the end of my seam. Now I don't have that buildup of thread because I'm not using that forward to back uh, standard lock stitch. I'm using a little micro stitch. This is very handy. Once again, it's a control thing. I don't like the bulk from the forward to back four stitches, but this still gives me security of the beginning and ending of my seam. So those blue dots are nice. The controls are nice. But what about the screen itself? The screen itself allows me to sweep left to right so I can sweep through the options of all my stitch patterns built into the machine. If I get to a group that has more, I can sweep up and sweep down. And whatever stitch pattern I like, I see, I can select it. It will automatically post it onto the screen and set the machine for me. Very easy. Yes, I have controls that I can make changes to it. For example, I might want that to be a little narrower or a little shorter. I can still control that. I can make those changes to make that pattern fit whatever need I have at the time. Maybe it's a little too wide at seven millimeters. And so I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to make it a little narrower. You can see as it changes on the display. So the pattern is actively displayed as I make a change. Very handy because, ooh, maybe I need to shorten it also a little bit so that it looks a little bit more balanced. So as I see it on the screen, I can imagine what it's going to look like on the fabric and I can rebalance it or readjust it for those changes that I'm trying to accommodate in whatever I'm trying to put it onto. I'm going to go back up here to my seven millimeters, back to the white numbers. So now I'm back to my normal setting for this particular stitch pattern. But I was working on something the other day and I stopped sewing. And I want to go back to that. Our machine has history. Like many machines out there, they have a resume mode. They will resume the last stitch pattern that you sewed. We actually store the last 10 patterns that you've sewn. So I could have sewn straight stitching for the last four or five days. And last week I did this particular satin stitch. And I know it's in my history because I've only sewn three or four patterns since then. So I could come to my history, I could find that one. And it's going to give me back that stitch pattern from the history. If I made a change to the stitch width or stitch length of it, that is also stored in the history. So it's gonna bring it back exactly how I sewed it before. Nice feature to save me a little time. I don't need to program it into a memory because my history is going to hold those last 10 stitch patterns for me. Very nice feature I find, very easy to use because it's automatic. But what if I need help with my machine? Help is built into the machine. Today, people like a lot of help. They like to know that they can go into the machine or they can go online and get information about it. And we have our book built into it. So our instruction manual is actually built into the machine. Remember, we have this nice, pretty full color display, but you can scroll through the book. I know that prints a little small, isn't it? So I can zoom in to get that print to be bigger. But I'm not an old fashioned person. I'm not a big one for books. I'm more along the lines of technology and a breakdown of what I'm looking for. Cause I could kind of scroll through the book. But here I have an operation of the main body, and I have operation of the operation panel. So I'm going to touch on my main body. It is broken down into options that are pieces of the machine. So I want to know about speed control. So I'm going to find down the list. Oh, here's speed control. Shows me an image of what the button is and where it's located on the machine. 
and it gives me some increase and decrease pointers, one and two, for using my speed control. So all of the features that are buttons on the machine will give you a diagram like this. This actually has two pages of information. I can see down here it says one of two. I'm going to go to the next screen. It's also talking about speed control with my foot pedal. So the book is actually in the machine, but we have more breakdown or we have a better breakdown of specific items that you might be questioning just sitting at the machine going, oh, what does this button do? What does that button do? I can come into the operation main body and I can look down to find that particular item. It's the same way with operational panel. I have questions about the panel itself and some of the buttons or functions there of, on the panel. I can come into here and look at it as well. You know what? Let's see if my power outage has affected my online service. Nope. The Coco Chi is built in Wi-Fi. Remember, we like to have our books. We like to have information, but I want to be able to sit at the machine and I have a quick question about something in the book and I'd rather look at a video. So I can come into my instructional videos, go online. It is actually going to take me to the Juki Home Sewing YouTube channel and it will display the movies, the videos, if you will, for this machine. Oh, well, maybe my internet's not quite working. For this machine, 17 chapters. Every video is a separate chapter or every chapter is a separate video. Depends on which way you want to look at it. I don't need to look through two and a half hours of a video to find three minutes of information. So I can scroll through and find the one I want. Ooh, looks like my internet's going to work today. Hoping it'll load for us. Shows me my DX4000 operation support movies. And here's that listing. So I want to look for something that has to do with the operational buttons, or maybe I just want to know about the straight stitch. So I have a straight stitch movie here. I can see it's only four minutes. So I'm not stuck having to look through 25 minutes or two hours of video just for a little bit of information. So I can touch on that video, and let it load and let it play for me. There's a built-in speaker. You can adjust the volume on it. And once you're in YouTube, it's going to load just like regular YouTube on your phone or on your PC, your tablet, so that you can sit here and watch the videos. You can pause them and you can actually uh, rewind them and fast forward them as well. You're actually just a regular kind of browser function in the YouTube in our online system here through the Wi-Fi or our Juki Sewing Net. I'm going to give it just another second for it to load so that you can see it's actually going to pull it up. And of course, it's going to start with an ad. And we're going to get our ad and hopefully it'll let us skip through it so that it's not going to be too obnoxious. So we're going to skip our ad and we're going to let it load our video. Hopefully you can hear it. So there's text along the bottom giving you information about how to operate the machine and doing your straight stitch and some other options on it. It's a short four and a half minute video. Most of the chapters are like this. So there's information for you to get right in the machine. I don't need to worry about having to go someplace, having to pull a book out, having to go look up something else. I can sit comfortably at the machine and access the, the videos to learn more about my Coco Chi machine. I want to go back to my home for my Juki sewing net. I have digital tutorials. I have another copy of the manual available online. And then I can actually go to the Juki website. Maybe I have my sewing machine, but I haven't quite decided on my surgery yet. I can go visit the Juki website and do some research sitting here at my Juki Kokochi looking for a surgery. Or maybe I'm looking for a cover head. Or maybe I'm looking for another sewing machine to travel with. You know, this is a good sized machine. Not everybody's going to want to carry around this machine with them as they're going to class or something. So you're going to be looking for something maybe a little smaller, a little easier to travel with. That's where the Juki website comes in handy. Oh, that thought just crossed my mind. I can go look at it right here. Settings are very important to me in a machine. They should be important to you. This is how you customize the machine to the way you sew. If I can't customize a machine to the way I sew, I'm stuck having to adapt myself to that particular machine. Maybe that's not the right machine for me. 
A machine that I can customize to the way I sit and sew is very handy. I'm going to talk about one feature real quick here, and that is presser foot lifting height. I don't generally sew a lot of really thick items, but for that instance that I am sewing a bag and I want to have some extra clearance, I have the availability to have the foot lift off at the standard six millimeter height clearance, eight millimeter height clearance, or 10 millimeter height clearance. So for your crafters out there and you're looking for trying to squeeze that sandwich underneath the foot, you can actually have the foot lift up to 10 millimeters high off the plate so you can get that bulk of fabric underneath there and then lower the foot and start sewing. It's a very nice feature to be able to, to access and change for the way you're sewing. One other thing I like to do is the switch functions on the foot control. Now, if you're familiar with our Juki foot controls, we have a pedal that you press down on the front, you press down on the back, it's two switches. That rear switch is programmable. Well, on the Coco Chi, we have a different pedal for you. I find this pedal to be very handy because instead of having to rock forward and back, I make it run here. My secondary pedal is my alternate switch. I can set this particular pedal to needle up, needle down. I can set it to reverse stitch. I can tell it to, to lock stitch. I can tell it to cut the thread. I can control what this pedal does. I can even turn it off if I don't want it to do anything. So there's my next control factor of how I use the machine. How am I using the features in the pedal? If I don't use them, I can turn that off. That way, if I accidentally step on it, it's not going to do something that I didn't want it to do. A very nice feature to have. And those options are displayed on the screen here. So whichever option has a blue dot on it, this one is currently set for reverse, I could change it. Maybe I want to be able to trigger the thread trimmer. So I can just highlight the thread trimmer. The programming is now reset on the foot. So when I step on that extra switch, it's going to trim my threads. So all of these items are in here to help you customize the machine. How many of you sew on big projects? You always find that you have to lift the foot because you don't have pivot position. So that means I have to take a hand off the fabric to reach behind, or I have to hope that my machine has a knee lift and use the knee lift. But here we have pivot and we can control that pivot height as well. Just like we can control how high off the foot lifts when we stop sewing, we can tell it how high we want it to pivot off our fabric. Once again, I'm sewing with a bulk of fabric and I want to come in here and I'm going to adjust that height to give me a higher pivot. That way the needle will stop down, the foot will lift off and I can pivot my fabric. This is a very nice feature and you can turn it on or turn it off. Sometimes you don't want it on, so you want to be able to turn that feature off. I have it turned on most of the time on mine because generally speaking, I'm sewing shorter items. I'm not sewing big, long, 45, 60 inch long seams. So those are just a few of the items that we can control in here as well as we can control lighting, it's very important. You hear people talk about, oh, I don't have enough lighting in my sewing room. Well, we can control the lighting and the brightness in here on our screen and our lighting over the bed of the machine. I can also change the color. Maybe I'm sewing on something that doesn't work well with a bluer light, and so I want to change the color on it. I can make it bluer. Sometimes the reds and blacks are going to appear differently, and you might want to be having a little different color hue on them. So that's where being able to come in here and adjust that color hue is very handy. Generally, I'm somewhere about, about in here, just about white, not quite to the blue side, but not quite to the yellow side. My screen brightness, I don't really need it to be quite so bright, but I can adjust it. I can touch on it. You can see it adjust it for me. Maybe that's too much light. It's late at night. And my eyes, eyes are a little tired. I have a little bit of, of glare coming off because the light's just a little too bright. I can adjust that. Sound volume adjustment is here, as I said before. Press about height list. Bobbin thread detection. This is another one of those features that I talked about earlier that I'm lazy. I want the machine to tell me when I'm running out of bobbin thread. Yes, I know it's very easy. I can just lift up and look through the little plastic cover and see how much that I have on my bobbin. But remember, anything the machine can do for me, I'm more than willing to let it do. And I can customize this. For sewers and garment people or crafters or quilters, they want to know when there's a lot of thread left. You can actually have it estimate 200 stitches left on the bobbin for you. You can have it estimate 100 stitches left on the bobbin. You can see this machine is set for 30 stitches. I want it to tell me about when I'm out. I don't, I don't need a big, long introduction to tell me, oh, you're going to run out. You're going to run out. You're going to run out. Just tell me when I'm about out so I know that I'm going to stop. It might mean I have two more inches of sewing or six more inches of sewing, but at least I know where I'm at because I'm close to being at the end of it with my bobbin sensor. And this is a sensor. It is not a countdown system. 
the sensor is telling us that there's about 30 stitches left based on how much thread is wrapped around the bobbin. I'm going to take a pause a moment here and see if there's any questions anybody has. Um, somebody asked if it has a built in walking foot. This great question, and I'm going to answer that with a yes. This particular machine does have a smart feed system. You automatically engage it. The nice thing about this smart system is it's smarter than I am. And I say that seriously because when I go over here to select a pattern and I've got it engaged, look on the screen. It's telling me I cannot use the smart speed system with that stitch pattern. It will not let me sew. I have can't do anything. I have to come over here and disengage my smart feed system. Now it will let me sew that pattern. So it will not let me select a pattern and smart feed that will not work well together. So it's a great question. And then the next question is going to be, it's integrated, so it's got a sensor. It checks the pattern. But what if I needed to make an adjustment on that? So I'm going to re-engage this after I select the straight stitch. You know what? Let's go grab, let's go out of here. Let's go back to our history. I'm going to grab a straight stitch. I'm going to pull down my smart feed so it's engaged. I have smart feed adjustment. So I can have it take more of a bite on the top or less of a bite on the top, depending on what I need it to do. Control, customizing the machine again. Here's my little arch. Zero is the default, which means the lower feed dogs and the upper feed dogs move together. I want to advance it. And if you can see on the screen here, that blue is now pulling that top layer, represents that top layer, pulling it more than the bottom layer. So I'm actually pulling more against the top layer with my smart feed system. I've not had to adjust it, but I haven't run across anything that I've been working on that I found a problem with. Simply engage the smart feed system at balanced movement. It works great, including putting on binding, working with some knits and things like that, even bulky knits. I found it to be very adequate, uh, very accommodating, and I didn't have to do any adjustments to it. But I might need to. You can also use this to help you gather fabric, though, also. So don't think it's just for helping fabric feed through the machine. I can actually make it gather fabric. I'm going to set this back to my zero point. I also have a dial here that I can use as well. So that's my smart feed system. This is available on the Kokochi, on our Sayaka, and on our Kire. This one gives you this nice interface. And so you can see exactly what the adjustments that you're doing on it. Any other questions so far? Um, oh, I was just going to say, we do have another question from one of our viewers. They were asking, can you add a stitch regulator to this machine and use it with a quilting frame? Okay, so we, that's a good question. And I'm going to say, yes, you can. Um, we are working on having a stitch regulator with this machine to go on a frame. You can already put the machine on a frame. We actually sell a tabletop frame. It's a four feet frame. This machine can drop onto the, uh, to the, uh, the carriage with no problem. And you can either use the speed control without the foot pedal, or you can use the foot pedal uh, until, the, until the stitch regulator is actually fully active and available for this machine. I will tell you that it's nice to have 12 inches of throat space to put on that frame as opposed to having a smaller machine that only has seven and five eighths or maybe an eight inch throat space because these 12 inches of throat space here gives me extra four inches that I can actually use in doing my quilt pattern. And that takes me to another thing I'm gonna talk about also, quilting, quilting feet, free motion. You bought a machine, you wanna do free motion. What's the next thing you're gonna think about? I need to buy a foot. This machine comes with a free motion quilting foot as it comes with a good assortment of feet. Hopefully it'll show up in our video here. But the really nice thing is my quilting foot. Let's see if I can make this visible for us. It's clear plastic. Come forward with it. Yeah. It's clear plastic. This is a high shank machine and look, it's flat on the back. So I can use this for ruler work. I don't have to go buy another foot to do ruler work. So I get my free motion quilting foot with the machine and it's good for ruler work. That's a nice feature right there for those that want to experience ruler work. Don't want to go spend 30 or $40 on additional foot. This machine already comes with it. I can do my regular free motion quilting. 
I want to try ruler work, but I don't feel like I want to make that extra investment. I don't need to with the Coco Chi. The foot comes with the machine already. Straight stitch plate is another one of those convenient features. You can see here, feed dogs are different. Because when we convert our machine, we actually change our feed dogs out. These feed dogs are like the feed dogs on our TL series machines. Close set to the needle, opening very close, so you can have better control with tighter clearances because the needle is not a zigzag opening. The needle and the feed dogs are much closer to each other. Now you wanna know how do I change this? Use my screwdriver to pop the plate off, my screwdriver to pop out the feed dogs, drop these in place, snap them down, put my plate on, and it's really very simple. No screws to keep up with. I'm only using the screwdriver to pry up the plate. So it's a very easy, convenient way. Oh, also, remember the machine's smarter than I am? If I put the straight stitch feed dogs, the straight stitch plate on, the machine is going to limit what stitch patterns I can select. So I can't make a mistake. And yes, you can still use the smart feed system when you have the straight stitch plate on. So there's some big pluses in going to the straight stitch mode. All right. So we've talked about that. We've talked about this, that, all sorts of things. But we really haven't touched on much about the machine itself except for some of the features and some of the accessories. So I'm going to talk about some accessories that come with the machine. A lot of people like to have accessories that make sewing on the machine easier, faster, a little bit more fun, a little bit more friendly. One of the features you'll see mounted on my machine here is a laser light. I'm going to hold my finger here so you can see it's a green crosshair laser. I really like this feature. I was kind of hesitant at first. I thought, green? It's not going to show up on the fabrics. Well, I was wrong. I tested it on all sorts of green fabrics, red fabrics, black fabrics. The green laser light showed up just great. And I can adjust it left to right. So if I want to use it for tracking on a previous stitch, I can turn the knob here and move it left to right. It's got a cable that runs around to the machine because it pulls power from the machine. Well, it pulls power from the machine. So there's got to be some connection to the machine. There is. On this side over here, we have a USB port. That USB port provides power for my attachment, but in a pinch, I can plug my phone in and charge my phone. So now I've got a phone charger as well built into my machine. So that's a very nice feature to have is this laser. I can align it so my finger you can see here. The crosshair is that green light on it. I can adjust it. I can take it off. It's a very nice feature to have for using it as a guide. Doesn't bother anything, but like many people have asked, it's green, and we're mostly used to seeing red line lasers. The crosshair is very handy, I find, it to use, especially when I'm doing some small piecing work or doing paper piecing, and I need to accent or highlight that line that I'm supposed to be stitching on. So... That's our laser. It attaches to, a, uh, attaches to the mount on the side. By the way, this mount over here also will hold a magnifying glass. You know, as we get older, sometimes we want a little bit better visibility. Sometimes our glasses aren't quite strong enough, or maybe we were too lazy to go get our prescriptions changed. We do have optional magnifying glass that will magnify the sewing area. It mounts to the same mount and hangs in the way, and it pivots out of the way when you don't really need it. So you could actually put it on and leave it on the machine. It's a very nice feature to have as well. Controlling the machine, remember we talked about our foot control, we have start stop button, we have reverse, lock, stitch, we have all the basic buttons that you would use in a regular sewing machine, except for the fact that they give us control. For example, I'm sewing along and I want to stop at the end of a pattern. I'm sewing one of my decorative patterns and I want it to stop at the end of the pattern. Use my lock stitch button, it'll complete the pattern and stop sewing with a lock stitch. If I tap my reverse, it's just gonna stop right there. So I could be stopping in the middle of the pattern, or I could be completing all the way to the end of the pattern, the choice is mine. That The machine gives me that control. That's a very nice feature to have. The other things that we talk about with controls on it are also in the screen, but sometimes we want to control features a little bit more conveniently where we work. We work at this end of the machine. This is where we do our settings. So we have a nice feature here that we can use our foot up and down button, or I can use the lift lever but I can also set it to be meant to be automatic. So I don't have to use the, the lift lever. I can use it to step on the pedal. It'll put the foot down for me and start sewing. Here I can drop my feed dogs. 
I can also use this to lock my screen. How many of you have little kids at home? You get away, you get up, you walk away from the machine. The first thing they want to do is come over and look at the machine and touch the stuff on the machine. Well, you were in the midst of sewing something. You have a pattern that you've altered, or maybe you've reset the stitch length of the needle position on a straight stitch. And the kids come over and they touch the screen. And now that's no longer where it was. And you sit down and you start sewing and suddenly you realize that you've taken three inches of sewing and you're going to have to take that out because the kids played with the machine. So we actually have a little lock feature here that allows you to lock the machine so that no changes can be done to the machine should you need to step away. Needle up, needle down control and thread cut control. Now remember, thread cut is here, but I can also set it in the pedal. But remember, I can also control it over here so I can make it automated as well. So those are just some of the nice features that are duplicated with control functions in different areas of the machine to give you access to using the machine simpler, faster, cleaner. Any questions? Well, Tim, you did a fantastic job. I told you everybody, Tim's, Tim's great. <laughs> Having a power outage did not hurt you at all. <laughs> no, a little warm, but you know, it's okay. Uh, I do <laughs> want to talk about one other thing. And this is a question that a lot of um, people are asking these days when they're buying a, buying a machine. I know you get this on the phone a lot is I buy this machine, but I want a bigger sewing surface. Does it come with an accessory tray or an, or an auxiliary tray or an extension table? We have a nice large sewing bed to start with, but our machines, most of our machines actually come with their own extension table, which is very nice and very handy. So when you're buying a Juki, most of our machines, I'll probably say 75 to 80% of our machines all come with that extension table. You don't have to worry about buying an extra one and they're matched to the machine. So you know, it's going to come with it. You know, it's going to work with it. You're not trying to piecemeal just to fill in that blank. So that's something that a lot of people ask when they're buying a machine because they're looking for that extra sewing space. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Um, and we will go right into the giveaways, actually, and then I'm going to cover some special pricing. Uh, but do you want to stick around for the giveaways? Sure, I can stick around. All right. Well, the first one that we are going to do is the number 39. We're going to, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do number 40. We're going to do the HCL 355Z machine. Um, let's go ahead and get the giveaway tool pulled up here. Fabulous. Okay, let's select that winner. I'll just take a moment. Did just you want to tell them about the little machine? <laughs> yep, for this one is the HCL 355Z, uh, the Cynthia Whippler. Congratulations. Yeah, we can show. Yeah, we've got it right here. If you want to pop it up? There we go. There we go. This is a great mechanical machine. We had showed a video of it yesterday, and I know people were pretty excited about it. We had several of these to give away. But Juki donated this HZL G220. So we thank you very much for donating that, Tim. It's our yeah, pleasure. The, the G Series is a great little machine. Even if you're just starting out, it will get you motivated to sew more. And then, of course, you're going to find out that, oh, the more I want to sew, the more features I want. So it gives you a good machine to start at that's easy enough to use and easy enough to understand. That is fabulous. That's the one that, have. <laughs> that's the one that you have. <laughs> we had talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, let's pick a winner for this lovely machine. All right. Let's see. This one is going to be number 39. So number 39 for the HCL G220, Carol Lemon, congratulations. Congratulations, Lucky you enjoy winners. that. Well, thank you again. Let's see, there we go. Okay, well, we appreciate you so much, Tim. Thank you so much for joining us. And you had so much to cover. I think we're gonna have to have you back again. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I've got more toys to play with. You know me, I like my toys. <laughs> Well, we, we really appreciate you, and we look forward to having you on in the future. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. Like I said, we love Tim. He is fabulous. He did such a great demonstration. Um, 
let's just talk really quickly about how to claim your prizes, guys. Just go to our link tree. There is a button there that says claim your um, claim your prize and fill out the form and submit that and we will get your prizes to you. So thank you again to Juki for donating the G220 and then we threw in this little guy. So also we want to just remind you um, in the comments we had seen quite a few people say, you know, this machine is fabulous. This one is fabulous, but I don't think I can afford it right now. Just remember there is the special event pricing. It's already on a great sale, but then if you call into customer service, they have an even better price right now. And also we do have financing. So please go ahead and give them a call and just see. You, you don't know until you ask um, and we can't display it on here. However, they can go over that special pricing with you. I think now's the time to get one of those machines. So I wanna go over the special pricing that we do have here. We've got the machine that he was just showing, the DX4000 QVP. It normally is an M MRS, I could never say MSRP, there we go. MSRP of 5,999 and our great sale is 3,999. But again, please call for that special pricing. Our phone number is the 888-824-1192. The special event pricing only lasts through Thursday. I saw that comment quite a few times as well. Just asking, when does this go through? It is through Thursday. The other machine that he had gone over is the MO2800 Serger. That one is an MSRP of $2,099, and that was on sale for $1,599. Once again, please give our customer service a call, and they will go over that fantastic pricing for you. Next, we have the cover stitch machine, and that is the MCS 1700 QVP. Wow, that thing is awesome. Such a fabulous cover stitch machine. That is an MSRP of $1,099. We have a great sale going on right now for $7.99. Also, special event pricing is available for that machine. I know I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Financing is an option. So right now, give us a call. You're going to have that special event pricing. And then you can also do the financing. And then he had briefly mentioned the MCS 1500 cover stitch machine. And that is... Um, similar to the 1700 QVP, however, there's a few more features on the 1700 QVP, but the 1500 is also fabulous. That one is um, an MSRP of $999 on sale for $649, but we included that in our special event pricing as well. Also, when he had mentioned that the threading can look a little bit intimidating on the cover stitch machines, it can look a little intimidating. He's not, he's right, but once you watch video on it, look at the manual, it's awesome. You just snap in the thread. He was trying to thread it too. I totally get what he was saying. The first time I looked at it, I'm like, hmm. But once you go through and watch the video, it's fabulous. So I did a YouTube video recently on the threading of the MCS 1500, and it's very similar to the 1700. So I hope that can help you out and won't intimidate you at all or prevent you from getting that machine because it really is very, very easy to thread. But our customer service team is standing by to help you with all of those questions that you have and go over that fabulous special event pricing. Again, this is only good until uh, the 22nd. So Thursday is the end of our event. Excuse me. Uh, well, what time do we have now? Okay, look at that. It's already past two. So we have our next guest already waiting for us, which I am very, very excited for this segment because... He's going to show my machine. It has a special place in my heart. <laughs> so I'm going to pull up Sam Fung with Janome. Hello, Sam. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Tricia. Well, thank you so much for joining us. As I just said, you're going to be showing the, the MC8200 QV, or QCP SE. That's my machine. Very excited to see that. So uh, I guess I will just let you take it away and show us what you've got. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Sam. I'm an educator here with Janome. Like Trisha was telling you, we're going to talk about the 8200 QCP. This is a sewing and quilting machine. 
Um, what's so lo lovely about this machine is it has an 11 inch throw space right here. So it's got plenty of room for your quilting and sewing needs. Not only that, this machine comes with 180 different decorative stitches, as you can see up here on the stitch chart. Um, this machine also comes with a bunch of different feet that you can see right here. We have our rolled hem foot, a zipper foot. You have two different open toe foot for doing your decorative stitches. Some of your uh, decorative stitch foot, people like using them for doing applique work. You also get what we call a free motion quilting foot. The nice thing about this free motion quilting foot is you get three different foot that will interchange onto the ankle itself. So once you have it on the machine, this ankle, you would adjust the screw to adjust the foot height of the machine so you can get it precisely where you want it. So the other two of you have, I've got an open toe on here. You also get one that is a, a closed toe and also an echo quilting. So you have three different free motion quilting foot included with the machine. Not only that, for those of you who likes doing free motion quilting the old fashioned way, using the hopping foot, we have this guy right here. This is a closed toe hopping foot. We don't call it the free motion foot anymore. We mainly call this a um, mending foot, okay? So this is another free motion foot that you can use for doing free motion quilting. No, not only that, you also get the button sewing foot for sewing on buttons. And my favorite foot for this machine is the AccuFeed foot. The AccuFeed foot is, it's most people know it as a um, walking foot. And what makes this foot different than a traditional normal walking foot that you may have for your machine is this is what we call a dual feed foot as opposed to a walking foot because this is actually feeding the fabric from the top and bottom. As you can see on the top of the hook, it hooks up, it hooks up to the back of the shaft of the machine. Turn it sideways so you can see it. This hook actually hooks up to the shaft of the machine. So as your needle is going up and down, it is in sync in real time using a motor pulling the feet through. So you get real live time. So you, it's not like where you have to attach it to the needle bar and it makes that loud clickly clacking sound that you would on a normal walking foot. You don't get that with that, with this particular foot. So that's why I love this foot. Um, not only that, you can also get the optional quarter inch foot, an open toe foot, and a stitch in a ditch is also available for this foot. And what's so lovely about this foot is the base of it just snaps on and off. So you don't have to take this off what you, once you have it on the machine. This machine also comes with a upgraded buttonhole maker. This buttonhole maker, not only just um, a regular buttonhole foot, you also have a stabilizer plate on here. And I'm gonna see if I can get this off to show you. This is a stabilizer plate and this is what we all know as a traditional buttonhole foot. What's so nice about the stabilizer plate is when you sandwich the fabric between the buttonhole and the stabilizer plate. So when you're making a buttonhole, let's say you're making a pocket hook and you have a, a, a valley in the center. What I mean by valley is the two sides where you fold the fabric over, you have a thick seam on both sides of the pocketbook or your seams and in the center is not as high. So that's a valley. And what happens is when you normally do a buttonhole, sometimes it bar tacks in the wrong position. That's because you have a high and a low point and the foot itself couldn't pull it through fast enough. By having a stabilizer plate, it's clamping both of your fabric together so you won't ever have any of those issues. As you can see, it comes with a quilting bar. The quilting bar guy can be attached to the dual feet foot or to the ankle of the foot. And as you can see, it comes with some other stuff like your stylist, a secondary spool pen, and some bobbins to get you started. Now, 
let's talk about the machine. The machine itself, as you can see up here on top, I have a slider bar for the speed of the machine right here. Also on the top, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, we have a dial for auto tension or if you're doing specialty thread, like a thicker thread or something like that, and you need to make more adjustment, you can take it off of auto tension and adjust this dial to the different settings that you need to adjust for whatever thread you're sewing with. Also on the top, we have a dial for your pressure foot pressure. So you can change your pressure foot pressure whenever you need it. I find that the default setting that they give me on the machine, I know you can't see it, there are some numbers on the dial itself. The default number usually is good enough, but sometimes if I'm doing something really sheer, like a chiffon or organza or something like that, I may need to adjust the foot pressure down a little bit more to help it pull through. Or if I'm doing something thick, let's say if I'm doing some type of polar fleece or something like that, which is kind of heavy and the nap has a tendency of getting crushed even on polar fleece, I may need to adjust that dial a little bit lower so I can adjust the pressure on the foot itself. Now on the machine itself, this machine comes with, has an automatic scissor key, which means that when I get through sewing, I press the scissors button, it will cut both threads for me, the top and bottom thread. The other cool thing, I have a needle up, needle down button here. So when I get through, I can drop my needle by just by touching a button, just by touching the button like this, as you can see, it dropped the needle, push it again, it brings it back up. I also have it puts a tie-off key right here to right, right underneath it. It's a bullseye. And what the tie-off key does is make a couple of small stitches in place and puts a little knot on your fabric for you. And what I love about this feature is I don't need to do a reverse stitch. And that way I won't have to accidentally stitch in the wrong position and get extra stitches where, where I don't want it. So that's a tie-off key. And we also have a start stop button, as you can see, like most of the Janome machines. And what's so nice about the start stop button is this allows me to run the machine using the start stop button. For example, I have a piece of fabric here. I'm going to slow down the machine a little bit. I have a straight stitch selected. So what I need to do is just simply prep, put down my pressure foot, hit the start button. And I can start doing my straight, standard straight stitch sewing. If I want to go faster, I can go faster, as you can see. Or I can slow it down. And when I'm done, I stop the machine, hit the scissors. It cuts both of my threads for me. Nice and easy and simple. Now, the other thing about I love about this machine is if you look up here, you zoom in a little bit so they can see this lovely throat plate we have on here. As you notice on this throat plate, we have no screws on our throat plate. And to change out the throat plate, I simply remove the table that's on my machine. Right here in the front, I have a little lever. I simply press down on the lever. I'm going to raise my foot up. There's for the extra high lift and it automatically locks into position. I can simply just raise up my throat plate and I can change it out sim simply like that. Right now, the throat plate you're looking at is the standard zigzag plate. They also give you a single hole plate. This is the single hole plate. You have a hole in the center, one in the left and in the right needle position. So depending on what you wanna do, you can use either position for doing that. So let's say to put the new plate in, I simply line up the two notches on the side of the machine and press down. And now I'm ready to do my straight stitch sewing. It's just that simple. Now this machine also comes with a quarter inch foot. So if I want to do a quarter inch piecing, I can still do it using a straight stitch needle plate. So I'm going to put the zigzag back one back on just to show you. I simply press down, lift up the plate, 
and I can just take the other plate and put it on here and snap it back into that position. Doesn't take but a second. Isn't that simple? Nice and easy. That's one of the nice feature on this machine. Now I have a nice big free arm on here. So if you're trying to do sleeves or anything small, a pocketbook, anything you want to get to the bottom of it to do some top stitching, having this nice long free arm here, I'm able to push that fabric into the free arm. If I want to top stitch another piece of fabric towards the bottom of my uh, tote bag or whatever I'm making, I can simply do that easily. The other nice feature about this machine is on the machine table itself, you have a drawer in the front with a special compartment to put your other accessories, your feet and your bobbins and things on the bottom. Also in the back, there's another compartment to put your other accessories in here. Or my favorite is you can hide your M&Ms in here. Don't you just love that? I was always wondering what I'm going to do with all these extra uh, storage spaces on my machine. So I always keep my emergency M&M back there. You know, we sometimes need to have our candy stash somewhere within a uh, hidden view away from the kids. Now, another nice thing about it on this um, table right here, they have a compartment for the, the plate. So I can put my stitch plate right here and having it on there, I can simply put it back on the machine and I'm ready to go. So if I need to take my machine somewhere to class or something, I know my second throat plate is there. I have the front drawer to keep my accessories. And not only that, on the top right here on the machine, there are compartments and they do have letters on them for the foot that you would mostly use all the time for what the manufacturers say you would use all the time. So there's a compartment for my standard foot, my ankle, my quilting, my uh, piecing foot, my free motion quilting foot can go up here also. As you can see, there's some slots right here available to put some of my other feet that is included with the machine. Not only that, if you can see right here on this particular machine, when you're winding a bobbin, we don't have to stick it through the hole in the bobbin. We simply put the bobbin in, wind the thread around it a couple of times, and we can cut the extra thread off on the plate on the flywheel underneath the bobbin. Not only that, when I get through winding, I simply pick up the bobbin, and there's another thread cutter back here to cut the bobbin thread. So I don't have to look for my scissors and cut off the bobbin thread. Okay, let's talk about the machine itself on the front of the machine. Every Anytime I change a stitch, as you can see up here, I have a straight stitch on the display window right now. On my straight stitch, I'm on stitch number one, and this is a straight stitch, and it's right here on the top. It's telling me that I need to use my A foot. Well, every time I change my stitch, the machine's going to give me a foot letter that is suggested for that foot. It's not gonna give you a foot that doesn't come with the machine, and this is suggested. Now, this one's saying you, I'm in stitch number zero, one, and the zero means the, the little zero that you see here, that's actually the opening of the throat, the throat plate in the, oh, it's an oval foot plate. Right here, it says 4.5, that means I'm on my center needle position. This particular machine is a nine millimeter machine, which means on nine millimeter, I have a 91 needle position on this machine. I have 45 needle position to the left, 45 needle position to the right. So if I need to move my needle, if I hit the plus key right here, you can see the numbers changing. And if you can see right here on the bottom, you can see the needle has moved over to the right. And where right now, it shows it being 9.0. That means all the way over to the right. If I needed to move it over to the left, I simply touch the minus key. You can see the numbers going down. And if you look, you can see the needle moving on the machine. Not only that, I don't know if you guys can hear this, 
but I'm not going to stop talking in a minute. I'm going to move the needle so you can hear it. Hear that little ticking sound? That sound is the new the needle moving one centimeter at a time to get our nine millimeter. The next one right here that looks like broken line, that is my stitch length. 2.4 is what the machine set at for your normal sewing. So if I need to change my stitch length, let's say I need a longer stitch. I simply touch the plus to make the stitch length longer. This is a very simple machine to use. Now, let's say I want to use a different stitch. On the top of the machine right here on the lid, you see we have different mode buttons. We have a mode one, mode two, Mode three is our letterings that comes with the machine. Mode four is some accent letterings. Mode five is some, I believe these are Russian alphabets. And mode six is our um, numbers and also letters that you would have that's in uppercase only. So these would be your nine millimeter width lettering. Okay, so right now, you notice on the front panel, we have a mode key. On the top displayed, I'm in mode one. So in mode one, it would give me all these stitches, stitches one through 93. If I go to mode two, by simply touching the mode key, right here on the screen, it says two. So I'm on mode two. Well, the first stitch note on mode two, stitch number one, like it's on here, that is my serpentine stitch. The serpentine stitch, the default stitch width is 5.0. So if I want to make it a little bit wider, I simply touch the, the plus key and I can adjust it up to nine millimeter width. And I can also make it a little bit longer. So let's go all the way up to 5.0. And I'm going to put a piece of fabric on and show you what the serpentine stitch looked like. Love this serpentine stitch. A lot of people like to use this stitch for putting their binding on. If you can't sew quite straight, you can use this stitch to put the binding on. Maybe not this wide or not this long, but that's our serpentine stitch, as you can see right here. Okay, so... Let's pick another stitch up here. Let's say I have all these different stitch and I want to do some, let's see what we have here, decorative stitches. Let's say stitch number 76 right here. So to get to 76, I'm already in mode two. I come up to my keypad, I touch number seven, six, and that's what this particular decorative stitch looks like. My machine is telling me the stitch is already at 9.0 width. The stitch length default is 2.5. So let me put this on and I'll show you what this stitch looks like. It doesn't take too long to make this stitch. And as you can see, the machine is doing a good job. This is 9 millimeter wide. So it's using the entire width of my pressure foot. Now, normally I would put the F foot on, but I don't have one right here right now. It's on the board, stuck to the board, so it's a little bit difficult to take it off. Okay, so when I get to close to the end of my stitch, I want to finish the pattern before it ties off. So I simply touch the tie off key the machine will automatically finish up the pattern and knot it off for me. So I don't cut off the design right in the middle of it. So when I'm done, I simply touch the scissor key and it just finished my pattern for me. And I'll just show you this. Isn't this lovely? This kind of, if I turn it this way, it reminds me of ocean waves, doesn't it? It came out of the machine like this. This is the beginning of the design. As you notice right here on the end, when it gets to the end, I push the tie off key, it finished that pattern and then put a little knot on my fabric for me. 
So that way I have a complete pattern is not just cut off in the middle somewhere. Now, isn't that simple? Nice and easy. Now let's look at lettering function. So get to my lettering. I hit mode. Now I'm, I'm in mode three. Well, every time I change the mode, it all will always go to the first stitch. For example, this is the letter number one. Well, let's say I want to spell the word genome. Well, the beginning of the J, the capital J, is number 20. So what I would do is come to machine, my machine and type in zero, 2, 0. There's my letter J, as you can see. And then what I would need to do is touch the M for memory. Okay? So that's my J. Now, when I want to put a, a lowercase a, I would come here and look. It's number 37 for the A for a lowercase. So I put 37. As you can see, that's my lowercase a. Put it in M for memory. And then I go to the letter N, which is number 50. And as you can see, the letters drop off. But as you can see, I have the A on here already. And the O is 51. And the M is number 49. And the last letter I need to do is the E, which is 41. And I put in memory. So now that I have program, I'm going to very quickly stitch this out so you can see what it looks like. Now we we're able to do uppercase and lowercase lettering on this machine just simply like that. If you look on the screen, the letter that's being stitched is highlighted by the cursor. Okay. And when it finishes the letter, it will automatically stop. I simply touch the scissors. And there's my letter to know me. Isn't that nice? Can you guys, guys see that? That's my lettering. Now, one more thing I want to point out about this machine is the cover on this machine actually do open so you can see the inside of the machine. Not only that, this particular machine, we have a built-in needle threader. Okay? One more thing I want to show you about this machine. You saw me stitching out on a regular piece of denim fabric. But what I want to show you is on this particular machine, we can go from something very heavy to something really light with no problems at all. Right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six layers of denim right here. This is six layer denim. I'm just using my standard foot. I'm using the zigzag plate that is on the machine. This is about as thick as I can you know, sew through because I can't get anything in here higher than this or else I won't be able to drop the feet down. Because I'm stitching on something thick, I'm going to lengthen my stitch length. I'm going to hit start. I'm on a straight stitch. And look how easy that machine pulled that denim through the machine. Not only that, I'm going to go from a piece of denim to a piece of organza. This is one layer of organza. To two layers of faux leather to a piece of tool. Two layers of cork fabric. And what I'm going to stop a minute. And then what I'm going to show you is this. I know we all make handbags, and this is cork fabric. I'm going to add a piece of webbing to it. Okay. This is just like if you were making a tote bag, and you need to sew through that. I want to show you our machine doesn't have any issues sewing through anything thick. So I'm going to hit start again. I'm sewing through that, and from there, I'm going to just stick a piece of knit right here. Stop it, cut the thread, and as you can see, I'm using the zigzag foot. 
the zigzag plate, a straight stitch on the machine. We went from six layers of denim to organza to uh, faux leather, tulle, cork fabric, cork fabric with webbing, and a piece of knit. And look, I even stitched between the fabric. As you can see, the machine didn't pull down the organza or the tool. And I was able to stitch in the midair without anything jamming up, without changing my stitch or anything like that. So let me say this, our, this particular machine is great for sewing anything like that. And I'm just going to leave it right here because I have another machine to show you, which is sitting here right here next to me. And this is the Sewist 780DC. Okay, the Sewist 780DC is an 80 stitch sewing machine only. Okay, the machine weighs about 12 to 14 pounds, which is a great second machine or a companion machine for the 8200. So if you have the big 8200 at home and you need to take something to a quilt class and you don't want to take this big heavy machine with you, this is the perfect travel machine or a machine to use at home if this is your first machine or you need to upgrade to a machine. The price point on it is a wonderful price point. I'll let Trish tell you about that at the end of the video. But first, let me point out all the, the feet that comes with it. You have a zipper foot. You have a decorative stitch foot. You have a blind hem foot for doing blind hem if you're a garment maker. You have an overcast foot with a brush. And you have a regular overcast foot. You have a buttonhole foot. And you have a secondary spool pin. And also a quilting bar guy and some other you know, regular accessories that comes with your machine. Now for this machine, you have some of the big features I just showed you. You have a sliding bar guy right here for your speed control. You have, you still have your tie off key, your needle up, needle down, your scissors function. You have a reverse key right here, just like the big machine and a start, start stop button. So you have all the features of the, the 8200 I just showed you. Up here is your dial. That is for your pressure foot. Right here is your tension control. Although it is um, pretty, pretty much automatic uh, thread tension, I haven't had any issue using uh, between a 40, 50 weight thread, 60 weight thread, all different brands. The machine is not fussy at all. Either one of them are fussy at all. You do have a free arm on this machine. So this comes off. You do have a free arm. There is a storage compartment on the front. So you can put the accessories that come with the machine to take with you to class. Now on this machine, you do have a, two screws here to change out the throat plate. Now once you take the table off, this machine table off, this particular machine does come with an extension table for it. The extension table have legs in the back and the legs are adjustable down here so you can adjust the height of the legs. So if you were going to take this to class, you will simply put the table on like so. And you have a nice extension table right here to use. So that's one thing. So that's kind of like a give and take between this one and the big machine. The big machine had a pop-up needle plate. But if you were taking it this to class, you wouldn't necessarily be changing your throat plate out all the time anyways. And you put this, have this cover. Not only that, this machine also comes with a hard shell cover. So... When you're not using the machine, the cover can go over it. You simply take this off. The plate comes over. The, the lid comes over it. And I can't get all the way down because of the plug. And what I wanted to show you was the opening on the top allows the handle 
so you can carry the machine. I couldn't get this all the way down because of the plug on the side of the machine. But it does come with the hard shell case cover on this machine. The other nice thing about this machine is it does open on the side. So this machine does open on the side. That's one thing we find that a lot of us like to be able to see inside the machine, especially when something happens and you get a thread break. And sometimes when the side don't open, we can't get up into here to get the thread out. So it's a nice thing to have that. Now, another thing I want to point out to you is on this machine or on any Janome machine, if it does not come with a optic magnifier, okay, if your machine has, you know, opens up and you see this little black slot right here on the side of the cover, that means that particular machine can use our optic magnifier. The magnifier comes in three strength all together. You get a 20, 40, and 60 magnification. So once you, it just sticks in right here, you close the cover, the magnifier just magnification is just right here in the front. So that way when you don't need it, you can just swing it out of position. And again, this is an, op uh, this is an optional purchase. This machine itself is a seven millimeter machine. So, which means it has um, a seven millimeter width as opposed to a nine millimeter that we talked about earlier. On the side of the machine, right now we have our 20 stitch on the front. To see the next 20 stitch, you have number 20 starting with a buttonhole all the way to the serpentine stitch, which is stitch 50 right here. As you can see, it also shows you what foot to use next to your stitch. And you see stitch 51 to 80, it's right here on the panel. Now, this is a very easy machine to use. Right here, the, these two arrow is how we would move to find a particular stitch. So if I want to stitch past stitch number 20, what I would do is come over here and just hold it down. And as you can see, the letters are changed, the numbers are changing. Right now that's stitch 50. So that would be the serpentine stitch right here. As you can see, the default width of the serpentine stitch is 5.0 and the stitch length is 2.0. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you with this, what this machine looks like for doing sewing. And again, I'm using the start stop button, so I don't have to use. Now just like the big machine, as you can see, this machine stitched just as nice as the other one. And I kept to the end, I cut these the scissors to cut it. It cut both of my thread. Lift up, and there's my serpentine stitch. Now this is the default setting on the machine. So let's look at another stitch on here. This time I'll show you no, stitch number 52. Stitch number 52, now I'm on 50, so I simply just go, whoops, I passed it. I went to 53. So if I want to go back, I just simply touch the arrow back. I'm back number 52. My stitch width right here on this particular design is 5.0. Stitch length is 2.5. So if I want to change it, all I simply do is hit the plus. Now this is 6.0. I'm going to make a 6.5. But as you notice, the machine is stopping me from making the stitch any um, longer. You hear that little beep? That means the, the, what the machine does is, the factory did was, they safeguard the stitch. That means is if I had made this stitch bigger, it would obscure the stitch. So what they had a default put in, so it won't allow me to do that. So I'm simply put that in, I'm gonna hit the start stop button, and let it do its thing. And just like the just like the previous machine, when I 
Well, to finish out the pattern, I'm going to simply touch the tie off key. And it just finished the, pop, the, the stitch, did a little tie off. I'm going to hit the scissors, raise it up. Now, there's my particular stitch. Isn't this a nice stitch? Not only that, on this machine, I do have a built in needle threader right here. It's a one handed needle threader. You can also do free motion quilting with this uh, machine. Although it doesn't come with a non hopping foot, you can get one for free motion quilting. On the back of the machine, right here, this is where we would drop our feed dogs for doing free motion quilting. So it's built into the back of the machine for free motion quilting right here. So this is a very nice, um, nice machine for doing stuff to taking to class. Uh, like I said, to take to class, it's only like 12 to 14 pounds. It makes it a whole lot easier. And just like this machine, this particular one, just because we went down on the size of this machine, you are not sacrificing the stitch quality or the motor on this machine. This has a full size motor, which means because my foot is only so high, I won't be able to stitch four layers. I mean, six layers of denim, but I can stitch four layers of denim. This is four layers of denim. I have my standard foot on here. I'm going to put the denim in, lower the foot. I'm going to hit the start stop button. Oops. Now I'm going to stop in a minute. You see what happened? I'm stitching that decorative stitch because I went through and accidentally didn't change it back to zero. But as you notice, this machine didn't have any problems handling that particular stitch. I'll stitch a little bit more so you can see it. Okay. It's doing the decorative stitch. No problem at all. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to change it to my straight stitch. I'm going to take the stitch up, make it a little bit longer. Make it about a 4.0 stitch. And I'm stitching on some denim right now. And then from that, I'm going to show you. I'm going to slow this down a bit. Okay, I'm doing a straight stitch now. Now I'm adding a piece of tool. From the tool, I'm putting a piece of stretch knit. And this is two layers of marina vinyl and two layers of satin fabric. I'll come to the end and stop. Cut it. As you can see, there's my decorative stitch that I did by accident before I changed it to a straight stitch. You look at the back. The tension is perfect, whether I'm doing straight stitching or decorative stitch. That from there to a piece of tool, and this is a piece of stretch knit. I'm using a size 14 needle. How would you like to, how would you like to uh, stitch this? And this is a piece of stretch knit. Okay, this is two layers of marina vinyl. This is two layers of satin fabric. As you can see, I have perfect tension on this machine. I did not have to adjust anything, just like the big machine. I didn't have to do any of that on this particular machine. Like I said, just because this is a smaller machine, we're not sacrificing the stitch quality you get just like the 8200. QPC. Okay. Now I have about 10 minutes. Is there any questions anybody would like to ask on either machine? Trish, are you there? I'm here. <laughs> yes, me, we do anyone? have. Go ahead. I was going to say, we do have some wonderful pricing on these machines. Okay. Would you like to tell them about it? Sure. Uh, let me do an overlay here. I want to go ahead and show you first on the 780 DC. That one normally um, has an MR MSRP of 1099 and our 
Sale price right now is $7.59, but that is not the special event pricing. So make sure to give our customer service a call and they will go over the So Creative Live special event pricing. It's going to be even better than what's displayed on this overlay. And we've got the Janome, my machine, the MC8200 QCPSE. That normally has an MSRP of the 3,499. Sale price of 2,199. But again, give us a call. We have some fantastic, fantastic pricing on that machine. Now, I just wanted to throw a couple of things in regarding that model. Like it's... <laughs> I keep saying it has a special place in my heart, but when you were showing the needle plate just popping off and being able to put that straight stitch plate on, I don't know how many times that has saved my project because there have been times where I'll be like, oh, it's just a quick little project. I don't need to switch out to my straight stitch plate. You know, it's going to work fine. <laughs> and I didn't want to take needles or the screws out of my needle plate and all that. So when I got this machine, because it's so quick to just pop off that needle plate, put the straight stitch plate in, I have saved my projects because the fabric doesn't get sucked into the needle plate and it just is such a wonderful feature. And I just talk it up because I can't believe how much I love it. <laughs> the other thing that I had heard people or had seen people mention, excuse me, is the fact that it sounds so nice. It hums. It is such a beautiful sounding machine. It is so quiet and it has a beautiful stitch. So I just wanted to say a couple things about that one. Also, Sam had mentioned that the 780DC is perfect for bringing to class. I will tell you, if you want to bring the MC8200 QCPSE, we do also offer some wheeled sewing machine totes. So if you don't want to separate yourself from your machine, you can always bring it along too. <laughs> but both models are absolutely wonderful. Yes, they are, Trish. You have some great pricing on these two machines. We sure do. And we've been mentioning it before, but we have financing available. So if you're looking at getting something for Christmas and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I can go from the 780DC bumping up to that MC8200, Now's the time to do it between that special event pricing and the fact that we are offering affordable financing. Now is the time to, to do it. But are you going to stick around for the giveaway, Sam? Sure. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get a screen pulled up. Brian, do you mind pulling up a screen? There we go. So they have donated the 1522 PG Anniversary Edition. This is a great mechanical machine. It's going to be perfect for um, maybe, I shouldn't say child, because this is a great mechanical machine for anybody. Plus, it's an adorable color. So it values at $349, and we are going to move forward and give that one away today. All right. Let's click our giveaway. Here we go. Who's it going to be your lucky winner? All right, Marsha, congratulations, Marsha. What number is that, Brian? That is number 41. All right, number 41. When you go to claim your prize, all you have to do is click the, the link tree in the description, click claim your prize, and fill out that form and put that number in. And we'll go over all congratulations, Marsha. Enjoy your new machine. <laughs> well, thank you again, Sam. We really appreciate you. You're going to be joining us tomorrow to show us a couple of Elna machines as well, correct? Yes. All right. Well, we are excited for that. You're going to be showing the Elna 780 Plus and the 720 Pro. So we will see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a wonderful day. All right. So we have our next segment coming up. It is going to be with Michelle Muska from Aliso. So um, if you are, are we ready, Brian? We are ready. You ready? All right. Is Michelle ready? Is Michelle ready? <laughs> All right, Michelle. How are you today? 
I do have a question for you that I must ask. Let, let me try to, I was trying to adjust my lighting and it, so all of a sudden it was great. And then all of a sudden it started raining here. So it's all oh. <laughs> so, a little sun. Anyway. So your... I have a question that I have to ask. Sure. Is it Aliso or is it Aliso? It's Aliso. Aliso, so like, okay. It's like O-L-E-E, -E, you know, like. Oh, Lee, so yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I have to say, I feel really bad if someone says it wrong and they've been saying it wrong for years and they use it. I, I don't, I don't want to correct them because I feel like, oh, they're gonna feel so bad. But <laughs> you, you know can correct me because I was, I'm one of those people that have been saying it wrong all this That's time, and I'm like, I, I have to ask her. <laughs> uh, we have a very distinctive iron, so you know, if you just say the iron that pops up, people will usually know. <laughs> About, so it's okay. All right. Well, that sounds lovely. I'm excited to hear more about them. I'm just going to let you take it away. All right. Great. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks to Trisha and Brian, who is behind the scene um, making everything work. So um, as I was saying, all of a sudden I had the perfect lighting. And of course, we have a storm. I'm coming to you from North Central Connecticut in New England, but our company, let me tell you a little bit about our company first. We're located in San Francisco and our founder and owner is um, Asan Alipur. And we are still a small, very small family owned business. And our team only consists of a couple of handfuls of people around the world. So we are like a family where we call ourselves Olysians. Anyways, Asan had an assignment for his graduate degree at Stanford, and it was to make a common day. I don't know if you can hear, but it is pouring out. Um, it's to make a common household object, um, so, you know, easier, um, surprising, delightful, something, you know, that you could, um, how do you change that up? And he would watch his mom and his auntie making quilts and garments, and they were always lifting this heavy iron up. So, you know, um, a full-size iron is about five and a half pounds. And most of us sewists, um, whether we're sewing garments or quilts, most of us like a heavy iron when we're pressing. So he was thinking, well, that's not very ergonomic. So his project, his graduate project was to change it up. And that's what he came up with. And then he made it into a business. And so here we are. Oh, I think it's about 16, 17 years later. I am um, a maker myself. I'm a hand stitcher. I'm a quilter. I love everything fibers. So uh, I use, I've been using my Aliso, um, my original Aliso iron for about 12 years. And I worked for Simplicity for about 16 years. And I've been with Aliso for about three years. I'm the director of content and community. And I have to say, I just love being engaged with our customers and our designers and followers because they always come up with um, some really unusual um, uh, projects that they use the irons with. So this is how you would receive the smart iron right here in the gift box. And I'll just run through, before I show you some of the projects, I'm going to run through some of the uh, basic. Let me see here. I think that might work. All right. Sorry for the adjusting. So anyways, this is the um, brand, well, it's brand new for since last year, the TG1600 Pro Plus Iron. Its features, of course, um, are iconic, uh, I touch smart iron handle. So it has sensors along the top. We've actually made this one, um, our updated version, a little bit more hand sensitive. So it really is great moving up and down. You never have to pick it up. Besides being ergonomic, it's also a safety feature. You could bump your ironing board and because it's a lower center of gravity, you could tip it 30, 35% at degrees and um it wouldn't it wouldn't fall off your ironing board because it has these little feet and as i said the lower center of gravity it has a 12 foot cord which is really great for most of us in our studios and it has a swivel 360 degree swivel knob 
for the chord, which is really great if you're a righty or a lefty. Um, we have, so how do you make a smart iron smarter? How do you up its IQ? Well, some of the new features that we put in there did just that. Our mini iron has the ceramic flow um, diamond coated sole plate. And this one does as well. I don't know if you can kind of see that. It's a little shimmery and sparkly. And uh, we even made it more even heat distribution. And um, it has very powerful steam uh, capability. It has continuous steam while it's down. And you can also do vertical steam bursts, which I really like if I'm doing my clothes or a big piece of fabric that I don't really want to press or I don't have room for it. My studio is really pretty small. So, um, you know, I, I take advantage of when I can of uh, the mini iron as well, which I'll show you um, next after this. So it's also very easy cleanup. You cool the iron down. You use a hot um, iron cleaner like Faultless, and it should, you know, really clean right up. It has a three-year warranty. Our mini iron as well as our uh, Pro Plus um, all have a three-year warranty. And as you can see, I'm holding the handle, and you can see the little... The little the feet pop out. So it has this great 12.7 ounce water tank and it's a side fill. So let me show that to you. Oh, you know, I tipped over my water. <laughs> so, whoops. So um, here's the fill and I already have some in there. So you would just put it right in the side. It has a nice little tip and you close that up. And it also has an anti-calc um, cartridge in the water tank that you'd never have to replace. And it helps if you have hard water. So our motto is if you can drink the water, so can your Aliso iron. Um, we do not use distilled water in our irons. The minerals in regular tap water help the engineering of the iron in the inner workings uh, work a little bit better. They rely on those minerals. So if you have really bad water, really hard water, or you don't like the taste of it and you don't drink it yourself, then I would suggest inexpensive, um, you know, bottled water would be great. So it has, uh, you know, the typical three dials. This is the, oh. <laughs> I'm getting all steamy glasses because I have the continuous steam on. So you can see how great that works. I, you have the synthetic, you have the wool and silk, and then you also have the linen and cotton. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that. And it has great vertical steam, as I mentioned. It has a 30 minute auto shut off. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because it's actually getting really hot in here. <laughs> it has the spray, the steam burst like this, and then it has your water spray that comes out right in front. So I think that's the basic features. Um, if you go to our website, um, www.oliso.com, you'll be able to see um, all the different choices. Now, we have four colors that come in the... Um, big iron and let me I'm limited for space so I'm gonna to have to reach so <laughs> so we have the orchid which I think is really beautiful I love that and you can see the mini matches that one too and we have um, I'll show you the pink and here's the pink and we do have a mini to match that as well and then we also have the turquoise, which I won't pull that out, but here's the turquoise color right here, which um, is fairly new. Our orchid and turquoise are new. And they, um, I think the turquoise is probably the biggest, the hottest color right now. No pun intended. But the um, yellow aliso is our iconic um, color. So. Yes, we are, um, oh, we may or may not be giving one out. Yes, we will be giving out a, a mini Aliso iron today. So anyways, let me, um, I can show you a few other things too that this does, um, especially if you're a garment sewist, it has a detailer tip. Now the detailer tip is really great to get into um, like a double layer. So here is, for instance, a 
um, cuff. So, or if you're just pressing, you know, a pair of pants that has a cuff. So you can see, I hope you can see this okay. You can see that get right inside underneath the cuff. And then you can also get into your pockets. Now, most irons do have a detailer tip, and sometimes, you know, people don't even realize that they have it on their iron. Ours happens to be a very generous um, two inches, and so you can see how you can get right inside of your pocket as well. So if you're a garment sewist, one of the other things that I use on a very lowest setting dry iron is I iron my pattern pieces. So it's very important to get a really good fit. If you take out your pattern pieces, you can cut them out in, you know, with a little bit of um, space around it and iron all your pieces. That way, when you put them on your fabric and you pin them and cut them out, you will get per a perfect sizing according to your pattern. So I mostly do um, totes and quilts and things like that, but I do occasionally use um, patterns and I'm going to be making this pretty soon out of some K facet fabric to celebrate his 85th birthday. So that's kind of fun. So um, I think probably the most fun I have with making with um, our irons is really with the mini iron. So, um, and I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Um, when I first came on board and they sent me the mini iron, I was a little resistant and I was like, I, I love my Aliso. I love how it steams. I love everything about it. Um, and, but you know, I came to work for Aliso, so I had to try the, the mini iron. And now I have to tell you, I only bring my iron, my big iron out if I'm using like heavy steam or I'm making garments or I'm sewing my, um, or I'm pressing my larger uh, quilts, quilt projects, for, but I'm a crafter mostly. So I really rely on my mini iron a lot. So um, I turned it on. So hopefully it will be heated up in a few minutes. So let me just run through the features and benefits, and then I'll show you some of the things that I like to do with the mini iron. So this also has the diamond coated ceramic sole plate which is easy glide and easy cleanup. I use a lot of fusibles. So if I ever get anything on the base of my sole plate, it's really easy cleanup with just when it's cool, rubbing it off with a soft cloth. Um, and it's just, I just love it. It's so simple. This does have steam burst capabilities and you squeeze these two little buttons in when they're lit, lit up. And then here is your water well. I mean, it's so it has the cute factor too, doesn't it? So the water well takes about a quarter of a cup of water. And as the big iron, you only use tap water or um, inexpensive drinking water. It has a swivel cord right or left. And it has a little window to tell you the water. It has the three settings like it does, just like on the Pro Plus iron. And then it also has a 120 and 240 voltage switch. So if you switch that to 240 and you're traveling, you will be able to use that, say, in Canada and a few other countries. Otherwise, you would need a transformer um, converter. So it has a nice tip. And then it also comes with this little trivet, which is a very integral part of using the irons. So I'll show you on this one. So usually when you see us using our irons, we have it up like this and you can actually use this and you can hang it on your pegboard you can hang it on your wall you can hang it on the side of your table with a little hook it weighs about two pounds and it works really great i have all the color i'm lucky i have all the colors up since i work for lisa i have all the colors so i can match all the colors to my projects so it's snug in here it's made out of medical grade silicone and it gets very very hot because one of the things that our crafters ask for is a really hot iron and it has no auto shut off. So you just really need to, you know, be aware and take care of your irons and your um, electricity. <laughs> so with any iron or any heat producing um, product, or, you know, appliance, besides turning it off, 
I always unplug it. It's something that we suggest at Aliso, and I know um, the fire department does as well. So, okay, so here's your trivet, as we call it. You peel it off. It has those little snuggy things right there, and you turn it over, and you we, and that's called the resting side. So when it's hot, it has something to sit on but you still need to put that on an insulated surface. So I have a wool pressing pad here on top of my uh, portable table. So please do not ever put this on top of your cutting mat. You know how important cutting mats are and how they need to be flat and you don't want it to warp. Um, even uh, you don't even want to put a wool mat on top of a cutting board and then place your iron because the heat will come right through and warp that. So we are stressing that this is a very hot iron. It, it gets as hot. This is um, uh, 1000 watts and this is 1800 watts, which is the highest wattage you can have for a household iron. And the reason these this gets as hot is because it has two heater um, elements in the heat box. So um, it gets super hot. So I'm just warning you, but it's one of it's one of its best features as well. So um, I always use this, my, my favorite product to use with any of my projects is um, Thermal Web's Heat and Bond. So you will see that in, a lot on our um, Instagram account. And I hope that you'll all follow us. We're Aliso Home on Instagram and Aliso on Facebook. So if you follow us on Instagram, we have um, a lot of sponsored quilt alongs and sew alongs with our partners, uh, giveaways. So you'll want to really check in and, and um, maybe take advantage of some of those. And if you already have an Aliso, you could um, give it, if you win, you could give it to a friend. So uh, some of the things that I really like, I'm I have a whole bunch of projects here and I'll kind of just go through uh, some of them and the advantage of which irons I like to use. So curves, um, I don't know if you know um, Jen Carlton Bailey. She has a really great um, curve set, curvelet, like a drunkard's path. And so, you know, when I am using the big drunkard's path, uh, the big template, of course, I'll be, I would be using my large iron. But we did a, a quilt along, um, Leslie Tucker Jennison and myself, we have a Wednesday chat um, every Wednesday afternoon on our uh, personal Instagram accounts. Uh, we also do giveaways on there. So if you would ever like to, you know, join us, please stop in. It's five o'clock Eastern for Central Time. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, we'll be interviewing me and Amy Berrickman. And it will be at five central time because I am flying out to the Missouri star quilt birthday bash. I have a 6 AM flight. So <laughs> anyways, um, so please join us. Uh, I, I hope that you'll join us. So one of our very first um, quilt alongs was with Jen's itty bitty templates. So if you can believe this, this is how big, it was one and a half inches. And this is how big the, uh, and I sewed them all by hand. Some of our um, participants actually sewed them on the machine, but I, I kind of couldn't manage that. Anyways, look at how small it is. So one of the things um, that I love about the mini iron, especially with small projects, is that you can actually see what you're doing because the large iron would completely cover this itty bitty little block. So, and depending which way you want your seam to go, your curve, you can do that and you can actually see what you're doing. <laughs> so, yeah, this was really um, a really fun project. So maybe we'll have to do another one. I lost my little my little piece down there, but you'll get the idea. So I love English paper piecing, and um, 
usually the pieces for English paper piecing are also rather small, you know, when you even when you sew them together and then you have to take the papers out. But that's the other advantage of using a, um, a mini iron is you really can see what you're doing. It's like great. Take, uh, like to take advantage of that. And then um, I don't know if you know um, what apple pops are, but um, I have, I love circles. And so I made a circle table runner. Um, I did not press this before, <laughs> before I came on, I'm sorry. So I should probably do that now while I'm talking to you because I'm sure we have done. So this is a table runner and the instructions are on our blog um, at aliso.com. So if you'd like to know how to make this, it's right there. It's made out of Robert Kaufman, um, the Essex linen, which I love to work with. And to make the circles, which, you know, are really hard that I applicate on to the squares, I used these apple pops. So what they that did for me is I used a pressing spray. I don't put water in my little um, irons. Some people don't put water in any of their irons. They only use a pressing spray. I happen to like the flatter by soak. So um, you put the fabric in, you press the circles together, and then with the pressing spray, you know, kind of just do it a little bit so it dries and it will it will get hot and then you pop it out and you'll have a perfect little circle. And what's really fun about um, using these little um, these little metal circles. You can really have fun doing different motifs. So you can fussy cut them and things like that. So I think that that's a really fun, a little fun project. I also usually when I'm doing that, I use my um, pressing board. So I don't know if you have one, but I think that they're really great to get your um, seams and your stitches set into your seams. So you might uh, want to try that. And then one of the other things that I really, um, really rely on my mini iron with is my um, bias tape uh, tool. So just kind of, so it's like really great. So you can just hold it and kind of move it along like this. My husband just came in, so <laughs> he's going to be really quiet. So I just think that it's such an advantage. I put this right next to my sewing machine on my sewing table, and it's such an advantage to have that right there with you. Um, and then my big iron is on my um, surface. Either it's on my ironing board or I have a table, a work table that's completely covered in a wool mat, like four feet long. So um, I'll leave that there because we really should get up and down a little bit from our sewing machine. So, um, but this is like really great, especially, you know, pressing is so important. Sew a seam, press, press a seam. So when you're doing a small project or a project with a lot of pieces and you like, especially like foundation paper piecing. Uh, so, which I actually find a little bit hard to do. <laughs> so, um, but I do have some friends that do, you know, beautiful foundation paper piecing. Uh, Varushka from Pride and Joy, you know, and she even tried to help me, but it's just, doesn't come natural to me for some reason, but having the mini iron right next to you while you have to press every single piece that you fold over, it's, it's just such a time saver for you. And it's so lightweight. So, you know, it's ergonomic as well. So some of the things that um, 
I love, I just love to do working with my um, heat and bond, my, my adhesive, fusible adhesive. I'm sure you all know what that is. So it's paper on one side and you see this fusible um, substance on the, on the other. Oh, looks like all of a sudden something happened and I got dark. <laughs> so um, I really enjoy like finding unusual fabrics, either putting this on the back and fussy cutting them and uh, making patches for shirts and jeans and tote bags. You know, look at how cute like this little print is for um, Halloween. I mean, you could cut one of those out and uh, fuse it right onto a canvas bag for trick or treating. And then I started working on this shirt here. So you can see, I had put um, heat and bond on the back of some really cute fabric, some elephants with some um, flowers. And I put that right on the shirt. It's just a shirt from the Goodwill and plaid is really um, trending now. So that was really fun. Sometimes I buy the old shirts and you know cut them up to do other things with them, make flowers and things. So I put the heat and bond, this is a, a fat quarter, and the heat and bond was really the perfect size. I ironed it on onto the back and I left the paper backing right on there. So it was easy, it's easy to cut out. So I did that first. And then here I have one right here. And I just started cutting that out. course the tail gets a little a little fussy but you can see I did that right here and then I do the what I call the crack and peel method so I crack it like this and then I peel that off and so I have my own iron-on applique that I made out of my fabric so I would just take my and I did some flowers, so let me like, crack and peel these. So I don't know about all of you, but I really, I make something every single day. I use my irons every single day, but you know, even with my embroidery, my mini fits right inside my embroidery hoop if I want to. Uh, press it from the back side. And then I just cut out heart from one of my fabrics. And then I would just, let's see, move that over a little bit. So I have it all, all of this on, let's see, here's the pocket. I have it all on this side right here. Can I, <laughs> there we go. So first of all, I always heat up the surface of my garment or my fabric that I'm going to be putting any kind of um, fusible adhesive on kind of prepares the fabric to accept it. And then I'll arrange my some of my pieces here. And then I'll press. So you could press maybe five, six seconds, and then move it a little bit. And you can always go in and test it. If you're afraid to touch it with your fingers because the fusible does make it hot, you could test it with some, you know, shears and see if it's, you know, really um, getting a nice adhe adhesion. But I always, if possible, do um, press from both sides. 
So sometimes I actually will make put something on a sleeve or a pant leg or even in a pillow and my little mini iron fits right into that, into inside a, a pillow or inside a pant leg, unless it's skinny jeans. But um, here. now, if you'd like, you know, this will stay on even in a washing. But if you want to make sure it really um, stays on, you could do a little bit of stitching on the outside. I, um, you could use a Teflon uh, sewing needle so it doesn't gum all up. Or sometimes I just keep um, a little goo gone in a, a little cup next to my machine and I wipe it down if it gets a little bit um, messed up with that. So, and then I just keep fooling around and playing with it. So I think I'll put the heart on over here. And then I also, um, you know, do this on jeans. So here's a pair of jeans that I made. And I put all these iron on. Let me see if you can see those. So you can put all these iron on patches. And I actually explained how to do them. I got my magazines all wet, unfortunately, when I knocked over my water. So um, in the issue of what women create from, I think it's the spring of this year, I um, did a whole article on how to do iron-on patchwork jeans and stitching. So um, here I am with my friend's horse. These are actually my jeans from when I was in high school. <laughs> so, you know, everything always comes back in style. And my son, uh, is modeling Roderick Kirikoff jeans, but it actually gives you a step-by-step. -step. So you could actually order this um, on uh, on the website of uh, Women Create if you were interested. Let that dry out. So um, when I made these, my um, niece, who is 17, was my model, and I wasn't quite sure if she would uh, like them or not, but she actually wears them to school. So she gave them back to me for the demonstration. <laughs> so some of the, um, I also have purchased um, some pieces of either cantha quilt or appliques, squares that I will put um, a fusible webbing onto the back right here. And I'll use that as a basis for my patchwork. And the fun thing about that is it looks like you really put a lot of you know work into it. I also found um, old embroidered shirts at the Goodwill, and I you know cut them up and use. I mean, I do hand embroidery all the time, but I use the pre-stitched, and some of them are hand embroidered uh, pieces, um, and it's like a really quick way to um, do your um, patches. And it really looks like you did a, a lot of work. So it does get really hot. The paper gets pretty hot. So let's peel that off. And I'm going to put it, put it right on some jeans. I cut these all out. So just for the demo. So with the denim, it's a heavier, if it's a heavy denim and not a chambray, you'll want to like really, you know, um, leave the iron a little bit longer. And sometimes what I also do um, is I cut the, the uh, fusible webbing a little bit smaller than my patch. So that way I can just do a quick hand or machine, machine stitch right around there. And it looks like I did all this hand embroidery myself. And then I'll take some of my flowers.
And as you can see, like doing it in this method, um, it, it just makes it really uh, so quick. So one of the things is a tip that I do is if I'm making jeans and I really want to do a lot of work, I split open one side of the seam and I lay it out flat and then I do all my work on it. And then what I do is I go back and I sew the seam up at the end. So, and then on a little pocket, you can just do something pretty simple. You should see my area here. <laughs> I have everything like all around me crazy. So tomorrow afternoon, you'll be uh, visiting with my friend Amy Berkman. And I'll I'll be with her. I, I um, probably I'll be maybe uh, filming her, but uh, and then right after that, we'll have our Wednesday afternoon chat if you'd like to join us. So it's just something really simple and easy to do. And um, like I said, you know, when you are um, sewing your seams and, you know, you want to, um, you know, quickly press as you go along. It's so easy. So. I don't know if anybody, I don't know if we have a chat where people can ask questions or anything, but um, I don't know if who else uses one of these. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, we actually do have a couple of questions that we can go yeah. over if you're, you're good with working and Absolutely. answering questions at the same time. Awesome. So one, one question was, does the mini iron steam? Yes, it has steam burst capability. So see these two little buttons here? They light up. Let me see if I can get that closer to you. Can you see how it's lit up? And I don't have, I spilled my water, so I don't have any, but you actually put um, water. It's a quarter cup water well, and it has steam burst capability. So you would take this and you would press both the buttons in and you have burst. Now, since it's such a tiny chamber, steam chamber, cause it's a mini iron, you really need to um, let it, like you do four or five bursts, then you need to let it build back up that compression and then it will burst again for you. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I like you was a little skeptical the first time um, when I got the mini iron too, uh -huh. but I absolutely love it. I use it all the time in our studio here. Um, I've got the, the little trivet here and watching you work, that is what's amazing to me. You're just working and setting it on that little trivet and works great. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, so, it's so convenient. Like like I said, like you, Trisha, I was like, I was, and, and it's so funny. They make real, they make fun of me at work, you know, because like Michelle didn't like the mini and now like I love it. I love it. It's like my absolute favorite, you know? Yeah. Well, we did a giveaway on our Facebook page and oh, people were absolutely loving this yeah. little iron. So we're like, well, well whenever you're ready ahead. to do another, we'd be happy to share with your cut with your viewers on Facebook too. Oh, well, thank you. We'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah. They definitely enjoyed it. We had a lot of comments on it and they were just like, where do we get it? All the colors. So it was it was a pretty great, great, great giveaway. If I could speak oh. today, my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've been talking all day. So <laughs> I, I have, but usually I don't have a problem talking. I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> well, me too. I'm kind of like that too, you know. But I have to say, when you're here solo, not talking to, um, you know, seeing people, it is a little bit more difficult too. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. strange. And it's pretty funny because I'm watching you and watching what you're doing. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And then I'm like, oh, I probably should look at the camera so people are able to see that. But I want to see what you're doing. <laughs> was there any other questions or was that it? Uh, there was also one on, can you adjust the temp on the mini? I'll let you answer this, even though I know the answer. <laughs> okay. Yes. So it has three um, settings. And I have to say, um, you know, us quilters and sewers, you know, we want it the hottest it can be. And we always crank it right up to number three. But to be honest with you, if you want the steam, I would go three. 
but you really can just go to two. Um, you know, you just have to play and try and see what you really need to have it at. But, you know, um, it doesn't have to always be on three, but it has three settings, just like the big iron. So it's synthetic is one, wool and silk is two, and linen and cotton is three. Just to kind of, you can gauge like how hot that they will be. Um, you know, I don't have any foam here today, but on, on a hot setting, number three, a, um, a paper um, artist friend of mine takes, you know, those foam sheets, she'll actually cut out shapes and she'll put it near the iron and it will shape and mold the foam itself. It's crazy. It does. Wow. You know, yeah. I was like so excited. I'm always looking. So if anybody's listening or you know of any unusual craft or something that we don't know about we would love to hear about it and share it on our social media as well well i absolutely love all the inspiration that i know that i'm getting from the so creative live because all of you talented people i love hearing everybody's ideas and like you said we share you know it's so cool just to see what's out there and the different ideas that go around the sewing world <laughs> yeah and there's a lot of them, right? There's so, <laughs> so many. It's unbelievable. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, was there any oh. any other questions or comments? We do have another one. Um, how long does it take to heat up? Okay. So um, about 45 seconds okay. for the mini. And the, the big iron may be a minute but not that long. So say for instance, you're using the mini, if you don't want to turn it all the way off, but you want, you can just turn it down when it's already warm. Sometimes it's only about 25 seconds to heat back up to full capacity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we do have another one. Is there a super gentle setting on the big one on the smart? Yes, there is. So on the large one, we have the same, it's called, it's the synthetic setting. So, you know, typically most irons on the market, household irons will have all of the same, um, you know, settings. So on our large iron where you're off, where it says off, now they have asked us, it's a new code thing to say min, M-I-N, like minimum. So the iron is off, but it is still engaged. And that is to... Um, that is to help people remember to unplug their heat, their uh, appliances that heat up. I can't stress that enough. And especially with the mini, because the mini does not, I see a question I actually got, saw that. <laughs> um, the mini does not have an auto shut off. And the reason being is our crafters um, really had asked for uh, no auto shut off. They really wanted to have something that they, you know, went back to. I know like the pink one, this is like Tula Pink's best friend. She loves this <laughs> iron. And the reason she likes it also is, well, not just because it's pink, but because it doesn't have the auto shut off. So it's really a personal preference because of course, um, once, once we made the mini with no auto shut off, we got all these people saying, I want an auto shut off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, never uh, happy. Right. <laughs> maybe in the future, there will be one, you know, because we're always at, we, we want to know what our customers want and what they mm -hmm. need and what's going to help them be successful in their creative practice. So whether it's, you know, uh, quilting or garment sewing or crafting, whatever, um, I have, I have another craft I want to show you with my, my uh, molded flowers. So the, um, someone asked, oh, the large iron is five and a half pounds. So most really um, higher end um, irons that are full size are around the five pound mark weight, you know, and that's the reason why we just think that the auto lift is, the iTouch auto lift is so important because, um, you know, you're really putting a lot of stress on your wrist, but that goes right up to now when I just did that, cause I do a lot of hand stitching that went right up to my elbow. I could feel it and it goes all the way up to, do you mind if, if I wait up? I just need to tell my husband something. Dan, favorite snack? 
for buttons. My husband, because I'm on here, he's taking my my one of our granddaughters to Where ballet. <laughs> he's going from daycare right to ballet, and he gets hangry. Let me tell you, she gets hangry. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mimi, it's Mimi and Peppa. Mimi supplied the snacks, so he's going to bring her a gogur in a juice box. <laughs> Gets hangry, I huh? But I wanted to make sure that he that he saw that. So, so the irons um, are both of our irons have a three year warranty, and um, now if your rabbit eats the cord, you know we can. <laughs> We're not going to replace it, but if it's um, something to do, um, you know, let's face it, uh, you know, you, you possibly any appliance can have an issue, but we stand behind our products and you have a three year warranty. We have a great customer service department that you can call. Um, you can look, find that number right on our website or you can just email customer service at oliso.com. That's also right there on our website. You can chat with somebody on our website if you have a problem. We we want you to be happy. Um, during the pandemic, you know, there was such supply issues. We had no big irons for a long time, as you probably know, Tricia. Mm -hmm. We only had minis. But boy, that's why I think I found so many things to do <laughs> with the minis. <laughs> months, right? It was just crazy. So um, before I answer any questions, I also want to show you, um, what did I do with the magazine? Oh, it's right here. So um, this is probably my very favorite craft that I do with the iron. So um, I make molded silk flowers. So I don't know if you can see these. Oh, those are beautiful. Okay. So these are like one of a kind, but I do teach this class there actually is a simple version on our blog as well that you can um, look up and follow. So, um, and then that is in this magazine here, the What Women Create. And you can see like, and it goes, this is the garland. And I actually have this garland right here. I don't know if you can see. So these are all made with different types of silk and some linens. And um, you can, I mean, they're just really fun and beautiful. You can do them so they're more like elegant and sophisticated, or you can do them in prints. You can use cotton, you can use linen. Um, I actually, when I first started out, um, I'll show you how I do it. When I first started out, I didn't have any real millinery tools. I actually went to my kitchen, um, tool drawer, no, you know, like my <laughs> drawer and I found an old melon baller, an antique mm -hmm. melon baller. And that is what I use to mold the fabric. So my friend who's a crazy quilter and a flower maker, Allie Aller, she got felt so bad for me. She sent me um, a set of real official millinery tools so I could try them, you know? Oh, that's funny. So, um, but let me show you. So here's some of the petals. Like they're all in layers. Can you see? So you would take the flowers and you can layer them on top of each other like this. I made these, um, they're, it's actually on my, I think on my Instagram, my personal Instagram account, I made these silk flowers and put them on an, um, an arbor. My son um, and daughter-in-law got married one, one set. I have two boys. They got married last summer and we made an arbor from our yard. And then I made all these silk flowers and put them on them with those little fairy lights <laughs> so it was, oh, that would be so pretty. It was really, and it was really fun. I was a little obsessed, you know, pretty obsessed over it. So, and not to mention, you know, I have two boys and they both had girls. So now I have two granddaughters, hence <laughs> ballet duty, right? Ballet. <laughs> so basically what I do is I cut out and it can be simpler than this. You know, you can use either a light box or a lightweight piece of paper. You can Put that on top of, um, you know, a printout of a flower, or you can take a part um, in an expensive silk flower and use those petals as your template. So what I do is I draw that right on 
to a piece of the paper side of my fusible webbing. And the fusible webbing comes in light. It also comes in ultra heavy duty. So depending what I'm doing, I might switch that up. Like these are really heavy duty because I wanted them to, to be able to um, really mold and stay in place. So then I would, what I do is I would, you know, pick out a fabric like this or anything. And then I would iron that onto the back. I don't know. I don't want to run out of time. So, and you, you guys all probably can figure this out anyway. <laughs> no, I'm enjoying watching you. you. You're so inspiring. You have so many oh, awesome ideas. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was a little nervous. I was like, are they going to want to see this stuff? I wasn't quite sure. Oh, this is wonderful. Stuff. We're seeing the iron in action. This is awesome. Yeah. Everybody you know, in the do... comments, they're saying fabulous ideas. You're so creative. Oh, this is great. We're loving it. <laughs> I hope that you'll, you know, um, if you all want to sign up for our newsletter too, um, we we not only feature my projects, but we feature um, projects from all of our designer friends. We love to share um, with our community, like everyone. You know, it's not just us. So it's you know pretty much everyone. So okay, so I ironed that on. I drew that on, and let me cut this out quickly. Try to be really fast here. You know, and once you mold these with the iron, you you really don't, you know, don't worry about making a little mistake. You it's pretty simple and it hides a lot of a lot of little mistakes. So you don't have to worry. Okay. So I have this cut out and let me see if I have that. That's I, what I call the crack and peel method. So I'm peeling that off here. And then normally I would put that on, you know, maybe a different fabric, but I didn't think to bring that with me. Sorry. From down the other end. <laughs> my studio is, my studio is down the other end of the house. Okay. So I'm going to press that. And remember, you, you know, you are using a fusible, so you're going to want to leave it in each spot for a little bit. And then, you know, it does get really hot. So here it is. Now, this is where I would cut this out and I would start um, forming the petals. So... So just to save a little bit of time, let me see. I can probably do it with this one. So this one was already done, but I can redo it. The thing is, you can do it a few times. The the um, fusible will wear out after maybe three or four times, but if you want, you can redo it if you don't like how it came out. So I press this. So first of all, I would do the center. So I've got my tip right in the center. And I would take my millinery tool and I go like this and hold it just for a minute. And as you can see, it has a little indent here. So that's the center of your flower. And this one is already done. So that would allow you to put like another layer onto the top of it right there. And then, you know, you can, you can glue or, you know, it's going to be hard to sew because you have all those layers, but if you want, use a jeans or a leather needle with a pair of pliers and some heavyweight thread and put, or embroidery floss, and you can push it through and then pull it through with your jeweler's plier. I always have a pair of jeweler's pliers in my um, traveling toolkit. So you got that. So now I'm going to do the first petal. So I got that there and you want to really let it heat up. You want it nice and hot. Now I'm used to doing this, so it's not an issue for me, but if it feels too hot for you, get a pair of tweezers. So here I'm going to go again and I probably would, and so I'm, I hope you can see this. So I'm taking this, move my fingers, and I'm going to pull up the little petals right around it like that. Hold it. And then you can see how it formed. See how it formed this little indent here? And then I would go all the way around like that. 
So it's just, I just, I just love making these. It's been a really um, fun for me. And, you know, I have to say like when I made these here, let me see if I can take them out of here. When I made these, these were one of a kind. I was making it um, for the, for the magazine article. I didn't have to worry about, you know, just like you at home, you don't have to worry about teaching a class. So if I'm teaching a class, I have to make sure I have enough fabric for everybody, make sure everybody has enough to make the same. Um, but what's so fun is getting into my stash, especially my velvets and silks. I have a lot of, um, that I collect on my travels and, um, I just, you know, did the same basic, the same basic template with these. And then I just kept adding different textures and things. So like there's, um, there's silk here, different types of silk, linen, dupioni, and then the stem is wrapped in, in linen. And then the same with this, I used a lot of different um, fabrics. And then these little, um, you can see, I make yo-yos. So this is actually just a yo-yo from the back. You know how you usually gather and you see it in the front. This is before I pull the string totally together, I stuff it and pull it tight and I have a round ball, then I tuft it, see? And here's another one with a little mini one. And this fabric here, it's actually, um, fabric that has real metal in it. It's from Germany. A friend of mine sent me a piece and I took it and I fringed it. And then <laughs> crazy as I am, I curled each one with a little twist of my, of my fingers like that. So, and then uh, it's just, you know, regular floral wire. And I wrapped that in, um, with with uh, raw silk I think it is so oh I, ha I had a headpiece I could have shown you I made like this flower garland headpiece for a show um but I forgot to bring it down it's way down the other end <laughs> so, but you know you could do this like for a wedding uh for a flower girl my granddaughter was just a flower girl and she had a beautiful garland like this um you could put that on your you know holiday tree if you celebrate or whatever so um I think uh i think i pretty much showed you all of all of my um little projects that i brought i tried to bring enough that i was hoping that we would um have like a whole hour so um i told you all about the beginnings of our company and i said we're a very small company and so we um we all wear a lot of hats. I also work on the product development team. I help customer service. Um, we have a lovely customer service team, but sometimes people will, you know, ask a question or have a concern about a certain fabric that they're working with. And so they'll hand those questions over to me. Um, so um, I, because I'm a maker and I'm able to, you know, um you know kind of help them i speak their language so anyways i think there's a couple let's see hmm i'm not, i was just looking to see if there was okay oh there you are i was trying to read the chat button <laughs> It goes so fast. Everybody's doing an awesome job commenting. Everybody wants to get in on the prizes, right? Oh, yes. Yes. So good. I'm uh, sorry. I'm kind of dark. It was all because of the, um, I, I have all these lights around and stuff, but it didn't, I don't know what happened. I think because we had a storm, it just all got a little dark. <laughs> so that's what earlier, um, Tim Bond with Juki was on and he had a power outage before and he was able uh, to get just enough lights on the machine so i was like you you made it through we can see your iron too everything's perfect <laughs> we got well, through it we got to see your our flowers. <laughs> right our community our maker community is just great i mean you know we're just regular real people trying to 
do our thing, right? So. That is right. <laughs> I love that. Well, we can move in to the giveaways. Oh, you guys so generously donated four of these Aliso <laughs> mini irons. <laughs> so if you want to stick around with the giveaways, you're more than welcome to. Sure. All right. Well, let's go ahead and do number 42 first. Number 42 is going to be the yellow mini iron. So let's oh. see who wins. Here we go. Who's it going to be? All right. Number 42, Sherry Lynn. Congratulations. You win the yellow iron. Okay. Awesome. We've got number 43. And this is the turquoise. I labeled it as blue. It's the turquoise. Okay. <laughs> it's a beautiful color. It is. Uh, it is. I love it. Here we go. We'll see who wins the turquoise. It always almost stops and I'm like, who's it going to be? Oh, oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Haley's doing an awesome job. She's commenting for us. She oh, works here. She cannot you, win. Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, Haley. Your blue mini. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be so disappointed. That happened to Rachel yesterday. <laughs> All right, let's draw again for number 43. Let's see who it'll be. Almost there. All right. Susan Bailey, congratulations. You congratulations. won the turquoise. Number 43. Next, we have the adorable pink one. We, <laughs> we love the pink one. Oh, Number yeah. 44. Pretty in pink, right? Yep. Love that movie. Shows my age. <laughs> yeah. I'm a it's been a long time. I don't even remember that movie. All right. Let's see. Are we going with the pink? JJ oh. Cotton, congratulations. Number 44 is your prize. You've got the mini project iron. And the last, but definitely not least, we've got number 45. And this one's going to be the orchid. Let's draw that one. Here we go. All right, Jay Philo for the Orchid Iron. You get Great. number 45. Congratulations, <laughs> everybody. Thank you so much, Trisha, for having me on. I so appreciate it. Um, anytime you know you need anything from me and Aliso, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and I think it's a, you, you really put, pulled together a lovely event and congratulations. Well, thank you. We really appreciate you joining our first ever So Creative Live, and we look forward to having you on next time. Oh, I'll have to make new projects, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we would love to see them. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. We are going to go right into our next segment here. I believe, Brian, do we have our next guest ready? All right. So our next guest is Colleen Davis. I'm Hi. so excited to have Colleen on. Hi, Colleen. We are actually TikTok friends. So yes. we met. She is a fantastic seamstress and she also is a pattern designer and she has a new pattern, which I'm going to let her tell you about. But she is awesome. <laughs> We're so glad Thank that you're you. here, Colleen. <laughs> I'm very excited to be, be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Like, this is very exciting. And everybody needs to like drop some comments thanking Trisha and her team for this crazy event that is making me have a ridiculous Christmas list um, <laughs> going on. They have been hustling. I've been watching nonstop. And I mean, I don't think this poor lady has gotten to go to the bathroom in like two days. So, <laughs> you know, she needs some love. So definitely <laughs> show her your support too. But anyway, oh, this is you. the bag we're going to make today. Um, this is a free pattern on my website. It is called You Totally Can. You've got shoulder straps, grab handles. You'll learn how to do a reversed box corner. It folds up flat. 
which is awesome for like stepping behind the seat in your car because everybody always needs a tote bag for groceries. Um, we do some extra seaming um, to make it real sturdy. I've carried like way too many groceries in one of these so far. And the best part is it's reversible, which I love a reversible bag. Oh, that's so awesome. So much fun to make. Um, but this is very beginner friendly and I have a lot of tips um, that you can really apply to any pattern that will help you a lot with um, getting really nice and neat lined up corners on front side and and the outside as well. Um, plus, I'm going to teach you how to make your bag straps nice and flat so they don't go all twisty. Because I know that I is that always tip. a common problem. <laughs> yeah. I it, love that tip. She shared it on TikTok, and I'm like, it works so well. <laughs> I, I have an example strap that is some the way I don't recommend to, to show you all exactly what I mean when I say so in the same direction. So um, should we get started? Yes, please. Yes, is selling. Okay, we'll go over to my cutting table and get started making our straps because that's the first step. All right, I can no longer see you. So I'm hoping that I'm lined up correctly. But we are going to make our long handles and short straps. We're actually only going to make one of them because I did some movie magic and pre sewed because I want to make sure that we complete the bag because I'm giving away the one we make. So the first thing we're going to do is mark the center of our shoulder strap. It's the same process for the handles as well. And then we're going to fold to the center. Um, you just want to meet the line. You don't want the edges to overlap because that'll create bulk in the fold of the strap. So we're just getting those touching. And we're going to iron, but we're waiting for my iron to heat up. I'm not going to use a fancy Aliso iron feet because I didn't win. <laughs> but I do have that mini project iron that she was using. And I love it. It's really good. Um, whenever I do any kind of um, quilt projects, that little tiny iron is great for the seams. All right. So we've got that finger pressed, and now we're just going to quickly iron that. And Anyone who watches my TikTok videos knows that I am a diehard when it comes to ironing. I iron literally between each step of pretty much anything that I do. Um, knit fabric, woven fabric, it doesn't matter. Ironing always leads to nicer results. And I know it can be real tempting to just be like, ah, I could just finger press it, it'll be fine. But I don't know about you guys, but I like to be truly satisfied when I complete a project and not be like, oh, well, that little spot could have been better. Uh -huh. And it's just easier to take those extra steps up front. Really hoping you guys can hear me since uh, I think Trisha has stepped out, so I can't hear anyone talking. Not we'll just at least hope I'm in the frame. And we are going to sew this, and this is a tip that I love. And the way we're going to sew this is we're going to go down one side, we're gonna go down the open side first, and then we're gonna go down this side instead of sewing down and over and up because the raw edges are gonna be sandwiched between the exterior and interior of our bag anyway. But if they weren't, and say this was a, a vinyl strap or something like that where the raw ends were gonna show, still 
down one side, down the other side, and then across and across. And here is an example of what happens when you sew in a loop. The strap doesn't lay flat. And honestly, I thought I was going to have to redo the example of um, why you shouldn't do that because I made this like, I don't know, at least a month ago to show that on TikTok. And I figured it would have kind of flattened itself out by now, but it has not. Like, I don't know about you, but I like this strap better flat. So anyway, we'll go back to the sewing machine and we'll get to stitching. Hey, Brian, can you switch to my overhead view? Everybody. So now I like to use compensating feet and um, they definitely have them at Sewing Parts Online. They have many, many choices. What they are is a foot that has an edge guard on each side. Uh, well, you have a left foot and a right foot. And it's a great way to get perfect seam allowances and still be able to sew fast. Because I like to go pedal to the metal when I sew, personally. We're not going top speed right now. So now if you have the compensating feet like I have, we could switch it out and I'm gonna try it. I don't know which view will be better. If you could see it, it has a guard on one side and then the other side has some give, kind of like the way a walking foot works. Not really a walking foot. But anyway, we could switch to the other side and so that if you have an edge guard foot or you could also use a narrow zipper foot. But the other option is just to flip your strap over and still sew in the same direction. That does mean that bobbin will be on top and your regular stitches, will it'll be backwards. But there's a very minor difference between the bobbin stitch and the top stitch, at least on my Juki. Um, on some of my other machines, it's a little more noticeable and I would change the foot out. But I, I do have um, matching bobbin and top threading right now. And there we go one nice flat back strap. So we are going to move on to assembling our exterior now. This is a very fast pattern, guys. You could probably make it in an hour if you're focused. So we'll switch back to the cutting table. We have the strap that we just made. Nice, quick run over with the iron, seal in the stitches, make sure everything is nice and flat. And when you make the pattern, you'll be repeating that step three more times. So you'll have two long straps and two short straps. Now, the exterior is only three pieces, so you have a top panel for each side plus a base. So what we're going to do is we're going to take them both right sides up with the top panel above and flip that over. Something I like to do is mark the centers on all of my pattern pieces. That way, if my cutting is off by a hair, I'm not overcompensating in one direction on one side and over here. If you keep everything lined up to the center, I just find it easier to correct for, you know, those little human errors that we all make. Yeah, I think my piece is a little bit off. It is. 
this one is a little bit wider, but because we're lined up in the center, we're all good. So we're going to sew this one first, and then we're going to clip this one on the other side and attach it. You can clip them at the same time. I prefer to have them out of the way, though, but we'll just clip this one at the machine. So we will go back and sew. All right, so now I am going to change the foot because we're going to sew this seam at a quarter of an inch. So I also have a quarter of an inch compensating foot, but we're just going to put the, the regular presser foot on the machine so you guys don't have to watch me change my feet 15 times, which is what I do when I'm sewing by myself. All right. So now we're going to sew this at a quarter of an inch. Shorten the stitch length a little bit since before we were top stitching. One side is on and now the other side because this is a directional fabric we want to make sure that our deer heads are going to be pointed the right way so put them above and then flip down and I have the centers marked over here as well clip in the center first uh, and then go out to the sides. Um, I know some of my TikTok friends are here and they can tell you that I am big on the order of operations in my sewing. Like if you watch my videos, you'll see, I always start clipping things in the center and then go out to one side, out to the other side. That way you're minimizing the shifting in your fabric because you don't realize it but when you're clipping something around in a circle especially you're shoving it over where it doesn't want to be so for something round or rectangular or whatever you do four corners or you know pick four points quarter the circle and then add in the holes in order and it makes a big difference All right, now we are going to press this real quick and then we will come right back over here and top stitch. I'm pressing the seam up because that gives the base of the bag um, a little added structure and I use SF 101 by Pelon to interface all of my pieces um, the lining the straps everything and um, as an optional step in my pattern um, you could also add a second layer of SF 101, but I would do the second one trimmed out of the seam allowances, um, just so that you don't build up too much bulk. But if you want a little more body in your bag, you could do that. All right. So now we will top stitch this and then we get to attach our straps. The compensating feet are really helpful when um, when you're top stitching. Like I see 
a lot of comments and stuff about top stitching making people really nervous try one of these feet it it does a lot of like the tricky part for you and especially if um if maintaining a straight line is something that you struggle with uh these guys are your friends all right so now we are going to top stitch on the upper part so we've got our seam pressed up and we're going to top stitch that to the upper panel and i like to use a longer stitch length i'm setting it at a four to do this i just wanted to pop on here colleen and mention that those presser feet are fantastic. And if anybody's looking for presser feet for their machine, we have a bunch of presser feet. So definitely reach out to us and we can help you find those. How many different sizes do you use? Uh, we carry a bunch. And if we don't have the specific size that you need, we can always reach out to our supplier and double check if it's something that we can add. Most likely we can get it. I would like a three eighths. <laughs> if we're just making a wish list here, yeah. I would love a uh, righty and a lefty in three eighths. <laughs> I have an eighth inch for right and left and a quarter inch for right and left. And I sew 90% of the things that I do with those on. And the uh -huh. nice thing about the eighth of an inch one is if you just use it incorrectly, I guess you could say incorrectly, <laughs> but if you just use the edge of the foot as a guide, that also gives you a quarter inch. You just no longer have the guide, but if you don't want to swap back and forth, that's a great solution. Yep. Also, Colleen, we have some viewers asking, what machine are you using? I am using the Juki TL 2010Q and I love her. Like, That's what I just got too. I love that machine. <laughs> uh, I am obsessed with this machine and I, I have a lot of sewing machines. Um, <laughs> and this is the one that gets the most action by far. And I have a Juki Serger. I have the MO2800 that they demoed earlier today. Mm -hmm. And you guys want that one at your thrift. I had seen some of your Jukies in one of your TikTok videos and I'm like, love it, love it, have that, love it. <laughs> uh -huh. I love me some Jukies. What I want next is a Juki industrial uh, zigzag for apparel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's another thing. We do have parts for some of the industrial machines too. So again, give us a call, we can help you out. Yeah. But yeah. We had a demonstration earlier from Janome. So they were doing my MC8200 QCP SE. Okay. And so I was like, love this machine. And I just got my Juki TL 2010Q. And it's like, I love that for purses. And then I love my Janome yeah. for the other stuff. So it's like, it's hard to choose sometimes which one you want to use. But we have accessories. I, I know. I have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need to do some looking because I have a couple vintage singers that I need various parts for. So I'm going to be spending some time on the website looking for well, those. That's awesome. Yeah, that's another thing to so, keep in mind, too. It's like we don't just sell machines. We sell parts for so many different models. We are sewing parts online. We offer parts, people. <laughs> I know. Awesome. I was on your site the other day um, because I needed some sewing pins. And I ended up having to make a video and ask my TikTok followers for help because you literally have like 30 different kinds of sewing pins. Or it <laughs> might even be more than that. I was like scrolling and I was like, oh, my God, I need help. Like, I'm going to have to call customers service or something say, and be like, that's what we're here for give us a call we'd love to talk it was to on the weekend and i was like my people can tell me what pins to buy but i was like whoa because i'm a <laughs> clip girl i like my wonder clips whenever possible but sometimes mm -hmm. you just really need to pin and yep. i'm breaking down and admitting that and admitting that I can't use my scraggly assortment of like 30 random pins that came from like sewing stuff at thrift stores. Like they're old. They're my favorite one is bent. And I'm like, you shouldn't have a favorite sewing pin. Like buy some pins guys. But clips are great, especially for bags. 
Yeah, for sure. Well, I will let you get back to sewing. I just wanted All to right. pop in and let you know that. <laughs> yeah. All right. We will go back to the table and I'm going to show you how we placed all those straps that we made. So you guys are lined up and everybody can see in this area. So like I mentioned before, I am big on measuring and marking like literally everything. It makes my life so much easier. And this way you end up with all of your candles aligned instead of having one old bit off. And, you know, yes, you can eyeball, but my eyes are not that great. I can admit it. I do not eyeball all that well. So what I'm doing is I marked the center and then I'm measuring out an inch and a half and three inches. And I'm doing that in both directions. So I've got the, it's 18 inches wide. So we're at the nine, the seven and a half, and then we'll be at the six. And I doubt you guys can see these marks, but um, we're also at the 10 and a half and 12. We're going to repeat that for both ends. Actually, we're not going to repeat it right now, but when you make your own, you totally can bag your going to repeat it. I already have one that's all attached, but we will put them on this side. Now, in my pattern, I do say that you should pin or clip when you place your straps, but I'm going to tell you guys the truth. Um, I only put that in there because I felt like people would want to pin or clip. I find pinning or clipping straps to lead to them ending up a little bit crooked, especially with clipping pinning if you really jam through there, but you're going through four layers of fabric plus interfacing on the back of all of it. So that is going to leave a hole. And what I do is I line it up and I have a little ruler by mach my machine because we're putting it a half an inch out and on the outer side of each mark that we made. So at our what is that, seven and a half mark, and then our 10 and a half mark. It's going to go like that. And we could pin or clip it, but I'm gonna show you guys the way I actually would sew it. Um, and do it however makes you comfortable. I think that a lot of times we can psych ourselves out of doing things the way that feels more naturally by feeling like something is the right way. And yes, there are definitely better, more efficient ways to do certain things in sewing, but it is an art form. So make your art, do what you want. So can we switch to the overhead sewing machine view? There we go. Okay. So I've got my little six inch ruler that I keep by my machine and I have the first side of the strap on the left hand side of the far side mark that we made. And I'm just going to measure up half inch for the overhang. And we're just basting it on right now. So I'm doing that at an eighth of an inch. And then the other side, now here's where you want to make sure that your strap is not twisted. You know, it's not going like that because that wouldn't be good. We want both sides pointed the same way. And we're going to go on the outer side of the that, 10 and a half mark, measure out the half an inch. And we'll double check that, make sure it's nice and even. But if you see, I just hold it with my fingers because that's easier for me to keep it straight because it's just a little strap that you're attaching. And that just works better for me than 
fiddling with the pins or the clips. So now we're going to do the exact same thing for our longer strap where I have lost my marks. While you're looking for those marks, I have another question for you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what type of needle are you using for this particular project? Um, I'm actually using a Microtex needle, which is not really necessary for this project, um, but I'm out of regular 8012s. <laughs> that is what I would use if I were out of them, but I am being honest, and I got a whole box of Microtex needles, so I'm plowing through them. Usually I use Microtex when I'm sewing um, vinyl, faux leather, stuff like that, anything that's mm -hmm. sticky. Um, Microtex needles are great for sewing with, but they aren't as strong because they are thinner. So you are going to break them more often. So it, it's not going to break on this, but. Were you on um, when Rhonda had her segment on yesterday? I know you were commenting yesterday. Did you happen to see Is Rhonda, the Rhonda with Mets? Yes. I was so, <laughs> Rhonda had so much good information. I have a big project coming up with Shannon Cuddle Minky, and I had no idea that I needed stretch needles for that. I wouldn't <laughs> use them. Well, I she had now. mentioned <sighs> the nonstick needles. So, like, I was just uh -huh. wondering if you ever use any of those needles with any of your projects. Yeah, I do. That's what I use. It's the Schmetz Micro Tech something. I use mostly their needles and sometimes the Organ brand. Okay, but yep. we offer both of those. I do prefer the um, the Schmetz seem to last a little bit longer. But I'm a Schmetz fan, girl, so I'm always saying, oh, Schmetz needles, plus we have so many different kinds. So mm -hmm. I love Schmetz. <laughs> and my machines yeah. love them. Some just do better with certain kinds, but Schmetz are creme de la creme. <laughs> they really are. Well, you know what, guys, since I apparently didn't draw the last mark, we're going to switch to the one that I already attached the straps on instead of watching me redraw a line. You saw how we're basting them on and we're just attaching them. This is just to hold them in place. Um, a lot of times when you look at tote bag patterns, they'll have you make the exterior and the interior, stuff it together, and then stick your straps down in it. And that's a fine way to do it. But every time I do that, it comes out a little bit off. Like I, I'm not talented enough to line them up that way. That's why I do it this way. So now we are going to make the reverse box corner over at the cutting table. And I think these corners are really fun. It's just a little different than what you normally see on totes. And I like them because I think they look kind of fancy and complicated, even if they're not. And this is a technique you could apply in all kinds of other patterns too. So I just like to clip the top just to keep things lined up. And I like the straps um, pointed up just so they're out of our way. So what we're doing here is we don't want to press this. We won't be the end of the world if you do, but I just kind of figure press it. So we're going to make sure that our two top stitch seams are lined up on each side. They look nice and even. And then we are going to mark the center here on our base panel. And we're going to do that on both ends, both sides. I'm marking this at um, three inches. This is pretty cool how it works. So now we have our marks and we're going to pinch those and create new folds 
there. And then those two folds, the reason we mark them is so that we can bring them together evenly at the bottom. The original bottom gets tucked up right inside. This I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you guys can see this. You have your two edges where we join them and top stitch them, and they're together. And then your little fold is just tucked right up next to that stitching line. Check the other side too, and make sure we're happy with it. Okay. That looks good. are going to flip the rest of the outer edge. We can take them off the top now. That's just to keep them where you want them while you're getting situated. I am loving that technique. You're calling it the reverse box corner? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And it, that's really cool. I think it's so fun because like, that's so easy. All you did was make a fold. And it makes that like fancy looking exterior corner that like it's just a little different than what you see in like random giveaway totes and stuff like that, you know, promotional stuff. They never have that. Yeah, it gives it that fancy touch. Yeah, it totally does. <laughs> you so fancy? Niece, well, I showed my niece and she was like, ooh, that's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we've got well, actually, I'll let it, um, Brian, if you don't mind going back to the full screen, that way they can see what you're doing. I just wanted to talk. Oh, well, I'm going to move back to the sewing machine so you guys can catch me over here. All right. So this is another step where direction matters. I really suggest that you start at your bottom corner where you just folded and go this way. And then again, bottom corner down. The reason I go that way is again, because of fabric shifting. Fabric is gonna shift, even if it's just like a 32nd of an inch. If it shifts in the same direction, you're fine. But if it goes like this, it just gets a little funky and you start messing with the weave of the fabric and it just doesn't line up that well. And we are going to sew each side twice, but we're going to flip and check and make sure we're happy with our corner before we sew the second seam. So first I'm going to sew it at a quarter of an inch. And just zoom down one side. And I do like to backstitch here both ends and then I'm going to flip it over so we can sew in the same direction towards me instead of going up one side and down the other. And now if you've done a million reverse corners and stuff like that, you probably aren't going to want to flip and check your work. but. If it's the first time doing it or the first few times doing it, I'd really suggest it because it is so much easier to correct things that you don't like before you get ahead of yourself. Nobody wants to seam rip half a bag out because they decided that they really weren't that happy with that one corner. Like that's not going to happen and you're just going to be disappointed. So I say flip and check. We have a minor thread catastrophe right now, but should resolve quickly. So, I 
had to use this variegated pastel thread for this. I felt like the Tula pink fabric was just really calling for variegated thread. Yeah. Did you just it say that that is the Tula pink fabric? Is that what I heard yes. you say? Yes. Okay. This is all Tula pink. It, I am so in love with it. It's all so bright and happy and vibrant. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if it was Tula pink and we've been having some comments and asking if it or what the fabric was. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to pop on and just clarify if that's what I heard or not. Yep. So it is all Tula. So now we're going to just take a quick peek. We don't have to you know, do too much here, but we're just going to look and make sure that our points look exactly the way we wanted them to. So I'm going to pop that guy out and looks like a good quarter to me. And if you do this bag with stripes, I think it makes it look like you did something even fancier because you get the different directions and then they're up and down. And I just think that's so neat the way it works. And we're going to give this guy a quick check. Looks perfectly lined up to me. So I'm going to flip it back out and I am going to, again, in the same direction, bottom to top, I'm going to sew each side at three eighths of an inch. Um, I am the daughter of a carpenter and I believe in overbuilding everything. So I do a lot of extra scenes and stuff. I also do a lot of like... I, I finish my seams on my serger quite frequently, even if it's going inside the lining of something, because I want that like four thread safety stitch because I want to build stuff that lasts. So we're going to go back at three eighths of an inch. We're going to have a thread problem still to be determined. Been doing so good with no issues. Sometimes if you're having issues with um, the thread wadding up, it really helps if you just hold the tails. Like pull your bobbin thread out and hold the tail when you start and that'll help it get going. There we go. Back on track. if I mentioned it earlier, but probably the thing that I love the absolute most about this Juki machine is the knee lift. Um, and I didn't, I mean, I knew I wanted a knee lift before I got this machine, but I did not know how badly I use it constantly. Um, it makes such a difference in any kind of curved sewing when you can just ease the foot up and down. I don't know if you guys can really see that that's happening, but no hands and the foot goes up and down because I have this knee lift right here and it is gold. Um, that was actually um, what I was most excited about when I got the Juki MO2800 searcher, even though like it has the air thread and that is technically like the most exciting feature, but not for me. The knee lift was the, like the clincher on why I wanted that machine. Now I do really enjoy that air threader, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't have bought it if it didn't have a knee lift. I would have done without air thread to keep my, my knee lift intact. My only Juki that doesn't have one is my cover stitch. Someday, someday. So now we've got two seams on each side and this bag is going to be sturdy. Me again. <laughs> I was just gonna call, comment again on the knee lift. We were talking about that earlier with the Juki machine and they are so fantastic with just making it so much easier to move around. And you don't so. realize how 
often you want to raise and lower your foot until you have the knee lift because like I have a, a little Janome um, little computerized machine and it does not have a knee lift and I don't sit there and go like this as much as I should like I just kind of move the fabric and keep going and mm -hmm. and then like it really became obvious when I started making a lot of TikTok videos because I would see that my foot goes up and down. I'm like, oh, wow, I really use that because I do it without thinking. It's yep. next to my leg. I just kind of lean with it. And <laughs> it um, it makes a huge difference. Like I'm working on this um, freeform quilt that's all curves. And this is the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Another time that I've noticed when the knee lift comes in handy is when you're doing those big bulky seams, especially if you do like purses or bags or anything like that, and you've got everything positioned just right, and you don't want to like move your hand, you just, you're able to you can your knee lift perfect to get it just right. <laughs> it also helps if you're, um, when you're trying to go over something bulky, like even if you're using a hump jumper or you're like me and you use your little multi-tool for everything, including a hump jumper, uh, being able to raise the front of the foot before you shove something behind the back and then swap it out without, because mm -hmm. you get to keep your hand on your fabric that way. If yeah. not, it's like, stop set up go stop set up go <laughs> and you just get to keep moving i also uh, noticed also that when you showed this machine um it's on really big sale right now because mine was way more <laughs> so <laughs> we have that so out many there, wonderful like, sales right now <laughs> uh, we do have really another question um yes. about the thread can you tell me what type of thread you're using I'm using Tex 45 thread. So it is a heavier weight thread, um, mostly for back making. And I will tell you that in order to use this thread um, and the needle plus the bobbin, I did have to adjust the bobbin tension, which is really not that hard. Um, I'll probably make a TikTok about it soon, actually doing a drop test to... Um, check the bobbin or, you know, you could get one of those really fancy bobbin tension gauges that I'm sure selling parts online has, but I don't. So I know how to do a drop test and I did have to, um, have to make the adjustment for it to be happy in the machine. Seems like the audio might not cut out. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I think you can. I yeah. can't hear me anymore. Yep, we can hear you. I just wanted to okay, let good. you know that we can. All right. Well, we are going to go make the lining and put this bag together. So let me go grab our lining pieces. You can meet me over at the cutting table. And... First, we'll go ahead and flip this right side out. Just make sure our center marks are still there. I prefer to mark things with, yes, they are. I use these friction pens. They're just pilot friction pens. Um, they're heat erasable, but um, with, which is great because if you mark something that you didn't want to, you would get rid of it real easily. But sometimes you also mark off, iron off your own guidelines by accident when you overzealously press things. So I wanted to make sure they were still there because we're going to need those when we insert the lining into the exterior. So that is the outside. Looking pretty cute. Just stick that over there. Grab our lighting pieces and I love this fabric too. So I'm going to put them right sides together and we're going to do a regular box corner on these. And we want it to match the exterior. All lined up. 
I like to cut my pieces together when I'm cutting out the box corners. Um, I just find that that works better. So I'm gonna mark my centers real good. And on the exterior, when you mark your centers, you wanna mark the outside and then on the lining, mark the back because we'll be um, inserting the exterior into the lining when we sew it together. That way our marks line up and they're easy to find. So check and make sure I have both of my pieces go in the right direction. I do. And now I am gonna mark out three inch corners. And I like to cut my corners out with scissors because I find that when I use my rotary cutter, I tend to go a little bit too far. And it's just easier for me to just draw a line and cut. Okay. That and then clip it together. We also need to leave a turning gap in our lining. So you can mark it out. Um, I usually leave about six inches, roughly. Um, that's more than enough to turn through. You could leave less if you were inclined. So we're just going to clip the sides. I like to clip the top too. Um, we're not sewing the top, but just to make sure that everything stays lined up, they broke the clip as best we can. So we will add some more clips over by the machine. Wonder clips are very elusive. Here we go. Luckily, I have a whole bin full over here. All right. So I usually put my clips um, right about where I want to start and stop on the bottom, just as a reminder for myself so I don't get carried away and just keep on sewing. So just like before, I like to start at the bottom and sew down on each side. And we're gonna do this at three eighths of an inch. And flip it over and go down the other side. And I've had people tell me before, like, oh, all this, like, so this direction, so that direction, it, it takes so much longer. And the thing is, it really doesn't. It just, once you start doing it, it becomes second nature and you don't think about it. Like, I have to remind myself when I'm demonstrating something to mention it because otherwise I'll just quietly sew in all my preferred directions and nobody will ever know that there was a, a method to the badness. So then on the bottom, I like to start at my turning gaps and go out and then again there and out. And you do want to backstitch a couple times at, um, at your turning gap just so that you don't feel like you need to be overly careful or anything when you're turning. I know I like to just whip it right out when I start to flip a bag because that part is so exciting because it's like coming together. You're like, oh my God, I made that. All right. So now we need to make our box corners. So what we're going to do is open up our corner and we're going to open up our seams too. We could press them flat, but we actually just need the, the end, so we're all right. 
And I really like to line them up right there and get them exactly the way I want them. And then I put a clip in the middle, scooch the other sides, make sure that's nice and even the way you want it. Go clip over there. And we really don't need one. Well, we'll, we'll do a clip anyway. So, um, Casey, I haven't noticed the trend. We're also going to start sewing in the middle here and go out. And then we're going to flip over and go from the middle out. Um, this really helps, um, even if you skip some of the other directional sewing tips, try this one because it, when you're lining up a seam and a seam, your machine and the feed dogs just kind of want to push it out of the way. So keeping that really even helps so much. So we're going to start there. And remember, we're doing three eighths of an inch. We're going to sew out one side, flip it over. This also ensures that your seams are going the right direction because since they're open, that way your seam is going with the direction that you're stitching and it doesn't have the opportunity to water. We will get that right there. And now we'll do the other side. So same process, pinch the corners, open up the seam, get those right lined up together, add a clip, another clip, and another clip. The other side, and then we get to put the bag together. This is the best part. All right, so we have a hole in the bottom, and that's how we're going to turn it after we insert um, the exterior into the lining. So I will meet you guys back at the cutting table to clip it. Brought some clips this time. So we're gonna stand that up and then put this inside. So you have your lining inside out and your exterior right side out. And all these straps, you want to make sure to get them tucked between your two. So in between the exterior and the interior. And now we're going to start clipping by lining up those center marks we made. So we have one on the, uh, one on the lining, one on the exterior. We'll line that up and pop clip on. Straight. Oh. And now the other side. Center mark. Center mark. And then I like to do the side seams next. And I open those up flat as well. We are going to sew in a circle on the top. Not going to flip in a circle. Well, I, I guess on, depending on how you look at it, maybe it is clipping in a circle, but we're not going to go around like this. We're going to just keep adding them in in the holes. I like to put a clip between the two straps um, because that is a heavy spot. And see over here how all the strap spots are drooping. So I'm going to do that one. And then I always try and do like the furthest opposite side. And then 
walk over here. Hope nobody gets motion sick. Because we're going to be spinning this bag a few more times. Here. We'll keep flipping all the way around and make sure that we're really, really satisfied with the way everything is lining up. Sometimes you need to shove it in. Like if you feel like you're having bulk at the top, just give it a tug. Make sure that everything is situated the way you want and your straps aren't pushing anything out of whack. Just keep kind of easing that in. Love a little extra here. See, if you see that, because I didn't sew with my correct foot on, my lining is a little bit big and I am not satisfied with that. Now I could scooch it out and have it be off center, but I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase my seam allowance a little bit on the lining, because this is another thing where by clipping this way, I can see that I made a mistake and I wanna correct my mistake instead of sewing this bag together wrong and ripping it out later. So we're gonna fix that real quick. And if we're running short on time, um, don't worry guys, because I already made another bag that you can have for the giveaway. Think we might be okay? So, yes, you guys all know that this is really live since I'm fixing a mistake, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to taper the lining seam just a hair. So I am going to start at the bottom and I'm going to increase it by an eighth of an inch on each side. My apologies for my mistake, but we're all human. There we go. We'll like that better now. So we're going to do this right here instead of walking you around, though. Get that all tucked in there. Find my center marks. happy to answer questions while I'm doing this if anybody has any. But if not, no, well, just... mostly everybody's just saying that they are loving that you are real time fixing mistakes. <laughs> they love that happens. I made the mistake. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you guys love that I make the mistake. Feel free to join me on my lives on TikTok because I do them too. <laughs> and I make mistakes. But oh. I, I'm a big believer in like, showing all the parts and not like swapping out for some pre-sewn <laughs> bag be like Broom! and we have this perfectly made one no we're we're gonna finish and we're gonna fix my mistake which seems to have corrected itself because now the the sides are lining up nicely well and i'm mm -hmm. sure everybody's gonna appreciate you fixing the mistake since you are giving away that fantastic bag i'm sure they would have been fine with it if it was a little off but <laughs> oh, i know we gotta give them something good Oh, and I actually oh. have a mini version of my pattern coming out very soon that has a zipper. So I'll probably give them that too because I made <laughs> a matching one. Awesome. 
we can look at that while I while I clip. It has the same reversed um, box corner, but it's a wool zipper bag. It's lined. And that'll be another beginner friendly one, especially. Um, I know that there have been a lot of quilters attending this event, and I find that quilters um, sometimes are not big fans of zippers, just as like an overgeneralization here. So um, definitely check out my little zipper bag pattern. I'm still hemming and hawing on the name, and that's actually what's delaying it being released, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to call it Yippee I Can Zippy. I am very cheesy like that. And I really like to encourage people to sew and make stuff. And not everything has to be perfect ever, but there are definitely tips and tricks that can really help you improve your sewing skills. So because I only want to keep it real once. I am actually going to swap to my correct foot before we sew this exterior together. So now we're going to sew um, the entire top edge. And I like to go back um, around twice and add a second row of stitching within the seam allowance um, over all of the straps just to give them even more reinforcement. Now they're basted in and then they are sandwiched between the, the two layers and sewn. And then we do that extra stitching. And then once we flip the bag right side out, we're gonna top stitch it. So they get tacked down an additional time. Um, but that way, you know your bag straps aren't gonna break. And like I mentioned earlier, I am really big on making everything super sturdy. Like, yes, you could use this tote bag to carry beach towels, but you could also use it to carry like heavy canned food or I don't even know what. That's what I carried in. It was a bunch of like heavy groceries. And I really loaded it to the seams because I was at Aldi and I am not about buying plastic bags at Aldi. So I was going to make it all fit. And I did. So you'll notice, I don't, well, I don't know if you can actually tell, but I use my knee lifter whenever I get to the seams and just before I get to the edge of the strap, I will just raise my foot ever so slightly just to help it get over the little hump. All right. So now I'm going to go back in the seam allowance and give those straps just a little extra loving. Now, another feature of this machine that a lot of people really love, but I, I don't actually use, is it has um, a heel tap thread cutter too. You can just put your heel back on the presser foot to cut your threads. Um, but I sew with my shoe off and it's, it, that just doesn't work with my foot. Like my actual foot, not the machine foot. Okay. Now we're going to flip it. So we pulled it apart this way and we're going to reach down through that hole in the inside of the lining. Just grab onto it and pull her on through. Now, if you want like an invisible um, finish on your turning gap, um, you could hand stitch it. Um, if you ladder stitch it up, you could really have it undetectable. I am not a hand sewist, though. I 
don't like it. It hurts my hands. I avoid it at all costs. So I am going to machine sew it and I'll show you once we do it. I do that at, um, just about an eighth of an inch. So just a really tiny little seam. And I find that it actually gives a little bit of extra structure to the base of the bag. So we're just gonna close that gap. And then we will iron and top stitch. So now the lining gets shoved back into the exterior. Like to really tuck those corners in. And now we will go iron it real quick and then we'll top stitch around this edge and our bag is done. So I think I Maybe a little bit over on time, but hopefully we can hang out for five more minutes. We sure can. We were just talking about that. We're like, we have to see the end results. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I later. was like, I gotta finish. I gotta finish. <laughs> All right. So I like to iron the top before I top stitch because it just it makes it easier to not have it bunch up if it. Um, out of the way. And I kind of like to tug from the lining and the straps just to get it all nice and situated. So I also don't do that. See how that was folded in on itself? Um, if you don't do the tugging and the pressing, you might miss something like that. And things are just seam ripping. And you're seam ripping at like the end. Which, that is worse than having to resew your lining, even though you're live in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> but we kept it real. So I'm just going to get that real straight. We'll get the base of the bag and stuff and press after it's top stitched. But this is our only concern right now. And see how pinning um, or clipping actually with all those marks. See how the the lining and the exterior, the corners are exactly aligned on both sides. It's little things like that that always really make the biggest difference, it seems to me. The different feet and stuff also definitely helps you that with a little tucked in too. And since this is quilting cotton, um, it'll be fine with just pressing. But when I make bags out of like faux leather and like heavy weight canvas and things like that, sometimes um, I'll add some clips to the edge um, after I press just to make sure that everything is going to stay exactly where I want it before the, I do the top stitching, especially if it is um, faux leather, because you really don't want to seam rip that because it really pulls. Cotton is definitely more forgiving. But this bag can totally be made with um, faux leather. I would suggest using uh, some Deco Bell light interfacing um, with a with vinyl. So 
instead of SF-101. All right, she looks pretty good. Little pop stitch. Thank you guys for, for bearing with me on my, my little mistake. I appreciate everyone's patience. All right, so I'm gonna put my one eighth of an inch top stitch foot back on. Awesome presser foot. <laughs> I mean, I'll show you guys this real quick. You can tell how much I use this one because this is, actually Trisha, you can answer this question. Which one is right and which one is left? Is it the side that the needle is on or is it the side that the fabric is on? Oh my goodness. You're making me think <laughs> at the end of the day. Right? <laughs> I, I, this came up the other day. I was trying to explain it to somebody and I was like, I don't know. There's a right and a left. Like, is it the side you sew on that you would use by the name or is it the side that you know what? What are you what are you looking at, Brian? Because he's pulling it up for me too, because it always messes with my brain. What time? That's the right. Okay, so if the fabric is okay, so my like goodness which gracious. Side is the, the oh yeah, okay. So you're putting you're butting the fabric up to the guide and you have so the the toe is on the right side and the needle for the right down. foot is so the, the toe yeah okay would be so apparently righty is my favorite then because <laughs> it is like i bought these things at the same time and this one looks like it is like 80 years old because i use it all the time and i guess it's like the oils for my hands but it's like all dingy and banged <laughs> up and this one is looking pretty fancy and trying to get new. Oh, that's awesome. I was actually, um, I'm thinking about taking it over to my mother-in-law's and having her try it. Cause now see, she is left-handed and, um, I don't know how to teach a lefty how to sew because keep blocking the view and that's her problem is that she feels like her hands always getting in the way because she wants her whole project in on the right side of the machine which poses some difficulty usually you know you want to keep things to the left so I was thinking about bringing over um, my compensating feet and seeing if that works for her I really hope it does because I also have a couple lefty nieces and nephews that like to make stuff and they are now getting to the age that I don't think uh, sitting on my lap while I do most of the sewing is really what they're interested in it at this stage in their life like they want to do the whole thing and I want them to do the whole thing too I just don't want anybody to sew over a finger or anything like that so i'm needing so if anybody has any tips on sewing with lefties by all means please shoot me an email or come comment on my tiktoks or something reach out to me somehow and tell me what left-handed sewing tips you guys have because I have lefties wanting to make stuff. And I want them to do it without frustration. Right, we're almost all top stitched. Done. Well, 
I do need to do the last step in my pattern with you because it is my pattern. How could I skip the last step of the directions? And it, in my opinion, is the most important step. And that is that you need to twirl around with your new bag because look at what you just made. Like the twirling is totally required. And I also suggest like going up to your spouse, significant other, partner, whoever, and saying, look what I did. <laughs> I and love like, it. <laughs> that is one of my like frequent moves. It's mandatory. <laughs> it really is because you should be proud of yourself. You just made something really cool and so celebrate awesome. it. <laughs> so we'll give this guy a press, but here she is. That is fantastic. And let's go yeah. ahead and do the giveaway if you're ready to do it. So it yeah. looks so fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and pick the final winner for today. This is going to be number 46. You totally can bet. <laughs> All right, who is the lucky winner? We have Rena Stansbury. Congratulations. Yay. You get that beautiful bag. <laughs> you get two because you get the little guy too. Oh, look at that. <laughs> lucky. That you was have to have a whole set. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't so just going to let her get the one bag. <laughs> so. All right. Well, thank you so much. That was totally worth waiting and thank seeing you. the end result. And we are super excited to give that away. And we're so glad that you took the time to make it. And everybody who's saying loved your tips along the way. You gave great pointers about the Juki machine. Right. We absolutely loved having you on. Oh, well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This was very fun for me. I <laughs> love talking glad. to people and teaching them about sewing. It is definitely my passion. So thank you. Well, thank you so much. And hopefully we can do it again. Yes, absolutely. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, that was so fun. I loved that bag. You can find her free pattern on So What Had Happened Was. I believe the link is in the comments as well. And like I said, that is a free pattern, so you can make it yourself. And I do want to go over the winners today. Brian, do you mind pulling up your screen so we can show all of the winners? So if you need a recap or you're wondering who it was, you're able to view this screen. Um, because we are a little bit over, I'm not going to read through every single one, but we are going to share that screen and you can pause your replay so you can double check and see if you're the winner. So day two winners, he's just going to slowly scroll through that. And then even though we are a little bit over, I do want to recap on some of the uh, items that we showed today because there were some fantastic um, options on there. So we just want to show you some of the stuff that we had. Now, Right now, it, we are closed, so you're not able to call in this afternoon or this evening, but uh, tomorrow we do open at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, so you're able to call into our customer service for all the special event pricing on the things that I'm going to talk about here. So let me pull up some overlays, and we'll just do this super quick so you can see what we talked about. Um, we did go through on the Eversewn machines. They do have special pricing, both the 30 S as well as the X2. So we um, we weren't able to do a demonstration on the X2, but that's a fantastic computerized and embroidery machine. And then there was a demonstration earliest this morning. It was at nine o'clock. That would, if you want to watch that segment, so you can see all about the Eversewn 30S machine. Uh, then we had Harley joining us on the Aero furniture. We had the Aussie 2 sewing cabinet. Take a look at that. This particular Aussie 2 sewing cabinet, right now with the purchase of this cabinet, you get the free Huey multi-use cabinet. That is a $700 value. So again, I would watch the replays because they did such a wonderful job showing the Aussie 2 and that cabinet. There's something about actually seeing it versus having a little picture of it. The same special is applied to the Wallaby 2. With the purchase of the Wallaby cabinet, you get the QE multi-use cabinet. And then we also have the Kangaroo and Joey cabinet set. The same special applies to that. With that purchase of that Kangaroo and cabinet, or excuse me, Kangaroo and Joey cabinet, you have the QE cabinet for free. 
Then there is also the kookaburra cutting table. With that purchase, you get the free kangaroo cutting mat that covers the whole table. You can protect your table, have a designated cutting station. That is a $200 value for that cutting mat. If you notice, there is a slight back order on that cutting mat, but it's just around the corner. So if you order this right now, um, or I should, like I said, excuse me, like I said, tomorrow morning, <laughs> give us a call. That will secure the special event pricing. You will get that mat included with your kookaburra. Also, right now for sewing National Sewing Month, we have $200 off the Norma Jean. You can give us a call on that one as well if you have a smaller amount of space. Great um, option for having a little bit of space. And in that demonstration from Harley, they close all these cabinets up so you can see what they look like closed as well. It's an awesome option. You have your Krista's quilt blocks. These are going to prevent your quilt from falling off the edge <laughs> of your table. These are an awesome option. Saves you a lot of headache where your blanket or your quilt is falling off the edge. That is a fantastic sale price on that as well. Gotta mention the hydraulic sewing chairs. They are on special right now. They normally are $449 and they're on sale for $299. Such a fabulous price for these aero chairs. They're super comfortable. Well, we also want to talk about the automation that Grace Quilt Company, excuse me, the Grace Company talked about. You've got the Quilters Creative Touch Five Beginnings. We've got the sale price showing here is $4,499, but this is not the special event pricing. So give us a call tomorrow and we can tell you what that special event pricing is. Same thing goes for the Quilters Creative Touch 5 Pro. That's on sale for $6,499, but you can secure the special event pricing through, um, I believe it'd be Thursday. My days are all messed up. Is that right, Brian? <laughs> through the... Thursday. <laughs> Tim was fantastic with his demonstration on the Ideal Juki Room. You can get special pricing on the DX4000 QVP machine. And same thing for the Serger. We've got the MO2800 Serger. He did a fabulous job showing that demonstration, um, even after he had a power outage. So <laughs> still was able to demonstrate some awesome stuff for us. We've got a cover stitch machine as well, the MCS 1700 QVP cover stitch machine. Also, we have the MC, or excuse me, MCS 1500 cover stitch machine, which we also have a YouTube video on how to thread that machine. If you have any questions, it may look a little bit intimidating at first, but it really is not. It's very, very, very easy to thread. Sam Fung with Janome went over my machine, my fave. It's the Memorycraft 8200 QCPSE. Special pricing on that also applies. So please give us a call tomorrow and we can go over that. Just a reminder that we do have financing available. So if that is something that you're interested in, you can get all of the special pricing and you can get affordable financing. It is a perfect, perfect time to purchase that dream machine. We've got the Janome Sois 780DC, also fabulous pricing that retails for the $1,099. Tomorrow, give us a call and we are happy to go over that with you. And then that really covers it for all of the specials. Excuse me, that covers it for all of the specials. We had some awesome, awesome stuff going on. As you can see from the list here tomorrow we have a fabulous lineup you can pause that read through mark your calendar set a reminder do what you need to do but there is so much fun stuff going on tomorrow can I talk about that Allegro really quickly? we want to talk about that allegro we'll about <laughs> everything <laughs> the allegro is brand new to the baby lock model i'm going to be talking to you about that 9 a.m tomorrow we are going to do a segment on the brand new baby lock allegro also, there are only three of them in the U.S., so we get the privilege of showing you this machine in person. <laughs> and not only that, Baby Lock drove, what, was it eight hours one way? Something. They 
a crazy amount. Like they brought this machine to us so we can show you for this event. So for So Creative Live, we get to have one of the Baby Lock Allegros right in front. So I hope I do it justice and I'm able to show you how cool it is. I had the privilege lock tech and it was absolutely wonderful and i'm excited to show you and when i get excited i talk really fast so tomorrow i'll be like slow it down breathe a little <laughs> look at all the awesomeness <laughs> but anyway i hope you had a fantastic day with us today and i know we went a little bit long i'm sorry but we will be coming back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m central standard time and we look forward to seeing you have a great night